Welcome to the Cultaholic Wrestling Podcast. If you like a lot of wrestling on YouTube, join our cult. Hello, welcome, salutations, and getting ready for festive spirit with yourselves, ourselves, the Cult Like Wrestling Podcast. Jack's staring at me crotch. What's happening, uh, No, Bob? Well, I'm obviously staring at your lovely Home Alone-themed oh, festive. Oh, thank you. I was trying to work out what it was because I couldn't see Macaulay in the middle because that was blocking it off, but now I can see. Hi. I he's doing the home and he's I was, on, I was honestly trying to work out which tag team was that before I saw Macaulay in the middle, but yeah. Oh, bless. It could be Sami Zayn, I guess. It could be Kevin Owen. Uh, yeah. Uh, this is going nowhere. Jack, how are you? I'm all right. Thank you. It's coming home. Come on, everybody. I saw I've heard. I like you doing that like you're selling watches. It's got an England crest there. Oh, just no, a it's, cheeky it's, um, uh, I'm firmly on the side of I've never lost faith in Gareth Southgate, mm. and uh, I stand oh, by him. okay. Um, and, yeah, long may it continue. I've heard that the uh, the round of 16 match against Senegal is going to be shown on ITV. And I've recently... Mm. I, I'm late to the party, but I've only just learned of the ITV curse, which is that on the BBC, oh. since about 1998, England have won about 80% of their games on the BBC and about 15% of their matches on ITV. Yeah. I wasn't aware of that. Mm. Gutted. Uh, me and Tom, because we do the Call It Wrestling podcast, which comes out after this, but whatever, time's a weird thing. And it reminded us that this is the week that the ITV debuted The Premiership, which aired mm. at 7 p.m. on weekdays. It does. Uh, you know the time when people are really ready for soaps yeah. and not football. And it was a well. massive ratings uh, non-happening, so they moved it back to the weekends for good. Yeah. And I remember when the Queen Mother died and they had to change the Beautiful Day uh, soundtrack for the... just. Didn't play it, and then Des was like, "We didn't think that was appropriate this weekend." Oh, so I love how weird we are when stuff like that happens. And that's, that's our decision. It's a beautiful day. I'm part of that. <laughs> Sorry, we changed. Ding dong, the witch is dead. <laughs> Poor Queen Mother, what did she ever do? Um, I'm part of the group as well of the generation that that song, rather than the match of the day theme, it's "Beautiful Day" by U2 that's got that nostalgia for me. Yes. Yeah. So in conclusion. I'm doing all right, Matthew. Thank you for asking. Thank you, Joe. Got there in the end. Yeah. And how are you, Dean Ross? I uh, realise I'm going through a midlife crisis this week. Spotify mm. Wrapped came out. My mm. top artist of the year, Limp Biscuit. Oh, yeah. Andrew's as well, I believe. Limp yep. Biscuit. How many minutes, Andrew? I just made that what? up. I just made it up. All oh, right, yeah. Simon, fair enough. <laughs> he just likes Limp Biscuit, doesn't he? Oh, yeah, yeah. He's good at doing a Fred Durst, he aren't does. you? With your chocolate titties. No. Chocolate no. starfish. Chocolate starfish. Yeah. <laughs> That's Vince McMahon, isn't it? <laughs> JBL search history, what are you doing here? <laughs> no, but you've mixed together two Fred Durstisms that Andrew often says. It. Yeah. It's Vince McMahon, isn't it, with a chat on well, Brucey e. P's podcast. That was a bit on the podcast. That's where that is in my mind. Right, right, right. Right. Oh, I know what you're yes. referring to now. Everyone yes. at home does as well, don't you, everybody? Yes. Yes. <laughs> so I, I had over 560 minutes or something of Limp Biscuit this year. That's a lot of chocolate. Aye. And something else. Something else. That's right. Lovely. YouTube algorithm control. Wonderful. <laughs> and uh, thank you to all the lovely people who've been say, messaging yeah. us saying thank you very much, lads. Uh, apparently, you're clocked in at 3,000 hours of Cultaholic. One which episode, eh? <laughs> literally took that joke out of your mouth and <laughs> as many others. But thank you very much for sharing all that. Yeah, yeah. yeah we've been part of your soundtrack of the year. Mm. Yeah, it's a weird one because it makes you remember that, oh, people actually listen and like to our <laughs> inane waffle, which is quite scary, really. It's always a harrowing time of year. And our fantastic wrestling analysis. Also that, also yeah, that. I guess that yes. as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. No other podcast goes as deep as we do. Not in NXT, anyway. I mean, all of them. We deep dive on everything. We certainly all do. All the big boys and girls. I was um, I was up late last <laughs> night. Because, Were you? That's because because not like was, you in the day before our podcast. Yeah, I know, because I was watching Dynamite to write the notes live. Boom. And, but I still had the NXT notes left to do. I thought, oh, that one, that'll take minutes after the end of Dynamite. Oh. I'll skim NXT. Oh, and it was a, it was a, not longer, obviously, it's always an hour, but it was like an intricate NXT, lots of moving parts. So we'll have to wait and see how that goes. So anyway. big Aussie bastards plans fully at work now. And I've been on, I've been on them for weeks now. That's all I'm going to say. Uh, so, oh, ye of little faith. Yeah, no. I think he's, nah, he's all right. He's a dirty man. Oh. Like, like him never giving up on Southgate. We've never given up on Dull. Did we say that? <laughs> a delightful Hudson. Thank oh, you very much. I'm, I'm sick of these accusations. He's, oh, he's so righteous. When he week. says to Thea Hill, I could have stopped my foot any time I wanted. And Andre's like, what do you mean you could stop it? That was the moment. I've got I a knew. scientific answer. <laughs> that was in a title match. Adrenaline's higher. <laughs> yeah. The distance, the stopping distance is drastically reduced. That's right. Drastic yes. go down. Drastic go down. Yeah. Matthew, how are you? <laughs> Doing grand. <laughs> right. Such a good time of year. You like Christmas? 
I, no, the not usually. Oh. But I love it when I'm in control of the no, situation. <laughs> well, because there's times you. when you're just like, <laughs> all right, I'm not good. You know, nom, nom, nom. I work with children, nom, nom, nom. And all that stuff. And you're like, oh, now Christmas is going to just take us out like an 18-wheeler on a small mm. country road. This year, I'm like, yeah, I'm prepared. I'm ready. I'm happy for everything that's going to happen from the bad weather. Got my big coats, got my big boots, um, got big presents for the big family. I'm looking forward to it. I'm not ready for it yet. It's really crapped up. It's the same time every it's year. It's December now. <laughs> can't believe it. It's my auntie's birthday. I've got to text her. Wow, I'm glad I remember. Is that real? Today. No, yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no. Oh, it's all right. It's today. I've not missed it. I can give her a ring after this. Cool. Oh, December the 1st. Oh, man. at the time of recording. Wow. Yeah. God, that was a lucky escape, wasn't wow. it? <laughs> so glad we can help you <laughs> and you. all the people listening to us this year via Spotify. Uh, in the news this week, uh, Jack forgets and he's oh, very good cool with that. Well done, Jack, in a little bit. Roman Reigns upset after WWE Survivor Series War Games and reported unplanned moment because obviously they all have big scripts like DDP in uh, 98, I guess. But, oh, yeah. Uh, Roman Reigns was reportedly extremely unhappy following the Bloodlines victory in War Games at Survivor Series. Uh, Fightful Select indicated that Reigns was angry about a spot in the match. Fightful says, quote, It was rumoured among those we spoke with that Reigns took exception to what he perceived as an unplanned spot between he and Kevin Owens. As he walked backstage, he mentioned possibly having a ruptured eardrum and want the spot to go as originally planned. Uh, apparently, expletives were exchanged between him and Kevin Owens. Uh, but then, 20 minutes later, it was all all good, all swept under the rug. They called each other bitches. Roman was like, you did that to me, you bitch. Just to get, you know, a bit of a plum behind what he was saying. I wonder I if... Sorry. <laughs> I, I, sorry, carry on. No, go on. I wonder if Kevin questioned Roman's work rate credentials. You've never been PWG champion. You've never been Ring of Honor world champion. Do you think he did that? I think You've he... never been on the PWI... Well, he has. He was number one this year. Right? Yeah. He shoot fight in PWG. I did. Mm. He slapped him in the chops, didn't he? He did. He certainly did. And I DM'd people and he said he did call him a flippy floppy... Oh, so that's that's all it takes now. It's the most serious thing you can call someone in wrestling. <laughs> uh, yeah, apparently it happened because of a big splap. I said a that big complete, one. Sorry, I don't know what happened yeah, there. Yeah, I do apologize. Slap. Those are just the knobs. A uh, big slap <laughs> that happened. Um, a big exchange there, slippy slappy. Uh, but apparently it was a big slap to the face because you, you can rotate your drum that way. Uh, homicide famously did it to Steve Carino and gave him permanent lock. Uh, He's definitely one of, here. Yeah, because yeah. of that. So. I think if you're just coming off one, last thing you want to do is get slapped in the face. I could appreciate that. But yeah, what a, what a, you can tell it's a special time of year. WWE backstage instance, people fighting uh, and cursing but, each other. But the difference being to the other place, you know, they apparently they just had a conversation and sorted things out. Yeah, like, yeah, you know what? I'm going to vent it to you. We've got to sell. Because I saw the spot in question on social media, and yeah. it does sound like a gunfire going off. I've not but, seen it back. But it just looks like a normal slap in the wrestling that you see you know, two or three times a match up and down the card. So the fact it's gone a bit wrong, I can see why Rome would be upset, because that must bloody hurt mm. if he has ruptured his eardrum. But also, it, I just think it was a bit of a mistake. These things mm. happen sometimes, one of those things. That's, that's how you get out. So you get, look, can I tell you a problem I've got with you? Yeah, cool. We'll sort this out and we'll move on. It's fantastic. I saw conflicting reports. <gasps> Well, uh, the, initial, we conflict, the, uh, <laughs> the initial report said that Roman was quite cross and everything. But then I think either Melter or Alvarez, someone in the Wrestling Observer sphere said, oh, no, they've undersold that. It, Roman was fuming. But I, and then I yeah. didn't read the bit where they've now resolved it. So I'm really glad that they are. Yeah, everyone, because obviously you, 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 you see the, the juicy bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rain, furious, <laughs> rah, flipping over tables. Right, then next paragraph, two minutes later, they're all cool. <laughs> You really sound like Jeff <laughs> Stellan there where you said furious. Furious! Yeah. <laughs> it's a goal for Harley Pool! <laughs> oh, yes, you do. Uh. It's a red card at Bramall Lane, yeah. Cammy, but which side? Oh, yeah. Which yeah. way has yeah. it gone? <coughs> I, I don't know, Jeff. Has it? <laughs> I don't know. I wasn't, wasn't paying attention. <laughs> Love them. Uh, another backstage drama about Survivor Series. Ronda Rousey asked to be to bring in Brian Kendrick to manage that match. Uh, Brian Kendrick. Oh, where do I know that name from? That's right. Brian Kendrick, who was uh, famously asked for his release from WWE, was given it. Some of AEW, where there are lots of people like, have you seen other things he denies happening? And Khan says, I'll, here's another one I'm going to deny you then. Eh? Your contract. <laughs> and uh, that was done. We've heard very little about him since that, has to be said, apart from Paul London coming up with these bloody horrible stories uh, involving Kendrick and how he basically is saying he's very worried about him because he definitely oh. seems to be suffering from CTE oh. and is fully involved in all these uh, 
conspiracy theories. So I don't know what could have possibly brought him and Ronda Rousey together. <laughs> so that one's hang around in the air like a bad well, it's, smell. It's not CTE. We'll put that off. <laughs> yeah, there we go. It's one thing to take off the guess who guess and thing. So, yeah. I mean, it worked well for the pair of them because the match oh. was flawless. Oh, absolutely. I mean, <laughs> I never thought we'd say this, but Kendrick, yeah, please stick with the crazy conspiracy theories <laughs> and horrible anti-Semite because, yeah, what a match, yeah. We'll get into it later on, but I had shades of uh, Dean Ambrose versus Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania 32 hmm. watching this one. Shotty being Ambrose, Ronda being Lesnar. More on that it's later. It's a good comparison. Yeah. Oh, uh, I think if you watch the Lesnar Moxley match back, you're probably like, actually, it's, it's all right. <laughs> compared to this, this was a pretty <laughs> bad one, wasn't it? Ricky Steamboat wins his return match. That's right. Got back in the squared circle. The former NWA World Heavyweight Champion made his in ring turn at Big Time Wrestling, uh, teaming up with FTR to take on Black Machismo Jay Lethal, who apparently is just in everybody's like last well, match at the minute. In, in this case, he dressed as Randy Savage, and it was Steamboat, and I get why. Oof. Stars in their eyes. Hey, what are you going to do? You can't get... I know, yeah. yeah. Uh, also, <laughs> Brock Anderson and Nick Aldis were there, I believe, as... Was it Arn Anderson's horseman? That was their name. Oh, yes. It's Oof. back. It's back. I think there was more respect given to those UK WF tribute shows. <laughs> Um, uh, Alex Shane as Steve Austin. The other day in the office, I caught uh, two members comparing themselves to Arn and Tully, the Brain Busters. <laughs> and it was funny because you can tell which one's which as well. It was Zakins and Aiden. Mm. Aiden's, Aiden's Tully. Aiden's Tully. Yeah, Tully. yeah, yeah, yeah. Straight, yeah. Away. <laughs> straight away. Zakins is straight away. Anderson, yeah. uh, the baby faces scored the win after they all applied figure four leg locks to their opponents with Legal Anderson and Aldis all tapping out. It was his first match in the squared circle in 12 years since oh. he teamed up with his son Richie at a Florida Championship wrestling event, which I don't remember. Uh, Dragon said Pride is in ring return and it was unlikely he would wrestle again. So, thanks, Dragon. Yeah, I saw yeah. one arm dragon the build-up to the match. I've not seen the match itself and he still had an arm so drag. That's all you need, really. Goodness me. Mm. How old are you now? He is... 67. Yeah. 65. He's in his 60s. He's say that. 71. <laughs> it's good podcast. It's, it's like an eBay auction. <laughs> I found him. Oh, it's loading. 69. 69. Hey! Bloody hey. shaggy. <laughs> <laughs> the dragon. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> hey. Cutting edge journalism here. <laughs> Sky Sports. Is that man in your notes for the news section? The ooh, ooh, ooh man himself? For the for the news? Billy Regals. What's he done in the news? Dave Meltzer has maybe dropped a bollock as we're sat here on Thursday. Oh, no. That doesn't sound like him. Because he said the other day, he was like, I know things about, you know, Regal and that that I can't say on the air. And then in a thing that got shared on our messaging thing today, oh, God. he said uh, Regal's gone, just in the mid, in mid-flow. So wow. has, he, has he dropped a bollock there? Uh, and now that we're having to decipher Meltzer's <laughs> ramblings, yeah. like he's the Zodiac killer. <laughs> um, he is I the don't know, a wrestling be, journalist. He <laughs> was never found, was he? <laughs> I, know, oh, I know the news Meltzer confirmed to be the Zodiac killer. he would just drop that info in the middle of like a New Japan report and just be like obviously when I was like killing folk in the 70s <laughs> yeah were, were you for around for <laughs> Billy Robinson no, no. I, was, I was busy being the Zodiac killer but anyway I was running for the police <laughs> oh okay he carries on it's never brought up ever again <laughs> I'd like to clarify, I do not think that Dave Meltzer was the yeah, same paranoid thank you, thank now that he's going to be like, well... But there is a chance. You. No. <laughs> there is a chance. Oh, God. He has that one phone call in prison. It's to order tapes from all Japan. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a call just to Jericho to say thanks. <laughs> oh. Thank you, Chris. So you hear your dulcet tones again. I'm just checking if the dates line up. Yeah, on. How, how old would the Zodiac killer be? Yeah. Um, oh, late 60s. It could well have oh, been. Oh, could a, be. a younger man, physically fit. Anyway. It's all, it's all adding up. Mm. It's two things that we just made up now. Um, Cole Cabana reveals he almost died. Oh, no, he'd have been... He'd have been 10 years old when the Zodiac Killer was at large. Stranger things have happened. I was okay. going to say, yeah. Fair enough. He, he is a big lad. In AEW return match with Jericho, uh, and I, I thought maybe he's over-exaggerating here, but I spoke to some people because I know nothing about the concept of compression socks. So I just thought of them as being big socks. Which I thought made it a bit funny. I thought well, it was being this, is, this was no laughing matter according the, the to people socks, I spoke to. The socks you pull up to your knee on an aeroplane just to help circulation right, right. to stop that uh, jazz musician deep thin thrombosis from coming in. Yep. Scat, scat, scat. 
Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ross Noble on tour again next year. <laughs> oh, is he? <laughs> yeah. I love him. I saw him in Young Frankenstein a few years ago. Oh, who was he playing? Igor. Oh, a born for it, I would say. Absolutely. Yeah. <laughs> what a man. Uh, so he goes into great detail, but I'll just skip it. My laundry room is my wrestling gear. I wash my knee pads and singlet. I don't dry them. I hang dry them. Of course, I wash my wrestling socks. I don't know where my wrestling socks went. They went somewhere. I like long black wrestling socks, so there isn't a gap between my boots and knee pads. I don't want to air skin, or air. I don't want airy skin. That can't be right. So I like long socks. Before I wrestled Jericho, I had to go out and buy new ones, but he somehow bought the wrong socks, Gromit. These are the wrong socks, <laughs> and so he wrestled them apparently with compression socks, knee pads, and boots. What he essentially did was made a tourniquet in the bottom half of his body. And so my blood flow is perfect. So essentially what I did was restrict everything. I can't feel my legs. I guess it's just the nerves. Oh, well. After he did the moonsault the outside and had to run into the ring to give Jericho the flying, uh -oh, I had nothing left in my body. I attributed it to the night of wrestling, but no, it's because I cut off the supply of blood to my own legs, causing high blood pressure, low oxygen. So yeah. So then he lay, lay down, I'll speak of Ed, uh, lay down in the trainer's room afterwards, asked for electrolytes and just had to have uh, lots of ice for several hours to get him back up to his body, back to normal. Yeah, because he went to Walmart and bought compression socks instead of just whatever he would normally yeah. wear. Yeah. Incredible. After, after there must be more expensive, first, though, surely. At first, when I heard that, I thought, all right, right, whatever. Now that you've read that, him, I believe him. <laughs> you know, yeah. Colgabana's not famous for having terrible matches, is he? That's... He's not bad. No, he's not. No. He's not. He's not bad. I'll, I'll wait <laughs> there. Say, can you make a joke? No, I'm not really. No, though. he's no. not. No, he's he's good. He's a good athlete in that. So maybe it makes sense. Or maybe he's embarrassed and he's lying. But I, I believe. <laughs> I believe him. What was the reason for your bad match joke? The socks. I hey, we need to find out who stole the socks. Could it have been Dave Meltzer? The Zodiac mm. Killer slash Feathers McGraw. Well, my <laughs> socks were just here. There's this guy. <laughs> That's why they couldn't know what Zodiac was saying because he was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> Talk about Fujiwara arm bars with a big sock. Or was that? I was going to say it would have been Jericho, but he obviously didn't know his opponent that night. Oh, the mystery deepens. <laughs> oh, mm. you're right. Uh, and Abeo, uh, I can win Yeah, and if one more pulls out the program. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> what was that? What? There's a K in there somewhere, but you didn't have one. Akin Fenwa. Akin, Akin Fenwa. Akin Fenwa. Bruno Sammartino <laughs> pulls out a Progress Wrestling in-ring debut. Oh. It's a shame because we yeah, the, the name of the show is Chapter 146. They think it's all our. Oh, ah. It still applies. Yeah, so of course. It's not one's hour on Progress. And oh. uh, yeah, it's a shame because Tom did such a lovely job. Tom Wim. That's okay, though. Oh, well. That's why he pulled out, I heard. <laughs> <All right>. uh, <laughs> a double himself didn't make his in-ring debut, announcing that the show that he had been called away, was able to compete. Uh, Beast Mode also mentioned that the show that wasn't at 100%. Mm. He promised to take out Malik and Costa, Constantino, at some point in the future. And I've put here, doesn't work for me, Rover. I wonder if he <laughs> maybe just... <laughs> there was an attempt. Akin Fenwa is bigger than Progress as a brand. So maybe, and as a human being. And as a human being. He's bigger than, apart from Simon Miller, he's bigger than all of Progress. Um, I just, maybe he just thought, I don't want to, why am I doing this? Well, he's going to hurt himself, and what's the point? Yeah, one day he woke up. What am I doing? <laughs> I don't need to do... I think he's helping out his pal Anthony Agogo, wasn't he? Oh, yeah. the match was gonna be, wasn't I see. It? Was there going to be a tag team match with them two? God. Right. They did an angle at the, the last one, because I remember seeing yeah. the stuff on social media, and he did have his shoulder like in a sling. He could be a manager, easily. He's got the gift of the gab. God, I was going to say, after Cody, and now this, uh, Agogo's got all the look of Sting. Yeah. The yeah. Partners, <laughs> hasn't he? Bless him. Uh, Rui Shafir reveals egos prevented the four horsewomen clash from happening in WWE. As in, <laughs> yeah. as in the four horsewomen of MMA, being Shayna Baszler, Marina Shafir, Jasmine Duke, and Ronda Rousey. Um, yeah, uh, she says, egos are at play, and I've learned there's too many bleeding cooks in the kitchen, sometimes <laughs> in more ways than one, and I never knew this, but like, you know, I just feel like pro wrestling was a little more exclusive back in the day. It wasn't just about politicking. It's all about really showing respect and not kissing ass and not feeling like you have to go blah, 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 she rambles. No, there was no way it was happening because there was such a huge gap in talent. One of them didn't wrestle for like months and ah, months. It was talked like, about though. It was taught, but then went, well, how is this going to work? In a multi-woman match, you can hide the ones who can't wrestle. Would it be half the team though with the, yeah, the, the MMA lasses, <laughs> wouldn't it? Yeah. Jessamine and uh, it would just be, it would, yeah. And Ronda at that point, it would just be Shayna wrestling. <laughs> yeah, the whole thing. There was no way it would work. Yeah, true. It was, true. I saw um, a little clip. It looked like one of Conrad's podcasts. It had the frame and around the thing and Sasha Banks was talking how she legitimately didn't like Ronda. Again, I say 
legitimately, but she was saying how she didn't like when Ronda came in. She got more money. She got all these things and this, that, and the other. So yeah, I can see, you know, one. why people might be Makes upset. Sense, and yeah. I doubt Ronda would ever want to lose a match like that. Just putting that out there. I think Sasha had yeah. one of Ronda's best matches. Yeah. It was the Royal Rumble one year. God, I was good. Yeah, one. it was the same show as Becky and Asuka. Also That's had a right. Great match. Yeah. What a good year. Oh, yes. Don't Ooh. know what year it was. Like, 2020. 2018, wasn't it? Whoa. Was it t- 2018? I made that up. I pulled was it, 20, that number was out it 2018 when Ronda debuted? Yeah, that was the when first. She walked out. That was the first one. Ah, maybe it was 2019 or 2020. Yeah. Random guesses there. Uh. 2020, what a great year. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, highlight of the year. Uh, a random fan called Iran's FIFA World Cup over Wales. The biggest win of the country since Iron Sheik captured the WWE <laughs> title from Bob Backlund. God bless that one lad who went yeah. semi viral, I got guess. The but event wrong. But he, he said at WrestleMania, which he obviously it wasn't, but, but his heart was in the right The fact place. that he brought that yeah. up, I'll, yeah, whatever. Give him that. Do you see the one where the blue, you must have seen it? Uh, big win then for Wales. We lost. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. What do you think of that then? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> oh, but very sorry. What do you expect them yeah. to say? It was like the best 13 seconds of television in history. Yeah. What do you think of that then? <laughs> it's up there with, uh, well, we heard the airport. I hate Iceland. <laughs> What's that one? When the Icelandic volcanoes have to stop all the planes to fly. It's random, <laughs> random annoying British dick. Goes over, ah, oh, hey, Iceland. You blame the entire country for the reason this plane wasn't taken off. Ah, good times. Jimmy Wang Yang reveals he accidentally got re-signed by the V after trying to get laid. Probably Aiden Gibbons' <laughs> finest work this entire column. Was this on Jimmy Wang Yang's party boost by any chance? Uh, it's when he spoke with wrestlingnews.co. Mm. I haven't heard of them before. Oh, yeah, they're, they're often... A, Are they? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, about yeah. to return, did we... Um, they're just... in the same sort of sphere as, I'd say, Wrestling Inc. Those sort of websites. Oh, I get you. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. We should do the tier list for news yeah. places, right? Really. Yeah. Um, in... The Zodiac Killer. <laughs> <laughs> Downwards. <laughs> yeah. We want to say, we don't insinuate anything, but he absolutely <laughs> murders the rest of the news people for news sources. Um, to cut a long story short, that I recommend you read on the news section is uh, he brought his last uh, the show because it's like, yeah, I don't know. So he's like, wow, you're a wrestler? Can you give me tickets? Yeah, obviously ring them up. Can you give me tickets? I went, man. I'll get me end away. It's like, yeah, sure. And then like Vince and other people saw him like, Jimmy, hey, how you doing? How's things with your contract? It's like, I don't work here. It's like, what? <laughs> you're not signed? He goes, no. But there was a spot where Shawn Michaels was going to take the multi-spirit squad bump through the table, which looked terrifying. Mm. Shawn went, no. So he went, Jimmy, <laughs> do you want to take a bump? He's like, uh, looks at the woman. Yeah, all right. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I practice it. And then Sean's like, oh, how is it? And Jimmy went, yeah, it's all right. Right. But his back hurt and was like, nah, whatever. I'm not <laughs> big hard me. Like. Um, yeah, and then they were like, oh, I was great. Um, yeah, do you want to mind doing something on Raw with Charlie Haas? He goes, uh, yeah, sure. And then end up going, well, yeah, yeah, we'll re-sign you. By the way, Vince has got this great idea about you being a redneck from the South. Uh, the name's Jimmy Wang Yang. And he's like, yeah, sure. It rhymes. It's funny. No, I, I said, yeah, that's fine. And he got his job. His uh, third run of the country. Uh, third run, was it? It says yes. third run. I'm trying to remember. Was there a big, what, after Wait, the buyout, invade, was invasion, it? Yeah, and then... And then back again when for... When he was uh, the, with Jamie, the, the SmackDown trio. Yeah, that's right. That, those lads. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, <laughs> what was yeah. it called again? The Young Dragons, you mean? That was it, the recent. It, yeah, it, it was the same thing. It was like yeah, the Young yeah, Dragons yeah. presentation, but they were on SmackDown and called. Mm, I, can't I, can't it was, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember. Oh, then they were let go and then rebought that. I just assumed he was around for that entire period. But was I it guess also not. him who was in the Flying Elvises? The first ever TNA match. Oh, him and Sonny Jorge, Jorge Strada. Was it, I think? Sonny Siaki, Jorge Strada, and maybe Jimmy Wang Yang. Maybe. Remember. Whenever I see the three Elvises, I just think of the bit with Bloody Father Ted in the talent show. <laughs> Anyway, so that's how he got back. Um, and his fourth run... No, he had a run in 2021. Wow, Jimmy's just been around forever, I guess. Um, and it, Aiden just ends this article with, if Wang Yang got laid in 2006, remains a mystery. <laughs> well done, Aiden. Take a boo. He should get on the phone, shouldn't he? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. Did if he was like the Zodiac it? killer, he'd be able to say, Jimmy, did you get in? The... That's some stunning Kavorka from Jimmy Yang, uh, Wang Yang, though, taking the last backstage to a wrestling show. Mm. Batista's there. Other good-looking men who are twice the size of Jimmy Wang Yang are there. I hadn't thought of it like that. Yeah. It was Jimmy in the Flying Officers, by the way. Thank you. Mm. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, Triple H, this is the ender, because we've had like three or four wacky wrestling stories this week, which is rare for the wrestling. It's usually doom and gloom, but Triple H approves of Greg's sausage 
bean and cheese melt. Yes, he does. Uh, the popular bakery currently offers a, a variety of sausage rolls, pasties. I don't know who Greg's are. I'm reading that. What is <laughs> Triple H had the chance to enjoy a Greg staple in the sausage, beans, and cheese melt during an appearance on Lad Bible's Snack oh my Wars, God. Oh my God. where popular snacks from the UK and USA are pitted against each other. The Greg's pasty went head to head with a Burger King Whopper. After much deliberation, the game selected the sausage, bean, and cheese melt as his winner, uh, noting that he enjoyed the pasty's texture. I thought it was a Photoshop. I didn't realize this was real. No, it is real, yeah. Oh, yeah, Tom, Tom Tom's tweeted, gonna so be... I, thought it was, I thought it was a myth. Oh, no. Are you all right, Jack? Tom's going to be fuming. That's his... He's been trying for ages to have a wrestler eat at Greg's, and it just never happened. <laughs> he's and right, now, he's got... And now he's... Lad Bible have done it. Oh, man. He's probably I'm got 100 more gutted. ideas this morning, so don't worry. I'm good uh... for him. That is true. He does have a lot of ideas. But um, oh, he tried to get... Well, I don't know. The interview never happened, so I won't say. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, yeah, it just says the <laughs> sausage, bean, and cheese melt was the only UK snack triple H selected, with the USA running out as 4-1 winners. Get. They, they gave him a scotch egg, and it was the, the mystery meat was befuddling to him of the scotch egg part, the scotch part of you the You can egg. get some rubbish scotch eggs, like. I what mean, else is sausage, isn't it? Yeah, they gave him beef jerky up against. Oh, my God. I watched this at Double Quick Speed oh, okay, the other day, yeah. whatever it was. But I bit into the sausage, bean, and cheese melt, and he was just like, ooh, cheesy. Good. There's no wrong with the sausage, cheese. bean, and cheese melt. Oh, yeah, it's good. Top tier. Confectionery. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> you can't compare it to a Whopper. That seems two very different foods, though. He was very familiar with the Whopper, which I th think why he went for yeah. the, the cheese and bean melt. Okay. Yeah. I love that Burger King's main thing is burgers, and they're still not even... The number one place you go to for a burger I remember in the UK or USA. Here in Austin, talk about being on the road, brother. And when you can't, it's hard to keep your diet good and it's hard mm. to go to the gym and that. So what you do is you get two McDonald's burgers, throw the buns away Excellent. and just eat the meat. Oh, protein. Wow. Alleged meat. God. Yeah. <laughs> sorry, sorry, it is meat because we've been confirmed by the Zodiac Killer. <laughs> oh, fair enough. 100% <laughs> pure Sean Stajak. That was the news. <laughs> Ah, Tub Man in Japan. Uh, this week, he uploaded the second portion of his journey from Sendai to Tokyo to the YouTube machine. This episode sees him take a 120 kilometers ride from uh, Fukushima to, <laughs> Iwaki, <laughs> uh, to Iwaki, I believe. Cool. Iwaki. Look at him. And here he is. Let's have a look at the look man. At the poise of the man. Uh, yeah, so I, right. The best thing about when you're this on episode, the road, what you do is you go to the, the sushi roll place and you just take them out of the buns. No, the best thing oh, about this episode the protein. Go is on. he's obviously gone so far and he's he's stopping at these shrines along the way. There's obviously such a big gap between each shrine. He's obviously forgetting what he said at the previous one. So every single shrine he gets to is like, oh, it's beautiful scenery. It's just like yeah, his, yeah. his uh, Dion Dublin, uh, the staircase <laughs> leading up to the bedrooms. <laughs> No, I think that's that, his calling card. I think that he was Here's just my knees. struck by the beautiful scenery at each individual shrine. Most people have two knees. I He's, am like most people, I, so here are them both. I enjoyed this episode equally as much as the first one, and I would implore everybody to go and check it out. It's just called Tubbs, the YouTube channel. However, uh, I think Richard himself probably didn't enjoy day two as much because there wasn't as many river uh, riverside paths. And as we learned from episode one, he loves a riverside path. You can tell he's struggling with things to say, so uh, there's not many bins around. No, he didn't. Stop slandering he does, he does, Richard. He does Tom. say that. He does. <laughs> he did, to be fair, but, I'm watching at normal speed. Ross might throw you off. <laughs> but it is interesting to learn that if you weren't aware. I'm going to defend this vlog. Oh no, I, I'm I'm loving it, defending it. It's it's fantastic. I love that he's working so hard over there. How has he got time? Well, he already did this trip. I suppose he's just sort of editing this together. Oh, this is episode time. two of the same trip, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. he had to edit this one because I had to take all the bits where he's going. <laughs> around the he corner. did have a, a long decline. It's a, a cycle of two halves. Mm. The first half was up. The second half was down. Yeah, but he was saying he's got to overcome his fear of uh, descending. I think mm. that's what he says. Because he's scared to go around the corners in case of oh, oh, the bike car. And the, he keeps thinking the bike's going to slide out from under him. Yeah. Uh, oh, okay. Also, I'm interested to see, because I remember when he did this in real time and he was tweeting about it, and he said that day three was the most boring of the three. So I'm interested to see how he spices up the vlog when we get to episode three. Because he said that was mainly just like a straight road. That's some beautiful scenery. Oh, oh yeah. It's not good for the audio people, but that means you have to go <laughs> check out the video yourself on Tubman's uh, lovely YouTube channel. Do we have the name of the Tubbs. YouTube? Tubbs. Tubbs. <laughs> One B. One B. Flash the logo up, Andrew. It's right at the end of the video. It's impressive when he flashes yeah. it up. He's like scripts. Andrew's lost in the vlog. Yeah, but, yeah I know. Right. God, it's Flash up the end of the vlog. <laughs> yeah. right, it's me. Apologies. Andrew's just sat there beaming behind yeah. the camera. Wait for it. It's coming. It's Hi. like his calling card. I'm Tubbs. 
and I drive a bike, but not there like this. There it is. Do, 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 do. Crash. I Bang. Wall up. Tubs in Japan. I can tell he used to DJ at World Headquarters with a logo like that. Jesus. Thank you, Tubs. Thank you, man. Thank you, Japan. <laughs> Everybody get excited for the Cultaholic Hall of Fame. Ah, that's time for What is that there for? It's just to make <laughs> it look nice. <laughs> I associate this period of year with uh, with all woolly, because every year my grandma would get me an all woolly in the Bruins annual, even into my 20s. <laughs> so uh, much love, grandma. But uh, and yeah, and this is the triple jump. I've got their annual oh, look the at our, look at how amazing our fans are. <laughs> they're way be- they're way better than Cultaholics fans. You guys suck. Don't listen Get out of to our him. office. Don't listen to it. They, they get a bit carried away sometimes. Them. No, um, if we did something similar, we would get some god awful, inappropriate things sent here. We would actually mainly because of Adam. We'll he, get, stoke, <laughs> he stokes the fire, doesn't he? Let's be honest. Yeah, we get the best of Barrymore VHS <laughs> and a weird looking letter from Mel. So I'll take a shears to the code. So. <laughs> it's just to have this, just to make it look nice. Um, and also, I get a cheeky shout-out to Triple Jump, and they're amazing fans, and there's a lot of crossover. And, yeah, there's no shortbread in this, which is surprising. It's all just, you know, sweet stuff. But it's just to make things nice. If you hit it again, I'll take it away. But I didn't mean to, sorry. No, I bless oh, you. Yeah, I know, it's just, we're trying to, we're trying to plug old Wooly. Because um, he's your Wooly. <clears throat> they're Wooly. My Everybody's Wooly. It's like <laughs> RVDs. Whatever, The sorry. background was reminding me of the new title we saw on AEW this week, slightly. Oh, we, oh. Mm. It's nothing like that. Fair enough. So <laughs> this week's Hall of Fame winners in condescending order. Teo, the World Cup predicting otter. Oh. 25%. Ooh. Oh, these aren't put the beat right. Oh, they're not oh, Sorry, that's second place. Romeo Nightingale. Oh, yeah. I am. <laughs> Sex on legs from Holly Oaks, who is currently in the jungle, 11%. No, no, it's over. I uh, finished this week. Up the Jill Scott. Hey, all of it. Hancock came third. Hi, that's a bit weird, actually. Yeah. Who, who but apparently you've got Jill Scott. Fig- apparently, oh, you know, thought, you know, the old pandemic. <laughs> I thought there was an expression. You know, <laughs> no, Jill Scott. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, sorry. England you know, the old women's pan- footballer. The old pandemic thing. Just forgive and forget, you know. I hate, I hate that but so But he much. seems like he's an all right bloke because of... Oh, I, I'm Does annoyed he? That it, I'm annoyed Does that it, he? No, but it, I'm annoyed that it worked on so many people. Anyway. Uh, the one time I want the tabloids to go after a politician and it's like, ah, oh, no. oh, whatever. Anyway. In first place, though, the Green Power Ranger, yeah, 64%. Fair. I know, yeah, we try and avoid soppy ones as well, but at the same time, the Green Power Ranger, um, even the New Day paid tribute, obviously, in uh, doing that dress as a house show, which they've done so in the past and stuff like that. So I thought unnecessary soppy one. Mm. And obviously, people agreed. So thank you very much. <laughs> That's a thing the Green Power Ranger would do. <laughs> to summon the... To summon the people Zord? to vote for him in the Hall oh, of Fame. Right, okay. That's right. I thought you were playing the part of the piper. The Queen's Piper, who would play her awake every morning. Oh. When walked away. Well, not distance. anymore. <gasps> yeah. You know, the one that that was a very poignant moment at the funeral, wasn't it? Mm. When he's walking off in the distance. Ah, sorry, I was dancing. I didn't see it. What? Um, Bloody <laughs> hell. Oh, sorry, not I'll say these things. Wow. Um, <laughs> sorry. Has enough time passed where you saying. feel like you can. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, right. I couldn't give two hoots myself. Like, but, you know, yeah, there you nice go. Oh, okay. <laughs> just slide that underneath the door. I'm ambivalent, but I know that people, some people aren't. So I'm quite scared. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. At a, at a time when <clears throat> there's like so many bad things going on in this country with uh, the prime ministers, uh, the obviously huge uh, rise in cost of living, mm-hmm. the electricity firms apparently owning us oh. uh, over more than Amazon and stuff like this. Like, oh, a rich person. I know. Don't know stories like yeah. it's like I, I don't feel as bad. Obviously, I felt bad when the cream mum died years and years ago because <laughs> we, were, we were doing good back then. <laughs> <laughs> now he's like, oh, oh, all right, cool. Well, still got to get to work tomorrow, love. Sorry. Um, so what the hell are we talking about? Oh yeah, Hall the of Hall Fame. Of Fame. <laughs> Sorry, we went off on one there. I do apologize. Uh, my pick, the Hall of Fame, has been the only thing I've done this week, so I thought necessary rather than try and blag something humorous. Is God of War Ragnarok. Oh, oh, oh. Andrew's Andrew. nodding sage. Good lad, Andrew. Andrew. There's one vote. He's rock hard behind that yeah, camera yeah. there. Whoa. <laughs> Ashton from Triple Next Jump. Next to us. Obviously, please don't spoil it because nobody, not everyone's finished it, but she cried at the ending. She put oh, a picture on Twitter okay. of her crying. I was going to say, if she put a bloody picture of the ending on I'm not just like, revealing yeah, that I'm, she cried. Oh, I I'm make her cry. I'm not just going like, yeah. wait, like she publicly like put that. I out. hate this game. <laughs> yeah. What a disappointment. Everyone's been talking about the ending. No, no, I even, I've barely been on social media because I'm like, no, there's only one game I've been waiting for this bloody year, and it's this. Not so, AEW Fight Forever. That's next year. <laughs> oh, is I'll play, it? I'll play, oh. it? I'll play it on release. 
Yeah, he I got, thought it, I thought he got it, delayed because the whole having to remove CM Punk. Oh, I thought the placeholder was New Year's Eve, which Fraser told me meant it has to come out before New Year's Eve. Another live. I swear Fraser. they've said. I swear <laughs> they've said it's going to be like next year. But anyway, we funny if it just come on. Then. Harry, more See the state of Fraser's Spotify rap. But anyway, Harry. <laughs> what was one thing that was on? Harry Styles. Taylor Swift. Yeah. Oh, of course. Oh, that's why that uh, hairdresser then hates him. Three acts. <laughs> three acts I've never heard of, which is another sign of a midlife crisis. Go not on. down with the kids anymore. I don't know. I can't oh. remember. Well, he likes, so half, solid he likes a band called Half Moon Run that I'm not too familiar with, which I guess it might be one of the ones yeah. that Ross doesn't know. Um, yeah. But that's that's his favourite band, he says. Oh, okay. But his Spotify rap proved that actually it's his second favourite act behind Taylor Swift. Lovely. Are you into Norse mythology? No. Oh. No. Nah. Oh, God of War, right, sorry. Yeah. yeah. I thought I'd just bring it back on top. I don't yeah, want to create yeah, anything. Yeah, yeah. But also, got to deal with that. But no, but we're trying to be brief as possible because I've got nothing else to talk about. It's a, It plays exactly like God of War 1, except the awkward bit where instead of changing between weapons, there's a different weapon. So I feel like an idiot going, I thought it was better at this game. And apparently it's been one little change. I'm like, oh, that's why I'm getting killed. So uh, lovely, great voice acting, uh, cinematic, etc. Plays beautifully. And looks like about 200 hours of gameplay in it. So Fair enough. Uh, and in again, a week? Well, you know, you're not good like me. Um, the uh, that's right. The no, not not really. Jesus. I was gonna say. I was, <laughs> no. I was like, oh wait, what's just when really he said the only thing you've done this week, I was like, he bloody meant that, didn't he? Yeah, yeah no, sleep. <laughs> just just that and hard drugs. So uh, no, I've always been like uh, mythology and myths and stuff like that. It's nice seeing a video game proper version of that, and it's not all Marvel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. No, the really. myth I got exposed to this week, relating back to Taylor Swift, is that she's a clone. <laughs> There's a someone. It's a hard God. left from God yeah, of War. Yeah, right. Good, move on. Some different mythology, American yeah, yeah. mythology. Mm. She can marry. I don't know. Yeah, yeah, she is American. Uh, gods. The American gods, you it know, some, Loki, uh, Thor, it was Odin, a, was it a Taylor pop, Swift, pop star in the eighties, uh, and she apparently perished on the same day that Taylor Swift was cloned or something. Ooh. Looks the same as Taylor Swift. I'm just. I, I might have watched this. You know, later. It's like the Avril Lavigne one. Yeah. Oh. That's what I mean. There's. Nice conspiracy theories, and then there's Brian Kendrick ones, and yeah. you know, and it's also the same with Norse mythology. You can be in Norse mythology in any type of mythology or old gods like Egyptology or whatever, or the Greeks and Romans, and you could be like, you know, Sarah there Logan. A myth at school that there was a myth at school that I was an alien, which is annoying. The lads in the year above <laughs> who I didn't really know used to refer to me. This sounds awful now as Eddie the alien because I look like a lad in their year called Eddie. And they thought I looked like him. So they were like, there's Eddie, because I was in the year below. And oh, like, oh, there he is, mate, mate. And also, they swore that I walked past them once and then walked past them again as if I'd teleported. So to the lads in the year above, I was for many years Eddie the alien. Hard time of my life, to be honest with you. <laughs> is that God your pick for The rumor's still at large, really. It's not being yeah. confirmed or denied. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they used to think this. They still do, Jack. I'm sorry to reveal this to you. When you're like a teenager as well, and the lads in the year above seem really cool and that, and they're yeah. calling you Eddie the Alien, just, oh, man. It hurt. It hurts. It hurts. <laughs> do you play along with it and go like, no, no. I, I bring you love. And they're no, like, shut up. It's I, our bit to I, do, I, not I yours. I ignored it because my mates in my year didn't really seem to catch on. So I just thought the quieter I keep this, the better. So I got away with it. All right. Yeah. Not now. God of War Ragnarok. Anyway. If you see one of them now in the pub or something, just go up and go, oh, I'm going to probe you. <laughs> oh. uh, it's a way it makes to meet people not mess with you. It's threatening to probe them. Good advice for life, that. But it was private school. <laughs> <laughs> You're a private school lad. I on bursary, though. I need, I need to clarify. I always clarify this. Uh -huh. I did go to private school, but I was on a full... I didn't. My parents aren't rich. I didn't pay. I'm not a rich lad. So you stole a learning... No, I earned it with my oh. cleverness. <laughs> That's a spirit. <laughs> Leave me alone. Yeah, I went to primary school. My, primary my parents private, who live in Mars, who also didn't have any UK <laughs> currency. Private secondary school, not primary school. Yeah. Oh. Now you're looking at me very differently. <laughs> I went to the same school as Henry Faust, the wrestler. Ah. Oh. Mm. He's a bit of a posh lad. I wasn't though. I was one of the. I was one of the. I was. One of the, <laughs> this is why I don't like admitting where I went to school because people go, "Oh, rich are we?" No, I was on the. I was part of the bursary scheme. I was part of. The, I was one of the charity cases. There were like five of us in the year. They were like, "Get them in." Aye. I'm very happy for you. And then and then the rich boys called me an alien. Look about it's actually yeah, quite no sinister, wonder, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. No, we're saying you don't belong here, <laughs> sir. Your jeans are from Primark. <laughs> Ralph Lauren would never. Yeah. <laughs> Jack Wills at the time. <laughs> well, it's hard to, hard to get the good stuff delivered to your home in Jupiter. 
All right, enough of that. Go to war, right? Right, it's about it, so you couldn't live on it. Oh, God. oh sorry. You know, well, you would know more than I would. Yeah. Um, obviously, that, that, that joke's dead. Go to war, right? a good game. I've got nothing else. Mm. Uh, who was second place? It is Teo, the World Cup predicting odd That would have been yourself. Uh, my Hall of Fame pick is Triple H, love and a steak. Uh, sorry, a sausage, bean and cheese melt. Good pick. Uh, it blew me away this week. I was going to nominate the Walsall 11 that took me down on Twitch yesterday. Twitch.tv forward slash cultaholic. Started a career with Hartley Powell's, the monkey hangers. You monkey know, hangers, know. yes. Monkey hangers. Jeff Stellan, etc. And I've, I've just came up against this Walsall team and they beat me 9-2 at home. Oh, My oh, biggest ever FIFA defeat. 9-2. I got spanked. But Triple H, it's that picture Tom shared where it looks like he is thoroughly enjoying. So you wouldn't expect oh, Triple H to ever touch anything like that. It's a wonder they got him to do that video, to be fair. Mm. So you touched several so, things. So, so, wait, so you've had a heart scare. Yes, that's right. Okay, Whopper, pasties, <laughs> egg roll. Right, great, cheers. Scotch eggs, yeah. I, but Triple H is loving that thing. It's, it's um, I don't know what you say there. It's Hall of Fame worthy. That's what it is. That's all I've got to say on the matter. It does make, do you, think, do you feel weird pride when you see something like that, a big famous person you've been watching for years, enjoying a northern delicacy? He was born here, just about. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Hartford, Connecticut, by what? Yes, right. <laughs> it should have done the accent. <laughs> what the pasty should have? I'm not about the pasty. Oh, born here. I thought he said he was born here. Oh, <laughs> that's what I mean. He was born here. I thought he meant Triple H. Going, that's right. I'm going to talk like this <laughs> in 1996. Ugh. But he's at school with Jack. That's right. Uh, yeah. <laughs> he's in the year above. <laughs> have you seen that blood alien? <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, Good pick. Thank you, Jack. Um, well, since. Again, I know we try to stop doing like serious picks, but since you nominated the Green Ranger, I was like, I'll go for Christine McVie then from Fleetwood Mac because mm. she passed away this week, sadly, and wrote some of Fleetwood Mac's, in my opinion, some of their best songs. Uh, which one's G, right? She wrote Don't Stop, Thinking About Tomorrow. She wrote uh, I Want to Be With You Everywhere, which many people, everywhere, which many people, I think is probably maybe, oh, is it Fleetwood Mac's best song? It's oh, great. Yes, there's a, there's really a lot of really That's good a good song to walk down Northumberland Street. When too. those frat boys <laughs> are right, right. Yeah, yeah. the stride you can get on with that song sensation. Uh -huh. Yeah, That's it. I wouldn't say it was a, a power walk song. That's oh, a relaxing right. song, I think. I think it's quite fluid. It's a yeah. sassy one. The little strut you can get on with that one. There. The little ding, yeah. ding, 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 ding. Yeah. <laughs> ding, 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 ding. There was that advert where the donkey or the little horse moonwalked as well to that song. <laughs> what? Yeah. Are you all right? No, this was <laughs> this was maybe maybe like ten years ago. I remember that advert. Was it Dairy Milk? Yeah, something oh, like that. There was a moonwalking. Oh, during that period where it was like the... Uh, All that was surreal. Where the yeah. gorilla, the gorilla yeah. happened. Aye, right, and then right. everything. Then the eyebrows happened. Yeah. And it, it, it was... Oh, the they, eyebrows they, were... they nailed everything right with the, the drummer. And then it just wasn't the same after that. They tried to... The eyebrows one. They were the two little weird kids. I don't remember that. They're both doing... Moving their eyebrows in time to the song. Very skilled, actually. Um... I'll go for Christine McVeigh anyway, because Stevie Nicks, Stevie, gets all the attention from Fleetwood Mac, but yeah. Christine McVeigh deserves credit as well. And there's been a bit of an outpouring after she passed Absolutely. away. Absolutely. What an amazing story of the band. Like, I know. She seems to be one of the less yeah. controversial ones, to be honest. Right. So I'm getting it right, though. The whole Rumours album was like they were all sick of each other. So they did, did songs about how they felt about one another. Not Rumours. They were all true. That's from Flight of the Concords. Nick, that joke there. <laughs> yeah, no, that song's all about how they all broke up and had affairs with each other and yeah. hated each other, yeah. And you can an go, your, you can go your own way. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you can't break the chain. It's like all this yeah. stuff. It's like, wow. Mm. It's so weird. Didn't, didn't ABBA have that as well when they had that song? ABBA? Oh, the old divorce. Yeah, yeah, was, yeah. yeah. was it when it when it takes it all or something like that? It was divorce specifically... elements, yeah. Yeah, oh. I don't know. <laughs> no, it, it was something like that. It's like so oh, wait, again, oh. some of the finest pop bands, some of the greatest albums and songs of all time, and they're all hating each other doing it. Ah, oh, it's fascinating. That's yeah. how the podcast is so great every week because we just go home. God, oh, another week without them. Not. Oh, <laughs> oh, you know, I, I tried to joke. I'm sorry. Hey, of course, there's nothing but love here on this table. Look at that boy. Oh, Andrew, stop crying. Way. No, he's. He's it was a joke. Of, part of the crew. Anyway. Andrew's filling in for Dan for part of this podcast, I should explain to everyone, but there will be a switcheroo at some point. Yeah. Um, like when Nitro would switch over the second hour and there's yeah. pyro mid-match. Yes. Due to poor so timing. When Matthew puts his bitch face on, that's when you'll know Dan's behind the seat over there. <laughs> <laughs> It'll be like Thunder Rosa around the touch. No, she's losing. <laughs> Hi, Dan. How are you? It's like when Regal <laughs> introduced Moxley and Danielson and went like, he's yep. one of the finest wrestlers I've ever, ever seen. And also Moxley's here as well. <laughs> <sighs> I wish I remember the artist, but there's one. There's many great fan artists that do stuff at AW. And this one's like, here's, here's MJF. 
I had to wait 12 months to get this dog. So I'm waiting, telling them that you have a zip, it's a dog. It's like, I had to wait 12 months to get this dog. Uh, it costs five grand a, a week just to keep in the mo- amount of food it needs to eat so it doesn't die and all this stuff. Keep it fit. And there's Moxie. I found this in a bin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Could have nominated Fishtifer this week as well. Fishtifer was a cat who got adopted on Twitter because it had a sad face and it went viral and got adopted. So good for Fishtifer. And then it made American news, and there's a clip of this bloke going like, "I'd like to introduce this cat now called Fistifer." He just can't say it right. He keeps saying, "He keeps saying Fistifer." <laughs> but I've gone instead for Fleetwood Mac keyboardist and singer and songwriter Christy McVie. Oh, it gives a second. Go go straight from Fistifer to that. Yeah. R.I.P. Christy. <laughs> Can we end the segment there? <laughs> if you want to vote for any of those oh, no, amazing we need picks. Oh, we can't end the segment there. Carry on. Patreon.com forward slash call the holic. Those ones are God of War, uh, God of War Ragnarok. <laughs> mm-hmm. um, triple <laughs> Triple H. Yeah, the that one, that one, it's me. I want to change my name to Fistopher now. <laughs> triple H. Keaton Fistopher. Fistopher the cat. Uh, and uh, Christine uh, McVie. Christine McVie of Fleetwood Mac. Aye. All those picks are yours, so you're slow <laughs> to vote for. Thanks. Take care. Bye bye. Don't fist your cat at home. No. Leave you go your own way. <laughs> that says this week in the wrestling. It's this bloody week in the wrestling. Ha! Ah. <sighs> this week in wrestling. Smackdown, a clockwork domage. Hey, that's good, that is. Leave that in, I tell thee. Bailey's Survivor Series team opened the show, demanding to know who the fifth member of Team Bel Air is. The baby faces arrive and reveal their final member to be <gasps> Becky Lynch. What are you doing here? Mm-hmm. That was... <laughs> That's the classic well, movie thing, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. making his debut on the podcast. <laughs> Thank you very much, mate. <laughs> everyone brawls and Team Bel Air clear the ring, and everyone's happy, apart from all the people who thought it was either going to be Sasha Banks or, I don't know, Kodo Bushi. Hey, Sasha Banks. <sighs> Her big announcement was meant to be before the end of November, and it's now December. We haven't heard anything, have we? Was it not that she's no. on that thing that you said in the chat the other day? She said she was going to announce it. I don't think she announced that. She's on um, oh, for Bar- Barmageddon. Yeah. Where What's up? Cele- I don't know, Matthew. I saw the advert. <laughs> Nikki Bella hosts it with two other fellas, and celebrities throw back and throw down, or something was the tagline. It's I like a rap battle understand. thing. I think. It sounds like five other shows that are on TV they right now. They were playing, now. I think they were playing like ex, like extra versions of uh, uh, like bar games, like but just massive, massive darts. I don't know. No, wait, I'm thinking, <laughs> yeah, of, really I'm bar, thinking bar, of some dominoes. I'm, th- I'm thinking of something totally different. I thought it Barmageddon was a rap battle thing. No, like no, bars. no. It's, oh, bar, it's actually yeah, like yeah, a pub. bar, yeah. Oh, right, pub. okay, yeah. But so, Nikki Bella's there for some reason. A Gallus in there in the background. <laughs> <laughs> Real man's pub. Mm, I wow. like the no nonsense nature of this segment, though. Mm. It was just like, you know, we're here for the big reveal. Let's get it revealed. Yeah. And when they did I, so, and it was good. Straight uh, the titties and neeps. I'm assuming that they did this because if they'd waited until the show, people would have wanted it to be Sasha. Yeah. And it was in Boston, and she's from Boss Town. Mm. So. Mm. I did enjoy how disinterested Alexa Bliss was the entire time, though. But it's on purpose. Because she's getting taken over. It's she? on purpose now. It's on purpose now. <laughs> <laughs> it's always been on purpose. It's not like a Dull Hudson situation, the origins of the poker player oh. with the boring face. So let's mm. make him a poker player. She's got. She's being taken over, she is. He's got a gorgeous yes. face. <laughs> not, got a, not got a boring face. Yeah. I've always been on Dull Hudson. Oh, beautiful man. face. Beautiful face. Butch takes on Santos Escobar in the semi-final of the World Cup. Sorry, the World Cup on Fox. Mm. Midway through the match, the Tron shows the Usos attacking Drew McIntyre and Kevin Owens. Sheamus and Ridge rush off to help, which allows Legado del Fantasmo to interfere and give Santos the win. Nice creative finish, I thought, getting the bloodline and Owens and Drew involved. Horny Wade made his first appearance on SmackDown oh. when oh. Zelina came out. <laughs> he yeah. liked what she was wearing. She had a, a Russian hat on, I thought. That's what I thought when I saw her nice. fluffy hat. Yeah. Nice I look. would rush to buy her a hat. <laughs> Thanks, That's Wade. exactly what he said. <laughs> and then the, the, the only bit... It was oddly a, cute. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good match, but the only bit I was confused about was when it looked like Escobar was going down looking concussed, but then he was fine. They had the bit where they sort of went to the floor, yeah. and then Butch didn't really touch me, he just went oh. down at the floor and was sort of like, Ooh. Oh. other than that, I hope he's okay. Mm. Good Selena match. Vega was... Uh, good selling, but maybe, Selena maybe Vega not. gave an interview this week. Oh, it's a podcast that I can't remember the name of. It's not what I'd heard of before. Sorry, everyone. Google it and you'll find Google's Lena Vega, Ronda Rousey. She's defending Ronda backstage saying like, I like Ronda. She's class. <laughs> Everyone's been saying, oh, doesn't Ronda cause discord backstage? And so I went, no, and she's a gamer, so I like her. <laughs> she said, we both like games. 
So there like you go. Like Barmageddon. <laughs> no, no, video of the video variety. Ugh. I know. <laughs> Undertaker just and that's the dying of, another death. That's watching the sort of them. closed rank solidarity you get amongst Unit 5 here, the editor. <laughs> no, I'm joking. <laughs> what are you called? The AWO, the Editor World Order. Can you teach Ryan how to do a two sweet, though? <laughs> Yeah, Have you noticed that? Of, uh, was he? I feel bad now that I brought it up. What did he do? Like, none of them? No, it's just that. <laughs> <laughs> so they're all too sweet in each other. Yeah, and Ryan, <laughs> handsome Ryan, just does that. But he can get away with it because he's bloody gorgeous. Aye. To be fair, if you he's watch, from a posh school. If you watch Hogan <laughs> do that in 97, that's basically what he did all the time. He just went like that. Yeah. Never went full away, did he? With he wasn't clearly, on. Not a TV show. He wasn't no, a member bro. of the clique. He couldn't fully. Mm. They told him not to. His geriatric fingers back then. <laughs> Yeah, like, like King Charles. <laughs> Did you know that um, your favorite Japanese metal group, heavy metal, heavy metal yeah. they're they're members of the Bullet Club. Yeah. That's their like sing like symbol. Oh, I remember being a thing. They all do that. Yeah. yeah, they've been quiet recently. Baby metal. Two songs. Two new songs out. When? <laughs> no. <laughs> good, yeah. Oh, yeah, really good. Get them on the spot. like they weren't on my top 100 at all this year. No. Oh. First time in five years. <laughs> but now they're back. <laughs> no idea, Andrew. See, is it still the original? Th well, the, the three that were there. There's two of them now. Ah, because I know there was rumours of uh, Sue. She went. Little she Sue gone. going, weren't there? Oh. <laughs> Little Sue. <laughs> Why'd she leave? I don't know. Uh. Oh. oh, what a shame. You said, Sue, you're, Sue, you're now a... <laughs> Sue, oh, <laughs> God. Wow. It's like the outro of Takeshi's car. <laughs> yeah. Bray Wyatt cuts a promo and says, oh, we should go back to talk about what we were doing. Um, and <laughs> says he knows what we, we want to see The Fiend, but that's not what he wants to happen. He denies attacking LA Knight last week, but Uncle Howdy pops up the Tron and says, the world is bait and lies like. Backstage, an injured LA Knight says Bray ruined his Thanksgiving and he kicked his backside. He wasn't so banged up. Later, we see he's been ambushed again. <laughs> it's so hard. Oh, yeah, that was funny. He's trapped under another pile of big stuff. Yeah. Well, what could it be? That's the question. Well, it's just Bray, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's anti Howdy. Now, I have been a fan of the Bray stuff at first, when it seemed like they had a clear and distinct plan. But now I'm starting to get a little bit less excited about it, I've got to say. Yeah. I'm just waiting seen, for something to happen. Mm -hmm. We've seen the same happenings two weeks in a row now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, promo from Bray. LA Knight does something. LA Knight gets put into a pile of things. Uh, LA Knight had a few highlights, though. If you ain't talking about me, you ain't talking. Good line there. Mm -hmm. uh, let me talk to you. Uh, I don't know what I'm saying here. It was the good little thing. I want to do act it out. With some, I can tell you're both bored of me. Speaking no, of um, we'll just move on. It's fine. No, well, well, we'll, we'll move on. I was going to reenact Matthew's it here. Matthew's a big LA Knight guy. Right. Yeah. 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 I'll be LA Knight. I got pulled out from under a pile of Bray. A pile of what? A pile of trash. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I thought you just said a pile of Bray. Exactly. I knew you'd see things my way. It's oh. classic stuff. It was worth like the, doing that's that. That's like the two Ronnies, that. That's worth so quick. That. <laughs> he's, like, uh. he's like Eric Morgan. <laughs> the Eric Morgan of WWE. Most interesting. <laughs> We're going to go Howdy so far. Rubbish. <laughs> With his two short, fat, hairy legs. <laughs> Bray Wyatt gets the ring. He's like, Hang on. Don't walk now. Someone's got on the ring. My fans jumped the guard real. I am doing all the right spots, but not necessarily in the right place. Oh. Well done, Joe. Should have nominated Eric Morkham for the Hall of Fame. Oh, absolutely. That would have been wise. Yeah. Tell you what. Oh, oh. hello. Ding Sam dong. Punk was seen Bring during the, uh, the little Uncle Howdy bit, doing the old straps to Bray. Means he's coming back, doesn't it? Mm. <laughs> what? <laughs> Sam? <laughs> I little, missed something. The little Howdy Tron that happened during Bray Wyatt's promo. Oh. They this showed uh, Husky Harris getting the straps and Sam, oh. Sam Punk was seen there for he's coming back for sure. It's going to happen. I thought you meant like some of the other stuff they've done. Like Sam Punk was just walking mm. behind him. <laughs> Where am I? It's the second most noteworthy Tron of the week. We'll oh, get to that. Ha, ha. We're waiting for that. Mm. We're waiting for that. The Viking Raiders uh -huh, beat Hit Row quite easily. I didn't know what else to say. Uh -huh. Ragnar Rock and Roll. We know that uh, Sarah Logan is now called Valerie Haller. It's been called worse. Yeah, that's, that's nice. <laughs> the Viking gods speak to her or something. Okay. All rivet and stuff. Because all our mates have cut off all connections. <laughs> <laughs> get away from me, you daft racist. <laughs> oh no! Been Midwest woman thinks she's suddenly a Viking. Do we need to say allegedly oh, there or not? I've not been up. No, to, we've seen it. Yet. It's that's not fair. there. It's the world is seen. That's fair. That's okay, fair. Then. Right, I think the double power bomb was a less impressive finish over the Vikings. I don't know why they changed the old Viking. Woohee! Power slam, mm. elevated power slam. Oh yeah, slam that's what thing. they did do. Yeah. Um, oh well, the the new ones, the new 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 ones. Yeah, how, how many, many, how many times Raiders? can they be new? Yeah. 
But we're going to find out, aren't we? Yeah. Uh, I like when Eric just smacked a shanty in the face. That, that was, was good. good. Yeah. But apart from that, there was nothing to write home about. Hey, no. Roe just there to get Joe. stuffed. Yeah. Like turkey I in guess, a few weeks' time. I feel bad for them, but you always need teams in a tag team division who, excuse me, God, who just lose You're a right. bit. Yeah, I've just, I've got a burp and I don't want to burp. Go on. Well a tiny, done. tiny little burp there. Wow, wow that one punched its way out. I but like it did that. clear. I'm all right now. Good. I'm, I'm very happy for you. We see footage of Dominic Mysterio and Rhea Ripley go to Ray's house. This was the part where Orange did it. And beat him up. What a great video. Vicious, <laughs> man. Aaliyah didn't even try and help. Ray opened the door with his mask on. Damn. Dominic, oh, yeah, what are you doing here? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't even think of that. Well, he always has his mask on. Yeah, he's Ray Mysterio. Of course he's he not married in his mask. Of course he does. Course he yeah. does. Mrs. Mysterio doesn't know what he looks like. <laughs> yeah. And he's like, what are you here? This isn't the time. And Dominic's like, I'm here for Thanksgiving with her family. Isn't this the perfect time to be here? Oh. There's a couple of details. I, I brought my large goth girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> I love the picture that got smashed. It was like an official WWE picture of him and Ray with the tag team Raw titles. was in the corner <laughs> of it. <laughs> Massive letter. Just clearly printed off Google seconds yeah. before. <laughs> and then Ray Mysterio has got a 12-foot nutcracker in his, in his room there. Oh, no one likes wow. a bracket. Massive. <laughs> Massive nutcracker. <laughs> Let me tell you, Michael Cole was fantastic when he was introducing the segment where he's like, that punk spoiled brat and his entitled kid girlfriend, witch. Michael like Cole's that. been <laughs> really <laughs> ramping up the... I think they're going to beat him up at one point because he's been really been ramping up I, the... I swear, Cole might be jealous. Up for, <laughs> I mean, well, he's yeah. only human. Yeah. For winning most improved this year. Oh, yeah. Without the, the getting rid of the shackles of Vince yelling in his ear, mm. getting him tinnitus. Uh, he's been bloody lovely in commentary. I yeah. learned for the first time this week. Shout out to Jacob, who uh, writes some scripts for us, the worst wrestling matches of each year. Mm. Is, and and I, I look through them before they get sent off to be voiced. Just a peek behind the boring curtain there. Um, but he wrote in the script and I checked it. I was like, that can't be right. Michael Cole was a legitimate war reporter before. Yeah. I didn't never, never he knew He would that. say it a bunch of times, I think, in some, some semi-work shoots. I've covered wars and right. bands. He was uh, in the yeah. Yugoslav. He was covering the Yugoslav yeah. wars. Wow. And then he got shouted out by Vince for 20 years after that. It's like, I wish it was back there. Yeah. No, nah, bless him. Ah. Well, uh, where are we are? In the world, sorry, the other World Cup on Fox semi final, Ricochet scores an upset win over Braun Strowman after interference from Imperium. Mm. Uh, Braun and Ricochet fight them off after the bell, but Braun helps Trevor to his feet. What a great, very likable, loved by his peers guy. <laughs> <laughs> the, 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 the subtext was quite strong here, do you not think, with the flippy flopper going over the big boy? Um, I yes. like Michael Cole's breakdown of Braun's tweet. He, he dissected he that son of a bitch, didn't he? Uh, good to be not there for the distraction. I liked it. He didn't look so scared this week. They went back yeah. in the right direction. Yes. I thought there, that was bad when they did that. And uh, yeah, but Ricochet saving Braun from the attack after the bell made no sense after what Braun said about him. But again, when as much that Ricochet's done as a character made much sense at all. It's either just been crap or nonsensical, hasn't mm. it? But <clears throat> the Imperium uh-huh. have been battering Ricochet. <laughs> <laughs> you are right, Ross, though. They have been battering oh, he Ricochet. Oh, he's Wes Lee. Think of the, <laughs> the smugness. Oh, oh, that was a good idea. So get some, some lovely tag matches, hopefully later on. And yeah, just... Uh, Little and large, another comedy duo from the 70s. Stay I'm off right. social media. Braun, I guess, is the answer there. Oh, that'll work. Yeah. I'm relieved as well, like Ross is, that they, they've stopped Gunter from being too scared. There are some wrestlers who should just never look scared. I watched another episode of Raw and Viscera looked scared and it was wrong. Mm. It's all the union was surrounding him with planks of wood and they were going to beat him up and he went, oh, Viscera shouldn't be scared. He's not got a feeling. <laughs> the camera went, uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> And then he deliberately like feeds towards like Foley more because yeah. the other three are rough wrestlers. They're just going to yeah. hit him with it as hard as they can. Yeah, Bless him. Uh, backstage, Kevin Owens finds Sami Zayn and advises him to betray Roman before Roman betrays him. Jey Uso is eavesdropping and hears the whole thing and goes, hey, Sami, you all right? Yeah, yeah, I just got here. Mm. What, you, you haven't just spoken? No, no, just got here. Not spoken to anybody. Oh, was the yeah, be- that was a noise the crowd made, by the way. Like, oh, 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 oh. It's the best thing he could have said because we're along for the ride here, aren't we? So, at that point yep. in time, you're thinking, Sammy, you've done it now. You've pissed everything away, but no, he pulls it around at the pay per view. Mm-hmm. I thought that was another perfectly done segment because mm-hmm. Sammy never went to Owens. Owens went to Sammy. Jay mm-hmm. was listening in. Everything was good. Lovely. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. 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 Yeah. 
Ahead of their scheduled tag team match against Raquel Rodriguez and Shotzi, Ronda and Shayna attack Raquel and injure her arm. Shotzi wants to have the match Don't anyway. <laughs> and Shayna has to they, be wanted, the, they wanted to make the Survivor Series match even less anticipated by having Shotzi injured. <laughs> by going in the way. I'm assuming yeah. that Raquel couldn't attend the pay per view because why would you not have her involved? Because she's hurt. She yeah. was like the equalizer for Shotzi. It just a set scene. Yeah, Shotzi wants to have the match anyway and is joined by Raquel midway through, but they lose in the end. Shotzi later gives an update. On on Raquel's condition, saying she suffered a broken arm and a dislocated elbow, so oh. she would not be at the show. But and she wasn't. Yeah, but the, oh. on this SmackDown, she comes back. This entire angle built Raquel ten times more than did Shotzi. And yeah. Shotzi was in the match. Well, maybe they are building Raquel for the long game. That's one of the, the fabled big five that happened at the weekend. You're right. <laughs> yeah, it was. Yeah, it was for a big show. Oh, it was such Although, a weird build. Judging by the engagement on the channel, people hate Survivor Series yeah. more than the other three. Way more. Well, because it's the first time in, wow, a long time they've not done that. That's right. The one time of the year, red versus they didn't blue. Like it then boo, 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 boo. And yeah, I think it's just, it's reputations in the mud. People don't like Survivor Series. Yeah. I'm sad for it. I think if they do this every year, it could be actually a proper mm. team versus a proper team feud. I think it can be brought up back to Build where it used to be. Game. But yeah. yeah. Uh, and then the main event, Seamus and Drew face the Usos for War Games Advantage. There's a lot of interference from both sides, but Sammy eventually gets himself ejected, leading to win for Sheamus and Drew. Mm. I mean, it's it's weird that the Usos lose because they never lose, but if you were going to do it, then this is the way to do that's it. Be, they have to make an attempt to make it look like they're going to have some negative against them. Yeah. And that's a very rare time that the good guys have got the advantage. Yeah. I think when TNA did that, they were laughed at. Because it was the first time, I think, in history that had happened. So I, I think this might be legitimately the second time in war games I can understand why, because all the intrigue and all the potential story was in the bloodline, not in the... So I guess you want it that way, I suppose. I thought yeah. Kevin's role at the end was brilliant. Brilliant! Because again, we're along for the ride, so we're thinking so Roman's not going to be happy with Sammy. Jay might make Roman even less happy with Sammy because yeah. of what happened in that match. It was a fantastic ending. Mm. Yeah. But I like... I, it was weird. It was a Lumberjack match. Without the lumber, Lumberjacks allowed to be Lumberjacks. Yeah. If that makes any sense. Yeah, pretty yeah. much. Yeah. Aye. But I was fine. But we missed the bit where... Sammy went and saw Roman. He's like, hi, boss. And he goes, oh, not sorry. talk to Maybe anybody. I no, I've not talked to Wait, anybody, no, Roman. We we'll broke it down, yeah. yeah. Uh, you just started... oh, sorry, no, that was Raquel Rodriguez's arm we broke down. You... <laughs> I think it was in the paragraph you were reading, but then you got excited and started acting it out yourself. <laughs> yes, exactly <laughs> okay. I'm very sorry. That's right. the bit where I was like, we're along for the ride, and at that, that point we're thinking Sammy's right. done for. Oh, man. Yeah, but and it, it got worse at the pay-per-view. But then it got better. But then it goes, <laughs> oh, I've just seen this beautiful headline by uh, Jack. Oh, AEW no. Rampage, not the first shocking heel term committed by a Vance. Are you referring to Lance Vance? I'm referring to GTA, GTA Vice City's what Lance Vance. What a callback. Thank well you. done, you nerdy get. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I couldn't believe that. That's more shocking yeah. than Big Smokes in San Andreas. Oh, that one hurt. That one did hurt. Oh. Smoke was so lovable. He wants Until all the food wasn't. and that. No, yeah. no. FTR retained the Ring of Honor tag titles against Top Flight. Danny Martin reportedly suffers an injury scare during the match, but is apparently doing fine now. Hopefully. That's currently the latest on yeah. that. Yeah. snake bitten those two lads. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Bless him. Darius, I've uh, said on commentary, out for 13 months. Then he was back for six weeks. Then he was injured again Absolutely. for ages. Yeah. That was in April. Mm -hmm. uh, the Gun Club come out afterwards and have a stare down with FTR. Ooh, looking forward to that. <laughs> um, <laughs> Why are all these other tag teams scared of FTR? Apart from the acclaim. Because I know that they're going to win to keep worse. them happy Why? because they're not going to be in the main tag scene. Yeah. Mm. Anyway. The Bucks have run away to the trios division. Exactly. The tails between their legs. Bit of a Ron Seal match, though. The flippy lads did the flip stuff, and FTR didn't. And then the best move of the match for me was Harwood's lariat on Darius. Mm. Mm. Smacked him, so he did. Mm -hmm. um, that's that all to say about that, yeah. Yeah. Did it from the knees, didn't he? Yeah. I was like when they do that one. Oh, so the diesel stuck. lariat, I call oh. it. There was a new story this week that FTR might do like a tag team Cody, where they just go on a gap year and just do all the things they want to do in wrestling. Go around... Wrestle in Japan, wrestle here, wrestle there. I'm not already, sorry, the AAA, IWGP, AEW oh, World Tag Team. I'm not yeah, already doing I've kind that. I've already done that. I don't, I, I, oh. they're very outspoken. Because they're really good, they're allowed to be. I right. saw uh, Dax have an interview with uh, Big Sean Rossi Sapp saying that uh, Punk's just a lovely guy who just loves wrestling. Yeah. His detractors often speak louder than he does sometimes, I think is what he said. Of course, they share best with Bret Hart tapes. They were, <laughs> yeah, they would have got on really well, didn't they? Yeah. They're both just. Rasting fans. Yeah. yeah. And they all hate the books. 
I mean, <laughs> allegedly. Well, not allegedly. Do FTR case. hate the books? Is that out there? I'm well, not. If it's I was in people FTR, have gone. I would hate the books. <laughs> <laughs> it's not necessarily the style of wrestling, nothing else like that. It's, first of all, again, not to belittle the point, but the books did manage to mess up the dream match years in the making the first time around. And then they had that other match where it was just a big match on Dynamite. And it's like, okay, well, logically, we should be having the rubber match, right? And it just hasn't I feel happened. like the books have been a little bit Shawn Michaels in this whole situation. <laughs> yes. Yeah, you'll get your win back. Just I not know. right now. Not in as big a match. You've got to keep you hot for that gun club feud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Carry on that. Like, they're all like the stars of the show. Yeah. <laughs> like, we're back. And every week, if they have been, like, obviously, they claimed and... Uh, Swerve Show? That's not right, is it? Swerve Not Glory. Swerve not I like glory. Swerve Show. <laughs> <laughs> Swerve Not Glory have been doing their thing, and it's just like FTR have literally come out of the, the, of the promos and go, we have been the number one contenders for months now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know that, right? Okay, mm. cool. Anyway, we get a powerhouse Hobbs, p -p 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 powerhouse, where he says there's something we don't know about him. He's going to take every way, sorry, he's going to take away everything meaningful from us which is a bit harsh. He walks past some guys and goes, grrr, and they go, ooh. Mm. I like the way they shot those vignettes. Mm. It's hard. Mm. I thought you'd like that because it's very much like NXT 2.0. Mm. Is it? Gritty. Oh, I don't think so. Mm. I don't think NXT has seen, seen, has, has seen that kind of grit before. <laughs> Do you think, who's who's the gritty one on NXT 2.0? Oh, Debbie Dull Hudson. <laughs> Imagine oh, no. walking around the beaches of Australia. Bloody hell, this is it's hot. A, it's a bit, <laughs> and, until this week, I would have suggested that the gritty one's Apollo Crews, but after this week... Oh, yeah, yeah, so yeah, he's a true. damn superhero, that guy. Uh, yeah, That's what I've heard. True. Loves coffee. Mm. Wow. <laughs> the JAS got a promo by interrupted by Claudio Castagnoli. Why? Once another shot at the ring of a title. He's already lost multiple times <laughs> trying to get. Jericho tells him he should be more worried about the Blackpool Combat Club, which is a fair point, as Jack's put down it, and That's I agree. True. Jericho agrees to give him one more shot at the belt, but if Claudio loses, he has to join the JAS. <laughs> I hope he does. I think there's lots of legs in that. Make yeah. him do things, you know, just poke fun at his old yodeling gimmick and stuff yeah. like that. Teaming with. Swagger again. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Just oh. make do things they want to do. Yeah, and the BCC's falling apart, so might as well. <laughs> I think it was on this week's Dynamite, actually. He was like, I just want to be here, be the, the best wrestler. It's like, ah, oh, bless you, Cloudy. <laughs> You're not going to be. That's nice. Gonna... That, that and 350 will get you a meal deal from Tesco's, pal. <laughs> Cheers. Darby Allen takes on Anthony Henry, part of the Work Horseman, and wins after Sting takes care of JD Drake on the outside. Are she you fan of the Work Sting. Horseman, though? Oh, yeah, because they're, they're, not only are they German wrestling experts, but... J.D. Drake is really good at the bowling. Is he? Yeah, they do the, they did the bowling thing, which I may be misremembering, but there was a bunch was of lovely, lovely your, people. Yeah, 16 people had, not, some of them, yeah, I'm, yeah. Sure, I'm sure some of them hate my Ten guts, pin? but a lot of people would go, yeah, like, absolutely. Do we get <laughs> no, yeah, with the oh, sides oh, up and everything. Imagine yeah. if he was a really good finger spinner. <laughs> yes. But, <laughs> it's like Fred Flintstone. But Bye, when we, we go to Germany and the, the people who just love going there, the, the crack, the lovely people from obviously Ireland, Scotland, Northern Ireland, um, England coming together, to just go over and enjoy general wrestling. They, uh, I think it was the two Sarahs who said, yeah, we're doing the bowling. Let's do bowling there and uh, just meet up after, after the show. And a lot of wrestlers were like, can we come? I'm like, yeah, sure. So we're just doing it along with, you know, uh, that's rotation, uh, JD Drake and some of the other Americans or whatever. And JD Drake was like, oh yeah, I'm going to beat you up. He would be <laughs> he my, took it so seriously. He'll be my guess as who is good at bowling out yeah. of a lot of wrestlers. He looks like you're good at bowling. Yeah. Mm. Anthony yeah. Henry's good at wrestling. Mm -hmm. he also, oh yeah, sorry. Back to what we he also about. looks like he styles his hair by jizzing in his hand and going oh, like that. No, you no, seeing this no, hair? No, it's shocking at the front. Oh. <laughs> his head scissors thingy on the floor, though. I've never seen it done as well by anybody. You know, when the, the guy's laying down on the floor and the other guy stands up and puts the head between the legs and twists. Oh, he yeah, holds his yeah. in after it's finished. So it looks like it really, really hurts with his jizz hair. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. He did a nice uh, drip and neck breaker in the corner as well. Darby really got his arse had it to him in this match for, the, for a long time. That yeah. didn't sound like a Darby Allen match. <laughs> <laughs> and also JD doing the movie still from Josh Briggs in NXT 2.0. Ooh. I'm only playing games, everybody, the other way around, isn't it? That's, that was the joke. Oh, Sorry, yeah. you've been so uninvited was... to the bowling. Oh, I remember that. What, what was the move? Was it something off the apron? Or... <laughs> On the floor with uh, the ropes. Yes. yes. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Boing. Yeah, yeah the boing. <laughs> <laughs> it's all about the boing. Do you remember Peyton Royce coined the term for her move? She was in a backstage <laughs> interview. It was when the Iconics were like peak being funny backstage. And she was like, I can't wait to hit her with the... Yeah, you know, that's the, right. Oh, God, yeah. they were so good. Yeah. Oh. 
Athena is interviewed about her attack on Aubrey Edwards, but refuses to apologize. Instead, she calls out Ring of Honor Women's Champion Mercedes Martinez. I didn't even know who was the Ring of Honor. Yeah, I was going to say, and then they went, "Who? What? Oh, really?" So yeah. Athena, oh. Athena has been suspended, but she was given a full segment for well, not a full uh, a well, segment. It's weird because she's not actually back yet. She's back on Monday. They said <laughs> you're back on Monday, but have your interview now. Yep. <laughs> Rampage. Uh, Igor Shida attacks Queen. Uh, Aminata, I think. Aminata. Aminata. Despite the presence of Penelope Ford and the bunny. At when ringside. were they back together? Yeah. Penelope yeah. was with Britt Baker, wasn't she, randomly one week? Was it Britt Baker? Yeah, or was she? Yeah, she was part of their yeah. like, little heel group. It was yeah. weird. Yeah. It's know. just, um, that's the formation that came down the ramp in. Oh, okay. Yeah. Like she probably stopped doing that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, good times. In the main event, <laughs> The Blade, The Butcher, and The Rush win a six-man tag match against the Dark Order because number 10 never <sighs> showed up. He arrives after the match and, uh, yay, hooray, uh, evil Uno and uh, negative one. Mm -hmm. So happy to see him. <sighs> number 10 gets in the ring and finally betrays the Dark Order, helping the heels, sorry, Rudos, uh, rip evil Uno's mask and put Alex Reynolds through a table, batters them all, clotheslines, for everybody. Ten takes off his own mask <laughs> and throws at the feet of Brody Jr. before celebrating with Yay. his new pals. And all... what's his name? Is it uh, Jose the Assistant? Is like... <laughs> <laughs> they were giving it big ones. What a segment. We were joking that he's going to join him and go, yeah, I'm going to join them there because I'm a lucha dog got a mask. I can't wait. And it happened. I can't wait to see what like, got him. Because after so many months, it's felt like I've gone, yeah. nah, I'm not interested. Yeah. Finally, he's done it so we need to know what happened there. Mm. Look, oh, well, right, I'll join you. Just shut up. I saw that there was a tweet that went around which was like when you win a game on Fortnite I assume because they're, ah. they're all children so <laughs> <laughs> just a little boy crying that, what, I was tempted to put this bit in the Hall of Fame but I thought people were going to hit me, hit me yeah I loved when that kid cried and people, <laughs> that's his yeah, first that's, that, well, no, no, no. that's his first view set up there though for like oh, yeah. seven, eight years time yeah. nine years mm. time however old he is how old is he now? 11? No. It's minus one. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Interesting look he has, though, is it? I've just about to say he's got an interesting face. Preston Van. Ah, he's like the oh. love, love child of Harry Kane and Chris Masters. Yeah. There was a bit of the Harry Kane in him. Yeah. yeah. There's no way he's the England captain. I am no longer number <laughs> 10. Been, I been, am the Harry Kane Helms. <laughs> he's been getting interviewed a lot, Harry Kane. Yeah. The, it, and... <laughs> If Preston Vance has picked up his promo ability from Harry Kane, there's, <laughs> yeah. no, there's no hope. He's not the best promo <laughs> in the England team. No. Who is the best promo in the England team? Jack Grealish. I don't know if he is. I'm the best thing since sliced veg. <laughs> he didn't say it. I'll not be on board with the veg conspiracy. <laughs> oh, no, more conspiracy theories. <laughs> Who's the best promo? I'll, I'll go for... Um, Connor Cody. I was about to say Connor Cody, just a nice man. A good yeah. baby face. Jordan Brian Henderson. <laughs> Great promo. Yeah. They're not exactly... No, some of them are. I think... Some of them are funny. Where, where are they funny, though? Uh, they're funny in like the behind-the-scenes training when they're messing about, not uh, when they're put in front of the uh, actual so camera. That's, yeah. that's, that's, that's the different, isn't it? Yeah, that's enough. game time. Mm -hmm. Kieran Trippy is like Arn Anderson. He's very serious. <laughs> He's very serious all the time. Mm -hmm. they, they do a little thing where they're doing like keep your competitions and yeah. Kieran Trippier loses because the ball hits the floor yeah. so they get to flick him in the ear and I forget <laughs> who flicked him in the ear but they get him like on the inside of the ear he oh. goes that was on the inside that noted looks at him in the eye oh. <laughs> noted what, that's what Roman Reigns said to Kevin Owens yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah Survivor Series War Games. This week in wrestling is sponsored by Beyblade. <laughs> yes. Let it rip. I didn't know they were still a thing. Beyblade. I didn't know. Bloody hell. I used to play the game with my brother. Put your knuckles in the arena. Oh. First one to pull the hand out was uh, the loser. The big dirty loser. Wow. No. I would win every That's time. That's a brutal game, game man. Especially when you had the metal ones. We had the metal ones, us too. Did your mum ever catch you doing <laughs> that? Because that's not a game you want your kids to be It says on the packet, don't do this. She let us fight. <laughs> Whoa, rather like Team Bianca Belair versus Team Bailey with Becky Lynch getting the pinfall. Uh, very happy seeing Bianca Belair get the biggest pop of the night. Bigger than Becky's. Was it? I thought so, yes. Ooh. I had my hearing aids on because I'm old. <laughs> I've realised that I'm always really interested to hear your report on the crowd because mm. I'm normally watching it with other people so I don't hear... You know, because I think the older I get, you taste change. So people are like, wow, what a great match. They beat the hell out of each other. I'm like, the crowd didn't care about Was anything you Hogan did. Was it Rock Hogan at WrestleMania 80? Yeah. Give me that or give me death. Because there'll be some matches there I like, appreciate. Like, people are like, oh, my God, what a move. Blah, blah, blah. I'm like, and then Grado comes out and does, like, two moves. Gets <laughs> 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 the biggest pop of the night. I'm like, Grado's a better wrestler than any of you. That type of thing. But anyway, obviously, nothing Grado-ish about this. They had a lovely 
match it. Both War Games matches gave us the War Games spots, gave us the required number of bumps and crazy stuff and everything else like that. Eo uh, is a mad lady. Yes, yeah, she is. There was some sloppiness, <laughs> yes, sure. <laughs> That's the first time she ever made a mistake, that woman, when I've been watching her. The little, little corner drop kick thing oh. that went wrong. Oh, like, yeah. I've never seen her, like, no, you see the giant cage, Eo. Yeah, the giant, oh, yeah, right. I've never seen her make a mistake before, I don't think. Yeah. Testament to her it, abilities. I made him out of match with a bin, trying to get in there. Yeah. Dakota Kai's done something backstage, I reckon. She, she got thrown. She got beaten up a oh. lot. <laughs> yeah, especially Against that cage, especially. Minutes. Was she the one who took the power bomb into the side? That's down one. Yeah. Oh. And she took all of Becky Lynch's weight off the final spot. Like yeah. That, oh. Yeah. She's got no ribs anymore. She oh. didn't play games with Ronda. Really, really enjoyed uh, Nikki Cross's role in the match as well. Mm. Uh, the curry lingers in the cage, which is the, the tip of the iceberg. And everything else from huh? there was Oh, fantastic. she did? She went blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Thank, thank you for translating that. <laughs> Do you not know what that meant? I uh, just... No, I just... Uh, uh. <laughs> I thought the general presentation of her was sensational in this match here. Apart from the handcuffs. I was mainly pleased yeah. with Rhea Ripley, his role in the match, but mm. I didn't like the way she got taken out. You know in War Games matches where it's like, this pair are down and then this pair are down and they're out of the equation. Well, Rhea drove... Who was it on her back? Someone threw Machine. a ladder. Yes, it was. She drove Mia Yim through the ladder and she turned in midair and put Mia Yim through the ladder. But that took both of them out. And I think Rhea Ripley should have been stronger than that. It should have taken more to put Rhea down. Mm. It's all because they were setting up to, to the final storyline. Yeah. They were both pretty storyline driven, weren't they? Just to get up the, the SummerSlam uh -huh. yeah. redo of uh, Bianca and Becky against Damage Couture. Mm -hmm. Yes, well said. Oh, yeah. uh, I also like Rhea doing pull-ups in the cage. While everyone did, everyone liked that? Yes, they did. Thirsty <laughs> bastard, man. Of course they did. Oh, no. I w it was unique. You don't see Becky take to the skies very often, so it was nice to see. I think she did a promo the next night. She was Sorry, two nights later. She was like, yeah, I'm back. Look, jumping off cages. Mm. See, I'm healthy. Fair play. Get that up here. The only, other one, killer. <laughs> the only other one I can think of is when she had that really good no DQ match with Charlotte. The evolution, evolution, evolution yeah. evolution, yeah. And she jumped off the ladder to do a leg drop. Yeah. But yeah, you don't often see it from Becky. Good she's, she's a ground Pokemon, if anything. Well done. Or fire. She's fire. Of course she is. She's fire. Whoa. Backstage, Jey Uso tells Roman about Sammy's conversation with Owens on SmackDown. Roman later confronts Sammy about it. I beg your pardon, this was on the pay-per-view, not on SmackDown. No, they were um, good. Both were, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. And Sammy admits he talked to Kevin, but he swears he would never betray the bloodline. Roman seems to believe him and they hug, but Reigns looks incredibly sinister in the process. Oh, I was worried. Oh, so, yeah, he goes, Sammy, so why did you tell Jay you didn't? And he goes, well, you know, it's a big match they're on tonight. He doesn't need any more pressure. Made sense completely. It's a good excuse, isn't it? It's a good, I like, oh. Mm -hmm. It turns out he was just telling the truth all the way through. Yeah. yeah. But I, I fell for it, mm -hmm. hook, line, and sinker. Yeah, Should and Reigns knows. worked me. Exactly, and Reigns knows that Jay Uso is a salty bitch. Mm. Oh, so. you thought Sammy was buggered heading into that segment, like, mm -hmm. but then it all came, he looked at him in the eye, didn't he, Roman? Mm -hmm. And he saw a man telling the truth, mm -hmm. hopefully. I love um, this. Someone pointed out, it was, uh, I think maybe Owen, one of the lads I watched it with, when, in that whole segment, when Jay leaves and when Sammy comes in, in the little gaps at the start and end of a segment when there's just silence, Heyman just sits there all the time. He's like, is he there all the time? Just sat behind Roman going... He might try looking. <laughs> Weird. The answer is yes. He doesn't really, he's an amazing talker, but now everyone in the bloodline is. So it's like, do they need yeah. him? Yeah, yes, they do. He's the wise man, I suppose. Of course he is. After the Good Brothers and the Judgment Day brawl in the crowd, AJ Styles beats Finn Balor with the phenomenal forearm in what was AJ Styles' first pay-per-view single, sorry, whatever, major, what do they call it now? A premium live event. Thank you. Uh, singles victory in three years. <sighs> really? Yeah. There was a what? graphic, there was like a graphic like. going around on Twitter that was like, AJ always loses. Wow. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's not me for six, that has. Bless I, you. I liked the match. But then then afterwards, I thought, why am I surprised? They're both really good. Yeah, I wouldn't say it was the same level as the one they did at the, uh-oh, everyone's ill no, show. Yeah. But it was good. Uh, it gave me what I wanted. One of these weird things was like, yeah, that was very good. They did this. Blah, blah, blah. But then like an hour later, I'm like, I'd forgotten about it. I thought it was just a really good raw match, mm -hmm. not yeah. like a there premium live event special. That's a good way of saying that. Was yeah. the finish a bit out of nowhere for anyone? Yeah. They, were, they were punching each other, and then AJ hit the forearm, and it was like because it was all about Balor's leg, wasn't it? And all of a sudden, who's that coming out the start out the sky? R E Y. It's uh, AJ. Mm -hmm. It's D L I S. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Here we go. I was uh, shocked to see by. Uh, uh, styles win actually because I thought just all the investment in TV time has been put into the Judgment yeah. Day because we thought this could be the feud ender don't worry <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah Ronda Rousey beat Shotzi to retain the Smackdown Women's title 
Austin Theory steals one in the triple threat <laughs> match with Lashley and Seth. Can I explain my point from earlier about on, Ambrose? Uh, so Shotzi wanted to make this match good, but it felt like to me, and I know nothing about wrestling. That's clear for all to see. That's it a good thing like, to say. Several hundred episodes in the podcast. It felt like Ronda didn't want to play ball. There was a couple. Really? Of, there, was a, there was a couple of spots where Shotzi came off the top, and I know Ronda reversed it, but it felt like oh, she sort of like really naff. Yeah. Oh, I like that reversal. That was a high point for me. <laughs> the crowd, the crowd, it looked better on the replay than it did in real time. Oh, I thought you were joking. Because they slowed, no, no, it, no, they slowed it. it right down, didn't they? Yeah, it was good. And then the it was the, a, like a judo throw. <laughs> oh, and mind. there was the DDT spot on yeah. the apron, which that wasn't. She did it. She's done it before to Bianca Belair in NXT, and Bianca took it just like a pancake, right? Mm. Yeah. flat. But Ronda sort of held on and didn't just did it. It felt like the shots he wanted to make more of the match than Ronda did to me. Neither but, of them are a ring general, are they? And they, I, I imagine both women are the ones being led in matches. So who leads this one? Well, Shayna, and she got knocked to the outside. I mean, I don't know. It was mm. weird. Then again, if you are Ronda yeah. and they haven't built shots up as a credible threat, why would you? That's a good point, Ross. I guess. Uh, yeah, were, I, they, I love Shotty, uh, but I think we said last time that her tank had a better chance of beating Ronda than she did. And this was just a match. It's just, okay, we need Ronda on the show to do something. It's like the Jade Cargill. I like, got to do something. Have you on there? Bang, bang, bang. But yeah, the, um, the DDT looked rubbish. And there was a lot of like, okay, just do some stuff. And then it went to the finish, and that was it. I and do feel it was exactly what I thought it was going to be. I didn't think it was going to be a banger by any means. I do always feel bad for Shotzi because Twitter and social media and that seems to have. She's like the new like. There's always someone there's like Naya or whoever. Like whenever they I have a bad you, like, match, people like lay into them. Rest and Twitter can be brutal when it comes to the women. Yeah, especially sometimes. But but Shotzi, I think, even though she sometimes doesn't have like amazing matches or anything, she always. I feel bad for her because she always gives it full. Like she gives it a big effort all the time. And the people can't wait to lay into her. And I'm like, oh, poor shot. Yeah. And I, and I think to the extent where I'm like, have I missed, like, has she said something awful? Like, why do people hate her so much? Right. Is it, cause she, is it just because she's a bloody woman? <laughs> I shouldn't have said bloody I think there's a lot of, No, I think there's a lot with that when it, that's what you say right. jokingly, but I think there was a lot when it comes to some of the rest of that. I also need to remember as well, and I need to get mind of this, because obviously Twitch chat, like, have you seen what people are talking All the people are talking uh, about this. You know, it's all it takes, just Joe. All it takes, is, back is, all yeah. all it takes is like three big Twitter people just have the vaguely similar opinion. People are like, oh, this is what everybody's saying. Yeah. So. Mm. It was weird the build as well on the kickoff show, because then that's when they made the thing about a dad, wasn't it? Bringing that into the story. I was like, oh, I, even, I skipped the kickoff. I show. didn't see the kickoff. Yeah. Why wouldn't you make that? I forget what the story was because I didn't watch it. I thought either. you were going to say, oh, why wouldn't so... you watch the kickoff show? Yeah, yeah. I thought you were going to say, I was like, yeah, I said, no, no, why reason. wouldn't you put that in the story three weeks ago? Mm. I don't know. Okay. We're saving That's it for day one, which has been uncancelled. <laughs> Austin Theory steals one. The dual threat match of Lashley and Seth becoming United States champion once again. Now, considering I could not care less about Austin Theory, I was really invested in this towards the end we're exchanging pinfalls as was the crowd because I don't care about him I didn't want him to win the title and he bloody won it I was like I was like all those white guys going oh and then he showed <laughs> afterwards I'm like nah bollocks I didn't want him to win I love so this it's, been a, it's been a while since we been invested in the match rather than like oh yeah well done Styles and Baller well done Ronda Shayna like, Shayna uh, Shotzi and it's just like oh I hate you it was a good legitimate month. emotion in that and especially what happened in the intro Jack let it rip Austin Theory sponsored by Beyblade. Just that would, weird delayed reaction where people are going, wait, they've made, they've made a mistake. They made a silly mistake. It's be No, he's actually got it. This match is brought to you by Beyblade. Oh, it was a deliberate thing. I was saying if you looked at his Tron in isolation, if it was the Vince McMahon era, you'd be thinking his brand new name was Beyblade, whatever it was. <laughs> <laughs> action, action Blast or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> So he's just standing there doing his pose at the right moment when it's yeah. on the screen behind him. Vince McMahon's genius rises again. <laughs> so you're like, ah, oh, what are we saying? Like, no, it was supposed to happen. It, 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 so they're doing the Wayne's World bit now. Where it's like, we would never sell out to look, drinking Pepsi after this product. <laughs> <laughs> I did like the way the match was structured, though, because he was a complete afterthought. Like, yeah. for the opening bits, you think, now he's got oh, no chance here. Lining him out, yeah. yeah, and then the, we got to the bit with the double hurt lock and the elevated stomp. Uh, from Rollins yep. and Lashley, respectively. And then uh, I liked how the finish was done as well because it kept everybody strong. Bobby did it. Rollins took it. Yeah, Theory was clever. <laughs> yeah. I, there were like, so many unique triple threat spots in this match. Yeah. I really liked it. Do you remember, I remember the last time of Pooh House we saw with this was, was it Miz, Way Barrett, and Curtis Axel? Miz put on his I met Ric Flair once and I know the figure four leg lock on Wade Barrett and then Curtis Axel just pinned Wade Barrett and he's like no 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 can't get his legs in time quick enough to stop him so good to see those type of finishes yeah 
In the main event, Sami Zayn proves that he's Lord of the Bloodline, helping them win the match and even making up with Jay afterwards. Oh. Yeah, lots of making out. So the was match... a, It was an aggressive hug yeah. that him and Jay had. It yeah. remind me of China and Marlena, but if they loved each other. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big bear hug. He's just conserving his energy, as Jonathan Coachman would say. Yes. Oh. Who was that? Was that Ronda and Naya? Yeah, I think oh. someone and Naya. I yeah, think it was, it was Ronda, yeah, yeah, because it was like, uh, yeah, Ronda's like, oh, well, you know, she's in that, she's in that hole, but she's not being hurt. Did, did like, I, what, what, what you, why would you say that the rest I, of the commentator? Did Coachman forget that rest holds on, like, Meant to be a real. That doesn't hurt. Yeah. No, it does. <laughs> no, shut up. It's Corey. It's like, what are you saying? <laughs> Coach just said b b balls to this. Who's ever pinned? Who's ever submitted to a chin lock? <laughs> uh, Graves, shut up. Get out. <laughs> nah, but we didn't get that. So, uh, yeah, I'm trying to think anything else of the match. Uh, people batted one another. Mm -hmm. Kevin Owens looked really good here, considering he was hobbling a bit on Raw. Apparently, he was still like injured, like his knee or whatever mm. the issue was. I wondered that when he was the last one in. I thought he'd be. Although I guess he was like the big, not surprise, but you know what I mean, the big feature entry yeah. as well, I guess. But this was just all based around the story of Sammy. Mm -hmm. Even though it was the cages and the tables and everything else like that, it was all built around that, which is why I was invested in it. Yeah. I am so into this lovely little storyline. Um, don't care. It's like, yeah, great. It was done well it. when uh, was it Jimmy was going to come in, but Roman was like, no, no, you wait there. Yeah, Sammy, yeah, yeah. go and help Jay and prove you're loyal. Yeah. They're doing it all well all the way through. I thought it was funny that the commentary team was getting up at Sammy for Hoof and Owens and the Nads when <laughs> Sammy was in the match anyway and Owens inserted himself because he cares more about Roman's titles mm. than he does with his friendship with Sammy mm. and everything Owens did in NXT and everywhere else. I'm on Team Sammy here. Owens is a dick. Kevin Owens is going down in my <laughs> estimation, especially after his promo on Raw, which we'll get to. Yes. Uh, two notes here. Uh, first of all, someone did speculate, I think it was on the unsuccessful, unpopular wrestling memes thing, that was had a picture of Triple H consoling a sad Michael Cole going, Michael, are you all right? He goes, oh, well, I can't yell boss time or uh, it's, time. It's, it's the big dog anymore. I'm so upset. He goes, oh, not the worry. I'll fix that. And it's like, it's fight night. <laughs> I think, do you think that they put that there just to keep going? And I thought that was a good joke. Also, I think there's a lot of truth to it. The woman who uh, did the announcement on. saying it's time but when it's the match beyond, yeah. she goes, Whoa, okay. Big Alicia. She's a drummer. Oh. I was like, what? It's the NXT announcer, isn't it? I thought he yeah, was. Alicia. I, thought, I, think he... I thought they had a guest one who was a drummer. Oh. Tom tagged her in a tweet. Hang on. Oh, she doesn't much. I was paying attention. I'll find out. Can't well, once you go, it's time for no. War Games <laughs> with a <her> mouth. <laughs> Andrew, you know rock Imagine and roll. Imagine that the big spot of the match, someone's died through a table. Dun -dun -dun. Yeah. <laughs> oh, no. Sam Zane just told Kevin Holmes. Alicia Taylor, yeah. Yeah, she's the NXT Alicia lady, Taylor. And then I went on her Wikipedia. She's played drums for Kate Nash, Kelly Osborne, Hannah Montana. That's a varied collection. of The All Girl Boys Choir. I don't know what that is. <laughs> Selena Gomez, Chris Rena, and others. Wow. She replaced Kayla Braxton. Who moved to an interview position? Yes. So she's oh. so she's a ring announcer now, but used to drum for pop stars. A spoil for choice at the minute, like because Samantha Irvin, who is the normal SmackDown one, mm -hmm. is very good, mm -hmm. and she's also very mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. Aye. Mm -hmm. Up the announcers. Up the announcers. And the other thing was, uh, I just saw it <laughs> coming to work today. Bobby Fish apparently put on Instagram <laughs> pics. <laughs> Straight away, just say, hey, Ross, what? Bobby Fish. <laughs> oh, no, I know funny. what you're going to say. Yeah, it's it's so unbelievable. Right. Oh, no. We next next right. week, I hope you do that. Remember, I know, in the following bit of news, Bobby Fish. <laughs> uh, picture of all the bloodline wearing red and white, apart from Roman Reigns, obviously, because he's the big chief. And uh, a picture of... Uh, <laughs> yeah, you see seen it as well. <laughs> Him and uh, the undisputed era and go like, oh, imitation is the most sincere form of flattery. Where's the lie? Matthew, where is the lie? <laughs> <laughs> so, is Kane gonna put a picture of them? Like, oh no. Yeah, the, the wolf pack or. Yeah, it, or yeah that was more. Whatever. Yeah. It must Dennis be. the menace. <laughs> I love the first comment on that post. It's like, this is why people hate you, Bobby. <laughs> 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 Adam Cole, what are you doing here? <laughs> it must be amazing to think the entire world revolves around you that much, though. Just because they wore red and black, and you did once upon a time in the same match. I read it. copying you. No, it's a bit when Kevin Owens did a Northern Lights suplex, or attempted to, on a boxer. And... <laughs> oh, I read a bit of news from an interview with McCarthy, the, uh, the Sasha Banks' husband and WWE's chief costume designer. Okay, great. You know McCarthy. He's been up, up, down, down a lot. He's Sasha Banks' husband and go his chief costume designer. Um, he was saying that uh, Roman didn't like 
the red, the texture of the red gear. So that's why he was in black and everyone else was in red. So Roman said no. And he said, well, you, if Roman says, then you kind of got to follow him. Oh. He was in a bad mood that day, wasn't he? No, I'm joking. Right. <laughs> mm. How liberating must that be? Getting paid that much money and just doing what you want. Pat McAfee as well. <laughs> uh, that's, <laughs> uh, that's the ultimate form of freedom. Yeah, that Jeff story. Jarrett. <laughs> it's, so weird. it's so weird that Pat became best mates with Michael Cole because it all started with Michael trying to grass him up to Vince. Oh. He's wearing shorts. Stop his enemies and other friends. Yeah. Oh, isn't that beautiful? Monday Night Raw, the man of the people. Man of, because she's the man. That's right. Yeah. And she was in the crowd. That's right. That wasn't that, the best one. That is, no. um, it can't all be wins. No. This is the, the Ronda Rousey match of the yeah. night. <laughs> Becky Lynch opens the show and goes in the crowd to chat with the fans. Oh, talk to the audience. Oh, this is always death. Bailey, sorry, it's a Simpsons reference. Bailey interrupts and they argue over whether the wrestling fans are, are good or not. <laughs> Brackets, Bailey's right on this occasion. Yeah. Hey, who are you to doubt Bob? <laughs> yeah. Becky's attacked in the crowd by Eo and Dakota. Bailey joins in and they all fight up in the concourse until officials break it up. Uh, I thought it was a lovely little way of getting both the show on the road and Becky back in the gear because she's just kicking ass on the mic and I've got how charismatic she was and just be like, even going out and seeing stuff like, hey, it's so and so, how are you doing? Hi. Hey, that like, great. Yeah, she, you can even make the fans entertaining, which I think is a very hard task. It was very AEW in feel. It Ooh. didn't feel like a tightly scripted WWE promo it, or segment. It reminded me of uh, the one where Cody punched through the skybox to get to MJF. <laughs> oh, no, to get to, he used MJF's scarf wow. to get to Jericho. Yeah. That was amazing. It's a long time ago. Yeah, that was early Dynamite. It, was, it wasn't as good as that, but it felt really good. You yeah. can't start a show like that every week, but I like it once in a while. Mm. Mm -hmm. It was good that the fans didn't let the side down if they weren't indeed plants. Which I guess they could be, but I don't think they were. It felt like they weren't. Or oh, Bob man. and Zachary. They could have said they could have said anything. I know. Oh, it's risky. A lot of faith for hey, the fans. Hey, <laughs> See ya. Yeah. Thought it was a terrible advert for merchandise though by WWE because a lot of that broke on impact. Not very durable stuff. <laughs> We're in the bank lunch boxes getting <laughs> smashed everywhere. Terrible advert. Yeah, because you know kids don't do that with their merch. <laughs> <laughs> it was nice when Bailey was getting escorted away by the security. I'm sure one of them wrestled on AEW recently. The little fella with the brown hair and the beard. I didn't know it was. Yeah, cool. whatever it was, whoever it was. He um, had yeah, beautiful blue eyes. Stunning. Oh. Um, she was getting led away. <laughs> I love you always know stuff like that. <laughs> he was get, she was getting led away. She's like, what are you going to do? Put me in jail? And she's going, I'll break out. <laughs> it, was, it, it was way funnier than when she did it, but, you know, nice oh, little moment. Yeah, yeah. And they panned the right, and there was the A-team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's a good opening segment, though, I think. Yeah, I agree. Mm. Uh, Rhea Ripley takes on Mia Yim. But both Dom and Eddie Styles get involved. And I thought, what a progressive first like half hour raw this was. We had the man, Betty Lynch, and then uh Mammy shirt wearing Dominic. It's like what a lovely oh. Corey loved shouting lovers in the air when they came out straight away. He's <laughs> really hammering home. As you would, I guess. Making them the biggest heel in wrestling. Mm. Yeah. Dom, that is, pronouns boy. That's it. I, I, I thought that was all that was missing was Jim Ross saying pronouns boy <laughs> in this bit. Um the match is thrown out. Uh, Priest, Balor, and Good Brothers all run in two until AJ suggests an eight-person tag match. And then Luke Gallows gets the mic and goes, well, that would be really convenient Survivor Series the other day, you <laughs> idiot. And then actually they do it because this was a long, uncommercial Raw. First hour, wasn't it? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So I guess they had to go long with stuff like this, which is absolutely fair enough. And the Judgment Day win a long match after Ripley pins May Yim. Mm -hmm. So is this the feud over now? I think so. We'll find out next week. Yeah. yeah. I liked uh, how in the first match, how slow Rhea Ripley does everything just because she's can, because she's big yeah. and strong. She really stands out in these flippy floppy times that we live in currently. <laughs> oh, so she's the Braun Strowman. Yeah. Against um, the flippy floppers. I, I was shocked at how much the crowd were into it. The crowd were going mental for the eight-man, by well, the eight-person target. Yeah. Mm. Um, I'm not much of a fan of the, the, the intergender stuff, though, how the lasses can do stuff for the boys. Do a snap mare. Just do something. Mm. I get what you mean. You know what I mean, though? Not a full-on smack in the face. Like, see, there's a line, isn't there? I recently watched Medusa versus Evan Courageous. And I agree. Oh, <laughs> exactly. No. Why? Oh, because you're serious, oh, right? Yeah. Just for a video. Oof. It was... Uh, the commentary are like, well, she wants to be a wrestler. Get in there and find out. And I'm like, Evan Courageous had wrestled for about two years by this point. She'd been in Japan. Yeah, right. She'd been all over the place. What happened to him? He had everything. He was a natural. He didn't. He, no. no. He had the braids. He had the body. Oh, he heard the things that stories that um, the other cruiserweights would call him the Lex Luger of the cruiserweights. He was good, man. <laughs> he no. was with the he right did the people. Oh, I'm sorry he wasn't as good as Rey Mysterio. <laughs> He'd been wrestling for two years. Well, that's what I mean. Two years he, he was wrestling. better than Shannon Moore. 
He was the best one mm. in three. Oh, no, no, no. Helms was the best one in three. Yeah. Yeah. I always thought Evan was the leader, though. Yeah, he was the tallest yeah. one. He was in the middle, mm. I think. He was the biggest. Was he the one in the middle? He was always getting in the middle. And he had Shane on the right. Although I was his right. shocked to learn that Shane Helms is taller than me. That was a reality check and a half. <laughs> I was like, bloody hell. Never mind. The <laughs> hurricane. And then it, my mind this. flashed back to that Austin and Triple H double throwing him out of the Royal yeah. Rumble. I thought, is Steve Austin like a giant? What? what? It is crazy. I knew Triple H was it. big, but... What? There's not many things that change about wrestling history, but that's one of them. That everyone yeah. will be shorter? No, that Hurricane Helms chokes on both of them. Oh, man, imagine. Because even if they got up immediately afterwards and went, get up, you know, no, we're not taking that. <laughs> uh, fair enough. Then yeah. obviously Hurricane Helms could always just cut out that bit, like a second later. Yeah. With the you know up. the footage from the house show where Earl Hebner batters Triple A? Yes. That's really good. <laughs> yeah. Like, is that one of the night when Brooklyn Brawler won a Battle Royal to oh, challenge right. Shawn Michaels later on tonight for the title? Well, they were just having a laugh that, that day. <laughs> that sounds fun. <sighs> We see footage of the Street Profits arriving from earlier today. E, what are they like? Arriving in late. Late. They, yeah. They're <laughs> no, confronted... it was footage from earlier today. <laughs> I know, I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry, sorry. They're confronted by Alpha Academy to set up a match later in the night, which Ford and Dawkins win. I, I like them come back, but I thought they could have done more to make it more impactful because, honestly, I barely noticed they'd been gone until they were, oh, they're back. It's like, oh, great. Where had they been? What was the reason? I don't know. One of them was injured. Oh. Oh. Exactly. They've yeah. they're, they're really done sod all to let us know about this. Uh, it was like, they're back. It's like, oh, it's not that being booked. It feels like since there was all the tension and we thought Dawkins was going to, Ford was going to turn up when they lost the match to the Usos and Ford looked really cross. Mm. I was like, whoa, where's it going? I think we've abandoned that yeah. story. Like, yeah. I hope we have. I hope they pick it up again. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, lovely little match. And I think the crowd Ooh. were like, ourselves like, oh, okay, yeah. Hi. How you doing? Yeah, yeah we know who you are. Yeah, how you doing? And then as soon as they start doing all those stuff, oh, they are good, aren't they? You know, the biggest frog splash in the business. Mm. It's perfect like scoop slam on Otis. Andrew, yep. if you know how to, hit the thing. Oh, my. Oh, 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 oh. baby. My move of the week was Dawkins' clothes slam, I'm going to call it. Clothes slam. It was like a clothes line into a slam. It's like an STO. Yeah, it was wonderful. Mm. Corey Graves sold that amazing. He just was like, not in a Booker T way. He was just like, what was that? Wow. I, I wish, <laughs> this is asking a lot after the fact, but have you been keeping by any chance a tally of who's won your move of the week? Ah, ah man, I'd be interested oh. to know. Someone has at home, though. They said they were going Ooh. to. Really? I think they did in the mailbag oh, a few weeks ago. Get in they? touch. Yeah, please do our work for us. <laughs> The Bloodline come out to brag about their win at Survivor Series. Sammy says the way Jay finally accepted him was really oozy. Oh, yeah. Kevin Owens interrupts and says he understands why Sammy chose the Bloodline over him. After all, he's betrayed Sammy multiple times in the past. And he has. Sammy and Kev agree that they don't want anything to do with each other anymore. Then leave him alone, Kev. And yeah. Owens says it's great to see Sammy finally get the recognition he deserves, but the Bloodline will never be his family. Leave him alone. It's like when someone says... Like, someone's accused of something. He goes, what do you think about this? He goes, no comment, but right. I didn't do it. It's like, no, that, that's not no comment. Nah. Kev, the relationship's over. He's like a bit of Just let him go, yeah. man. He yeah. was Unfriend really, them, just move on with life. Really pissy in this segment, Kevin. <laughs> yeah. Really pissy. No, I'm not. I'm just saying. It's the, Your that family will never love yeah, you. Yeah, what's that about? <laughs> right. Jay steps in to defend Sammy, setting up a main event bout with Owens. Okay. Oh, no. and it was so great after all this month. Yeah. Sat here going, no, 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 Sammy, I got this. <laughs> yeah. Did you Shut up, Owen. Did you think go around Twitter yesterday? Of uh, it was years ago because Sammy Zayn had like 2015 Sammy Zayn hair and beard, and it's him and Jimmy Uso doing the. Yes. The main oh. show back and sides, and they're going. They, that's, they've been they've practicing been... that for years. Yeah. And then Sammy's like, "Oh, we botched it because you went right left instead of left right." Oh, what do you like? Yeah. Down since day one ish. They've been friends wow. for ages. Oh, the one who works so well on this. Yeah. Uh, Kenneth LeRae is interviewed backstage and admits that she's nervous coming back after being injured by a damaged Katal, but she's ready to beat Dakota Kai tonight. It turns out she was telling the truth because she wins. Hooray. Dakota uh, was beaten up, you, we assume, after her War Games match. Though. Yeah, it was weird. Again, yeah. I thought that was, was really a, it, wasn't it? A little bit of poo housery in this match, though, because they did the, the DDT spot shots he tried on Ronda. <laughs> it wasn't a DDT, Two days though, after. Was it? Well, did they, they did on the apron. Did they nail it? Yeah, I can't remember. Oh, no. Oh, no, no he, he was like a... Oh, I'm trying to go back now, man. <laughs> Stop doing one that of, hand gesture. One of them. Yeah. Um, I thought it was nice how it started during the commercial break as well. 
Well, that was a nice change of pace because it's uh, well, she got attacked when she was coming down the ring, didn't she? Yeah. Um, uh, Candice got Dakota, mm-hmm. which is uh, getting her own back. Uh, Dave Benson Phillips were getting written off TV <laughs> for that long. It just turned it with a couple, couple of sluggers slugging it out in the end. It's all right. Yeah, a bit of Marvin Hagler. Yeah. 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 And That's Jim Cornette. Yeah, yeah, nice yeah, yeah, yeah. The sure. Louisville slugger. <laughs> yeah, there we go. <laughs> nice Two to famous see boxers. Kansas. Kansas? What am I talking about? Kansas. Louisville. Nice to see Candice. <laughs> no, AEW. Nice to see Candice <laughs> back again. <laughs> oh, Elias tells Matt Riddle he sees himself more as a solo artist, but I have to admit, they make a pretty good duo. Do they? <laughs> you, seems, all the crowd yelled at the same time I think it seems that one is a lot more invested than the other at this point mm-hmm. yeah you know that chemistry that you know, the bloodline and the Usos and Owens and that yeah it's not here <laughs> the Usos walk by and insult them so Elias tells them to put their belts on the line the Usos say anytime any, any place the rumour is that it's going to be Owens and Sammy versus the Usos at Wrestlemania for the tag belts and well, that would make sense. It would, but it makes me nervous for Cody Rhodes because at the minute, I think fans would want, would cheer Sammy over Cody. Sammy's that over. I don't know, though. But Cody coming back and like, I'm going to win the belt and all that, I think if Sammy's still in the same area of the card as him, people are going to be like, no, Sammy. It could, but if he comes back hmm. like a Lesnar at the Rumble, was it, Les- was it this year? Who won the, this year's Rumble? Who won this year's Rumble? Lesnar. Yeah, Lesnar. Yeah. If they do was that it? with Cody, I reckon he might get booed. Do you think? No. Right. Lesnar, especially if he eliminates Sammy. Especially if Sammy's still in the bloodline and it looks like he might mm. be turning. Mm. I think it's some sort of screwy finish, take him out. Like Owens, mad as hell, takes him out and mm. rolls the back. He's not eliminated or something. Lesnar won the Rumble this year. I know. My head's gone. Well, when, Ronda won. What Ronda won. Return. Ronda won. Because Les- if it Lesnar- wasn't him, I'm trying to figure out who it could be. Oh, Reigns, was, no, was, Reigns was the Lesnar champ. Lost to La- Lesnar lost to Lashley, didn't he? Oh, and then in the and then later in the came night. Back. And then came back, and it was crap. What was that the- feels like 25 years ago. Yeah. All I can think of is Shane McMahon. <laughs> when he came in. Even though he didn't win. I know he didn't win, but I remember just being bad. No, bad everyone. bunny, take that. Riddle, take that. Lesnar, take that. You're like, you are right, mate. Mm-hmm. It's, bad, it's bad watching no one SmackDown because I didn't realize how much I didn't like Shane McMahon. Because I look back and he acts exactly the same. No, he was class then. Yeah, but he would he would come in. No, he would no, no, is that was, the Mandela effect? No, no, 2000, Shane, because he'd show up, do a thing, funny about Steve Blackman and Test and Big Show, yeah. and look great. 2001 is when Booker T has the championship and Shane McMahon is just like, I'm here too. And he makes it all about himself <laughs> and Booker T could just be anybody. They took a rock bottom together through the announce table. Yeah, I know, because he couldn't do Booker T couldn't do anything without Shane McMahon being around there. <laughs> yeah. Just like, it's all right, he'll protect him. He looks worse than he ever was really? in WCW. And in WCW, he was GI bro for a month. <laughs> um, anyway. Shane does have the best chair shot in the business. Good, he should take He's more leaping. Of them. No, when he flies. Yeah. Well, he does go <laughs> The flying does ding. Go ding, yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, Theory brags about becoming US champion, but he's interrupted by Seth, who wants a rematch. He belittles Theory and calls him kid, which provokes the champion into accepting his challenge, but not right now. Okay, fill a segment. I was going to say, uh, other than Simon Miller calling Seth Rollins' outfit, he was dressed like the curtains at an adult film store. Simon. How would Simon know that? He's an innocent boy. Oh my God, you're right. Oh dear, He, he bought Simon. some creatine from there once. <laughs> um, <laughs> us in Theory... All right, him being the US champion, okay, this could be different. He's, he's has career revitalized by losing the money in the bank. Okay, whatever. Uh, this was one of the most generic, like promos I've heard in somebody for a long time. Yeah, nice nothing. jacket. This is the new theory. He had his nice jacket on. A nice jacket. He's the he, new said, th- he put his baby. He was sponsored by Digimon huh. on Raw, <laughs> and is is I've heard his promo a whole bunch of times by people who aren't around anymore and didn't do Whoa. the thing. This is the genesis, the beginning of the McGillicuddy. Whoa. I heard Ken Anderson, uh, Ken, sorry Ken Kendi, do this exact same promo. Yeah, he's buried this in. is the era of theory. They never work. Wow. He did nothing here. This is him being revitalized. Maybe it'll, ha- maybe it'll change, but I was not. Ooh. My bum was not tickled watching this. I enjoyed the way <laughs> he said the words he said, not necessarily the words he said. <laughs> okay. I well, thought, back to Wise again. It felt like he, mel- he meant the words he said, but what he said wasn't exactly... So the tone good. was good, The tone the was content great. was not. Ah, so he's gone up when Kevin Owens said, hang on, you're just play wrestler. Yeah. So he's he's 
being wrestler, but his, his lines are corrupt. Yes, exactly. And I also love the juxtaposition of what Rollins was wearing. So I saw people posting the thing where it was like some model was wearing it down the catwalk and he's ripped it off and did it, done his own version. He comes down like that and he gets in the ring. He's all of a sudden like Stone Cold Steve Austin and down the rock. The juxtaposition of what he was wearing and the tonal shift of his face and whatnot, mm-hmm. it was wonderful. That's why that's why wrestling is good. Because <laughs> yeah. you'll not get that anywhere else. No. Yeah. You'll get Roy Keane dressed like that, staring down Gary Neville having an argument. And if with Roy Keane did dress like that, <laughs> he would make it work. Because he'd think, yeah, just like Roy Keane. He's a clown. So, <laughs> loved it. He's, yeah, but, he's been hating his life at the World Cup. <laughs> has he? I'm not the He's never happy to be there. <laughs> Is he not? Oh. No, Roy Keane hates He's never happy to be anywhere, is no, he? No, no. <laughs> That's why we like him. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though, I feel a bit bad for Bob. Because Bob what delivered... The, fan? The, he, <laughs> no, the, the the wrestler version. Because uh, he delivered the spear that Theory capitalised oh, on. Mm-hmm. And he's just sort of been forgotten about, hasn't he? Yeah, he, he wasn't. Set, yeah. yeah, I think that was the whole idea of it, having a three-way. It was like, all right, wait, well, Lashley, get that belt off you. Uh, or away from you. You can move on to something else. Oh, right. Like the returning Lesnar soon. Mm. I assume. Is he coming back, is he? I hope at some point I'll say hope. his name. <laughs> <laughs> Miz has a bag of money, <laughs> which he's not going to give to you. No. Sounds a bit of black. Either. He owes to Dexter Loomis ahead of their no DQ match, but claims he's injured and can't wrestle. Adam Pierce points out that he's taped with the wrong hand, Gromit, and forces him to compete. Okay. Loomis beats Miz to not only win the money, but also a WWE contract. He signs the deal and hands out the money. The, the, it says to the cans here. Oh, C-A-N-S. no. <laughs> money to the cans. That's a great time. Oh, money to the cans. Here you go, soup. <laughs> <laughs> but Miz attacks him from behind. Johnny Gargano arrives and hits Miz with a super kick for celebrating with Dexter. Oh, and you missed sh- out the bit where this is ancient, this bit, by the way. Yeah, this yeah, is a WrestleMania yeah. 1. This is like stunt He's levels. got the bag of money. He's giving the ones to the kids. It was, Ooh, a, it was, it was a, a hundred. It was a hundy, my it friend. It was a hundred. Yeah, but then they made it showed afterwards. They all went to the merch stand and spent it there <laughs> on the threat of Dexter Loomis, I guess. That kid's kid. having pizza for dinner. But then, like, you know, Miz takes away the dollar and went, ha, oh, give that to me. Do you want to go it was a hundred dollar bill. Okay, the one... Hundred. One little tiny bit no. there. Zero, zero. <laughs> <Dino> <laughs> it was legit. But Gagano takes it and gives it back to the kid. Yeah. Like, oh. I it was, I thought that was, sick. It was that was fantastic. Proper secrets of wrestling. It really, it really was. was. Do you know the narrator's Salem the Cat? Yes. I know. <laughs> Absolutely. Wow. Wow. That's it. Just <laughs> Wow. Let's talk about pile driving Miss Daisy. I've not oh. watched that for so long. This is the, we go, wait, Donovan Morgan. Hang time, on, what are you doing here? That I watched that shortly after learning that wrestling wasn't real. And it, I, that's one of the most influential things I've ever watched in my life. It was amazing. God. Anyway. Uh, stupid cut. Lots yeah, of highlights this in this match, though. Absolutely. Lots of highlights. We had the, the static when Miz got twatted into the ring apron. The little things do it for me, Matthew. <laughs> the little things. The static appeared on the impact. It was fantastic. Uh, the vice on Lewis's head. Yep. Wonderful touch. Just straight back from a commercial break. Yeah. He's got a, a, mm. a vice on his head. Um, a nice little finish when he kipped up into the silence. I thought he was... Yep. Lovely. Miz had his working boots on. Yeah. And him coming <laughs> to the ring as well, petrified with his bag of money. Yeah. Mm. Lovely. His bag of money. Miz, Miz really excels in this sort of story, doesn't he, when he's been silly? There's been bits of this which have been like, all right. I know. Like, where he's like, you've taped up the wrong hand. Like, <laughs> they've been a bit wank. But there have been other bits that have made up for it. Like, the, I've never lied about giving money. Here's you giving money. How dare you? <laughs> you know, those bits have been good. Uh, expands of uh, our own royal family whenever they interview about <laughs> stuff that they go to. <laughs> Just saying. And so those bits, it's been a mix. And it was interesting this match because they were doing stuff, but like, bless Graves, who was working his bollocks off, going like, my God, can you can look at the crazy stuff they're doing? And the crowd was just like, table. <laughs> <laughs> like, they couldn't give him monkeys about Dexter Loomis, uh, which is a shame, but... The will when he murders Gargano. Exactly. Oh, really yes. Annoying little skit. <laughs> Gar- this, again, this did, all this did really was help the Miz. It didn't do that much for Loomis. I mean, crowd were happy because he did a table spot and stuff like that. He had a vice in his head, which is cool. What is Gargano's but, gimme? Little poo house? Comedy man. Right. Yeah. Man of comedy. <laughs> comedy <laughs> Mr. Man. Comedy himself, James Gargano. John Gargano. He used to be Mr. <laughs> Wrestling, and now he's Mr. Comedy. The office jokester. Right. I, I did not see this coming when he moved to the main roster. Yeah. Well. Wow. Yeah, neither can the crowd. So it was weird because they did a lot of stuff right and I thought it ended this and I thought, okay, but the, again, the crowd are like, yeah, do a hardcore thing. We don't care who you are. <laughs> Speed them is. Uh, backstage, Belair, Bliss and Asuka are interviewed about their War Games win. Belair and Asuka are happy 
Bliss doesn't seem fully on board. Maybe she was distracted by that Beyblade, that Bray Wyatt, <laughs> beg your pardon, that Bray Wyatt video that just aired. Mm. Yeah, they flashed up just as the segment was starting. Therefore, the essence of whatever Uncle Howdy is is inside of Alexa Bliss, controlling her mortal vessel. Mm -hmm. What a good reveal it would be if it's actually LA Knight with a mask. <laughs> He's been faking the... He's been pulling debris down on top yeah. of it. Wow. Yeah, please be serious. I didn't do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah who believes you, Bray? <laughs> I think Bray might be telling the truth that he didn't do it, but you'll still end up being evil, controlled by whoever Uncle Howdy is. It wasn't me, it was The Fiend. Yeah, but you're The Fiend. No, it was Bo Dallas. Well, I think it was I obviously think, I think it's all him. Oh. But he can't stop it. Maybe. That feels yeah. predictable. But they would do that. Nah. I'm, I'm begging for predictable right now. Yeah, because that'll be summer. Something needs to happen yeah, tonight. Yeah. <laughs> in there, let's say, like a wrestler tonight yeah. in this ring on SmackDown. Urgh. In the main event, Kevin Owens beats Jey Uso despite interference from Solo Sokoa. And again, nice hot match because the crowd like we love the storyline. Main event, um, Jey Uso. Yeah, main event, Jey Uso, of course. And again, the cops like, my God, can you believe Kevin Owens kicked the Razor Blue? And it was just like, <laughs> yeah, all right, calm down, pal. <laughs> They were really gun. I don't know what was up with Graves here. I think he was just annoyed. Maybe he had compression socks on. I he don't was know. watching this, the the super kick as a concept being killed right in front of his eyes. Mm -hmm. How many kickouts do you need in one match from one move? Yeah. yeah. Um, I like the bumps Owen was take. Owens was taking in the corner. It was mm. like Bret Hart, but not the chesty kind, the, the backy kind. Um, I would have liked to see more coaching from Sammy, just because he knows Kev so well. I oh that was yeah. Just a, a little misstep there in the little story, but that's me nitpicking. Mm. Um, and yeah, just. The last, the, the the second to last super kick that Owens kicked was a Bobby Dazzler written down mm. there, but that could have been any super kick because there must have been about fifteen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and Graves loved all of them. Yeah, yeah. He did. NXT. Yeah, yeah. right. Black I, and dark. I can't yeah. wait for NXT this. Week. Two point oh. Uh, wrestling needs more civil discussion and debate, says Jack. For this NXT was 2 .0. such a discussion-heavy NXT. Oh god. In the opening match, Roxanne Perez beats Indy Hartwell. Yeah, the, the opening match wasn't. Yeah, was that was all action. <laughs> I don't know. No, there was a bit actually because Booker T said about <laughs> Roxanne Perez, what she's got, you can't teach. Booker T taught her. Ready to right, 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 graduate. Yeah, but she's a natural, is what he's saying. She's she's got. I it. took her money. No, she's a she's a promising. She'll be a women's champion one day. Yeah, of the main roster. Twenty years old or something? Is she twenty one? Yeah, it's crazy. It was a weird match though because I would have thought Indy would have been going hell for leather here. Because she's been stalked by this psychopath for many weeks now. She yeah. just won't leave her alone. And this was a chance to beat her up. No, Dexter yeah. Loomis has gone to the main roster. No, no. Roxanne's even more evil than oh. Dexter ever was. Let me tell you. Oh, my God. Condom who, round, no. did, um, she doesn't directly feature in this episode. But just before, did we did we see what Wendy Chu said to Cora Jade on Twitter? <laughs> No. You're not seeing it. You're not going to believe oh, it. Oh, You're not going to no, believe it. Wait, wait, wait. Boy, oh, howdy. Oh, I did see it. It had a rude word. It had the C word. That's right. I do remember now. C Thank word, you for honoring me. C wordy Cora. Mm. No. See you next Tuesday, Cora. Yeah. I couldn't believe Speechless. it. Speechless. She's not the whimsical Wendy Chu at all. I thought I dreamt that. <laughs> I was trying to work out because the story's been that it's got serious now because Cora's reminding Wendy of her school bullies and all that, and she's never been so. Yeah, know, they called her an alien. But <laughs> <laughs> sorry, they weren't bullies. They were just the boys in the Europe. Mm -hmm. Um, but was that part that feels beyond like the story? She can't just tweet that. That's got to be her just saying, "Watch it and get away with." Surely, does she actually hate her? Is it still up that tweet? Have, have a look while I read yeah. out this next exciting bit. Backstage, delightful Hudson oh, apologizes yes. to Andre Chase for costing them the tag titles last week. Duke reveals. Uh, Delightful reveals that he started a petition to get Andre in the Iron Survivor match because he deserves to be a champion. And he's right. Grayson Waller interrupts and says Andre will never be a champion and tells him that Dull has been playing him the whole time. And that was too much for Tia Hale to take. Tia Jeez. Hale snaps. And has literally, to be held literally, yeah, 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 literally, 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 her facial literally. expressions are so annoying. I love how much you hate her. <laughs> I would kick her out of chase you if I was Andre. <laughs> also, Miguel... Whoever this mysterious Miguel... Well, Miguel was in the office last week, wasn't he? Because he didn't yeah. know there was two Bs in Gobbledy and two Os in Guga. Mm. Sacrilege. One idiot. I know. Uh. Dijak wins his Before first... we move on, though, sorry. Oh, on. This is where the first point comes <gasps> in, because... Wait, uh, everyone... She's... I think that tweet's gone, but there is one that <laughs> says, shut up, whore, Jade. <laughs> <laughs> What's she doing? 
<laughs> Whimsical. Wendy. Wendy Chew. Wendy, you can't do that. Effing and blind and like a sailor. <laughs> Bloody hell. <laughs> no. Wow. Ro- Roxanne sucks at finding good friends. That's in character. That's that's not. Yeah, I love that. Like, that's how they talk. Yeah, well, you suck at... <laughs> Shut up, Curse words. Bron Brake is logged on Twitter this morning. What? Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, he'd be fuming. She's she's insulting his girl. He needs to meet with her in the diner to sort this out. <laughs> Braun Strowman's there like, come on, guys. You need... <laughs> don't, don't be like this. Yeah, think before you tweet, guys. Yeah, think come before on. you tweet. Uh, but when Delightful is saying he's got boots so big he could put out a forest fire. Oh, my God. Got... She went... <laughs> They've got pinpoint accuracy. What? Do you not see he said, like, his boots are so big? Thea Hill, like, looked down at his boots <laughs> and were like, oh, bloody hell, he got big feet. I thought you were going to say someone looked down at someone <laughs> yeah, else. Like, well, um, I think, the well, because of the implication. Yeah, and the pinpoint accuracy, I could literally land it anywhere. Um, and last week it was your chin. In my eyes, he just said that he's going to set Chase you on fire. No, no, no. He's going to burn Chase no, you to the floor. This is classic Sami Zayn misdirection, and he is loyal to Chase He's not. He's um, absolutely not. These he two storylines, we can all agree, are on par with how good they are. Yeah. And this mm. one... <laughs> Could be taken into the next stratosphere if if delightful is revealed to be loyal. I would argue this one's a, a different level yeah. to uh, Sami Zayn. Yeah, it's just because exactly. you have to think of it. It's not as obvious, is it? It's more of a mystery. Aye. <laughs> and they both wear black and red. <laughs> Bobby <laughs> Fish's feet. <laughs> I still think he's in cahoots with Keanu James when that gets revealed. Oh, oh. To buy out the land. To buy, buy Chase's yeah. land and take it over. <laughs> yeah. I hope Sean the sexy know, boy's I'm, watching. Yeah. I'm not too sure about her business <laughs> acumen after, you know, somehow bungling a deal with BJ and JB. <laughs> you get struck down with a set of car keys and she <laughs> managed to <laughs> lose on a contract. All right, look. <laughs> Dijak Jack wins his first match back against Dante Chen. Bloody hell at his tan. Dante, get Good it. God. Can Dante Chen just get it together? He needs to get back to what we knew and loved about right. Dante Chen. The most polite yeah. run-in in professional wrestling. Yeah. Yeah. Excuse me, sir. I'm coming down now. Yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I'm losing to you, Dijak. All right, cool. Is uh, Tan and Dyed Blackbeard, are they supposed to make him look like Sylvester Stallone and Cobra? <laughs> I don't get it. Uh, anyway, uh, it says that anybody who stands in his way will be brought to justice. Later, as he leaves the building, Dijak is off the mysterious business proposal by Tony D. Ooh, what could this be? What could it be? I don't know. I don't know. Tune in next week to find out. I have to watch you. No, Dijak's Croatian, not Italian. He can't be a made man, can he? That's He'd the be rules. like the Alan, the Alan Boxic of NXT yeah, 2.0. Yeah, yeah. You have this legend. He used wow. to have like the Croatia. He's of Croatian descent. Yeah. He used to have the Croatian stripes, uh, checks and that, yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you what, though. <sighs> we were saying last week that his new look looks like what you created when you were eight years old on, two, on, like on a video years. game. I. He says, when he said justice is served just before doing his finisher... <laughs> I was thinking it is a full-on eight-year-old gimmick because I remember shouting that at my Hulk Hogan buddy thing. What were they called, the WCW? Oh, yeah. I've still got them at home. Oh, Justice, is served. Ow, Justice is served. You're hurting my uh. left leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Vic was having a great time and currently saying Dijak is out for retribution here in NXT. Oh, <laughs> nah. It was a toy gun be firing off there, sorry. Vic, Desert uh, Storm Joseph, what's he like? Yeah. It's the way he dresses. Yeah, it really is. Uh, Dijak was on Twitter asking, can I pay whatever money you want, Elon Musk, so I can finally change my name away <laughs> from T-Bar, <laughs> please. <laughs> Bless him. Anyway, I thought the, the tan and his look and everything, he's more big market Dijak than he is oh, Tony yeah. D. So The big market's changing. Is it's it? not really what the big market we knew. It's more gentrified now. It's going to get more gentrified the bars, as well. No, no, don't laugh. The bars around there are generally, like, not as, you know... How do I say what? this? Like, they're, they're more likely to play contemporary pop music than, like, Children of the Night. Ah. Yeah. So you have to go to Flares if you want that. Yeah. The oh. big market's changing, man. <laughs> That's great. Sorry, I love that <laughs> lo- lo- stuff. And I'm, in my head, I'm like, talk more about it. It's like, no, move on to the rest of <laughs> JD McDonough, the sexy serial killer, goes to the sorry, to Ed Melter, to the Diamond Mines gym and offers them help against Veer and Sanger, but they're not interested. No. This sets up a match between JD and Judas Creed later on. It's another great promo from uh, JD. <laughs> he's being less creepy and more just when he says, I'm not a skeptic, I'm a scientist. I was like, I'm on board with you. AJ Styles said that about <laughs> the geography of the planet. This is when he goes on about bone density. That's the bone density there. That's, <laughs> yeah. That'll be a downfall there. <laughs> They're too dense, those two <laughs> strapping lads. 
<laughs> Did I buy it? The JD Madonna <laughs> battle and brood thing. <laughs> Ow, you're hurting my bone density. Did I write down, did I mention the match after that or did I leave that until later on? It'd be great if you didn't. That was much uh, later in the night, wasn't it? Yeah, but I, it's a whole page away. But then. like this was at like 3 a.m. last night and I was <laughs> losing my mind trying to get all this together. During his match with Julius Creed, Thank JD you. McDonough tries to use a chair. But Sanger shoves Julius out of the way. Jade and yeah, so Sanger gets hit by the chair instead, which is a win. JD runs away from Sanger and V, who explains that they want the crew to be 100% for their match. Mm -hmm. The referee made a mess there, yeah. didn't he? Yeah. Y yeah. Uh, was How it was match? it DQ for the other way? Hang on. They, they acted as if uh, Julius got attacked when in fact Julius got saved by yeah. Sanger. Yeah. Yeah, because JD hit Madonna with a chair. He was DQ'd. JD hit. JD hit somebody who wasn't Sanger, in the Sanger, match. Sanger hit Sanger with a chair. Sanger pushed yeah, Julius I mean. yeah, out the yeah. way. He hit, hit someone else who wasn't in the but match. because he shoved Julius, that was a DQ. Yeah. Bollocks, I say. <laughs> yeah, it's dodgy. Oh, right. I've only just understood him. that because you explained that then. Oh, he's helping Right, him, right, so right. I don't know. The whole NXT roster on the men's side, anyway, have got very flexible knees. They did the Axiom spot with Julius, and his knee went just as far. Mm. Mm. Staggering. Well, I saw that and went, oh, lads, we better protect our knees. Yes. Our shin and knees, <laughs> knees. <laughs> what? But Guns and Roses. <laughs> Sorry. I know it's Guns Sorry. and Roses. <laughs> Why is it being thrown in now? Because when you're high, you never want to just get shut down. I just nodded along. But I actually <laughs> yeah. <didn't>. Sorry. <laughs> Shawn Michaels, the special advisory panel of Road Dogg, oh, Xbox, Molly Holly, and Alunda Blaze, who would have all got that on Guns N' Roses reference. Appreciate it. <laughs> apart, from, apart from Molly, who's a wonderful woman, these can and X Pac, who's a wonderful guy. Road Dogg and Alunda Blaze can get in the bin, is what I'm saying. What's Alunda Blaze done? I don't know. Through the belt in the bin. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god she's still getting that no she's not a, she's, she's a Nikki Ash could never she's I was gonna say what I was trying to say was these segments can get in the bin but I've realised I like a lot of the panel so the segments were crap though yeah, oh, I'll go with that, yeah. I, I, I should have criticised the segment not the individual yeah so I'll summarise if people didn't see it so they're doing the Iron Survivor match but they're deciding who's gonna be in it they throw various names around and mention that come Tuesday hasn't connected with the crowd yeah, they just that's not true he only hit that one with the ladder <laughs> before each <laughs> Writing down five names in secret. They do the same for the women's mat. Women's mat. Oh, women's mat. Whatever. No one cares about this point. They took a lot of time. It, it did. It, it, we're going through everything and then was like, oh, we'll keep it a secret. And then just wasted like the previous five to ten minutes like on the segment. It was like I got big. What's the show before the kickoff show on pay-per-view nights? It got, had big mat camp energy. <laughs> like it was, you know, when they all put together like their dream Royal Rumble match or whatever. We're not oh, seeing the bump. That. The bump, it had big bump energy. Thank you. <laughs> big bump energy. Isaac, like, we've not seen us, Matt. What the hell are you talking about? Yeah. Uh, oh, is it the Matt bump. Camp, the name of the blue? He's on the bump, isn't he? With yeah, Taylor. yeah. It had big bump energy this segment. Oh, yeah, a lot of people on this panel are you are taking no, no, bumps. No. I didn't like how they uh -huh. put it together, though. Hmm? Like, it's not about wins and losses. It's about who had the best year in terms of quality. I know. Which they were around going, shut up about the win loss record. Yeah. AEW, yeah, right. like... stop paying attention to that. Mm -hmm. Shut up. I liked how Alundra was calling JD old school. Cum was beardless on the first NXT, which I've got no recollection of. No, I don't of. remember that. I can't remember a beardless Cum Tuesday, can you? No. That, I try to forget. That, <laughs> that men's wild card. Well, we'll get. We'll reveal that later on, sorry, actually. We will. In his match with Grayson Waller, delightful, trustworthy Hudson, no. almost boots Thea Hale in the face, which would have turned Ross's opinion <laughs> against him, <laughs> but reassures her that he can he can stop his momentum whenever he needs to. So why didn't he last week? Uh, it, Chase is angry because that did not happen last week. While Grayson picks up the win because the adrenaline was flowing in the tag team title <laughs> match. Couldn't yeah physics. It's not his fault. Mm. He could have stopped that if he wanted to. Einstein's put out a while ago that you know force acceleration mass to <laughs> to bitch. Do you know the first time I ever heard that? The Force Acceleration, whatever it is. Uh, whatever school? Was, was Goldberg on that VHS I've got. Oh. Go through. Goldberg gave you the Einstein call. Yeah. <laughs> he was on about his sphere. His, his sphere. His head. Yeah, yeah, this big his circle. Spear, his spear. SP. His big head. <laughs> <laughs> what was it like? What? Oh, my, it doesn't matter. Spear. I'm just still... Uh, Andre needs to get rid of this cancer <laughs> called Dull Hudson. No, no, no. He does. No. <laughs> He's going to take down Chase. He will all be here in tears. And he'll use a sphere. Yes, he Take will. him out like Bolin, a.k.a. J.D. Drake. A sphere, one of those Mystic Meg ones and see the future. Oh, just ask Apollo ask Crews. Apollo, yeah. yeah. I'm on that later. Backstage, big body happy. Oh, no. Yeah. No. Uh, they've lost it now. Takes another year off my life. <laughs> every, every time I see these, a year off my life, tells Mackenzie that's big body Tuesday. <laughs> that he, doesn't even, it's not even catchy. He tries to flog some merch, including the big body baseball bat, the big body pillow, and the big body aftershave, which Mackenzie says smells like rotten eggs. 
Oh, it's from WCW it's Nitro the, then. The BBC. <laughs> oh. oh. <laughs> That joke doesn't work over here, sorry. Uh, uh, Axiom interrupts and says he heard Javi wanted to wrestle him, and now he's clear to compete. They have a match later which Axiom predictably wins. I thought it was funny that the uh, big body spent the entire match working on his leg and foot and his leg in that region, and then he just super kicked him with a golden ratio. <laughs> like, what, I'm not selling for you. Yeah, I mean, and he did it like a figure four reversal spot where, you know, that'll take a bit of leg strength, yeah. I assume. We all know that Big Body Harvey is the Bret Hart of NXT <laughs> after that El Dandy esque promo. What, what WCW thing was this? Because I know he's, he's had two weeks now of ripping off WCW stuff. The closest I had come to was now he's moved on to TNA and he is Don West. Yeah, it was quite trying to flog things. Yeah. He's going to steal, steal from the best. Yeah. Andrew must be confused. You, do, you, do you watch <laughs> NXT? This must be mad. Sam. Don's writing, Andrew's writing his book. Like, uh... It's funny he sat here because I wrote in my notes Andrew wants the big body pillow. He loves them, he does. <laughs> No, oh, he loves one. Call back. Don't be disloyal. <laughs> you can't be disloyal. You'll break that pillow's heart. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Keanu James gets a heelish win over Fallon Henley with the 401k. Stop oh, trying yeah, to buy 401K. me pub, you bitch. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Got my pub. Uh, another slow-paced, methodical heel in Keanu, which mm. tells me that Shawn Michaels loves Triple H. He does. He does. It used All to the, be the other way around. The heels yes. wrestle like Triple H did back in the day. Cerebrally, Lee. Be great if Shawn Michaels passive aggressive was like, "Yeah, she sucks," so she wrestles like you. <laughs> <laughs> I miss um, Tiffany Stratton. Actually, was she the other example of a slow, methodical heel? On the roster? No, no, no. Oh, she's quite exciting. Actually, yeah, she's yeah. yeah. Flippy doo well, doo doo. doo. Uh, yeah, Dark. yeah. She's like a Rob Van Dam heel. Like you want to hate her, but she's just so good. You can't. Yeah. Uh, Odyssey Jones and Edo Snuffy give Malik Blade a pep talk oh, before man. his match with Come Tuesday. <laughs> they were giving him a nice pep <laughs> <Yeah. Man. laughs> Malik explains the meaning behind the destroyed sweater vest, which you obviously point out, Ross. You didn't need that explanation. Well, no, it was different last week because last yeah, week was. Was, the, they said the dad bought the jumper for Malik, yeah. Yeah. the well dressed deceased pastor father. Uh, but now, <laughs> Pastor <laughs> P A S T O R. So, Andrew, this is all that, true. Malik Blade had a father who was now dead. Stop laughing, Andrew. He was well dressed, he was a pastor. Mamma mia. He bought, last week, he bought his son, Malik Blade, uh, an equally drippy drumper. Easy to Trumper. Read. He didn't buy him it last week. They were like, Mal Malik, where's that from? And he said, my dad bought it for me. That was the story last week. But then this week, we learned that the jumper is actually the deceased father's. And the one that come Tuesday destroyed was of the, the well-dressed pastor father. It was his dad's sweater. It wasn't best. even his. It's, it's a stunt sweater. Back to sailing the car. <laughs> 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 oh, the main numbers that go along. <laughs> Come Tuesday ends up say, uh, winning, oh no, and tries to continue the attack after the bell, but Jones and Edris make the save. I do, actually can't remember, was Jones quicker this time making the save? Because last week... He... Well, the, old, the the polar ice claps fight <laughs> faster than him. He was, he was the last one down the ramp, I tried. I yeah. thought, blow the blind blood. <laughs> I'm team Pura uh, Ice Flaps. <laughs> what? Matthew, don't even don't even pause. Just say it as quickly as possible. Don't even pronounce it or anything. I'm team Idris in this little trio. He's <laughs> Why? Because he's the best one. Malik's had his heart broken. Yeah, but his father's he, jumper ripped yeah. by cum. Yeah, I want him to win this I hear when you get feud. The cum on your sweater. <laughs> I want him to win this feud because he's he's been trepped badly. But overall, I'm team Idris. He's, uh, he's a, he never wears a shirt, no. which is a what wrestlers. He's a proper. Carry on. I don't want to try to say. <laughs> I love it. There's always going to have Weezer involved in the feud, isn't it? If you want oh, to destroy this, uh, my yeah. dad's pasta sweater, <laughs> which he said he bought, but then we changed it. It was actually By his. the way. It was actually his. Lying on the floor. <laughs> Booker T buried the entire sweater <laughs> angle. He's on. It's all about the dollar bill, not some sweater. <laughs> it's like, yeah. that's his dead father's oh. jumper. I, Booker doesn't care. So it turns out Booker's been like this for a long time because in that old WCW I watched, right, yeah. it's when Midnight's joined the Harlem oh, Heat and yeah, Stevie yeah. Ray's like, I want to leave. I don't like her. And Booker goes, what? <laughs> like he does a proper, like what we'd expect him to say these days. He can't, he can't believe it, but in a dismissive Booker T way. <clears throat> you can't do... Thank, can't thank you, Jack. Oh, Malik's okay as well because he slipped off Cum's shoulders, didn't he? Oh, Landed sort of high awful. up on his neck, head, yes. area. Yeah. Right. Sure. Hopefully he's all right. Zoe Stark attacks Nikita Lyons during her entrance and injures her leg. Are we which... laughing at the spot that came later? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> which, means, which means the six of attack match is called off. Oh, no. Shortly afterwards, however, Lyons is cleared to compete and the match is moved to the main event. Oh, yeah, no. We'll save, we'll save, we'll save that. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're getting this right. Lyra? Lyra Valkyria. Lyra... Lyra Valkyria. Val Valkyria, yeah. yeah. Oh, Lyra Valkyria. Otherwise known as CBBC's Raven. 
Fuck <laughs> off. <laughs> is a nimble forest creature, and she wants us to prepare ourselves. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know what else to say. <laughs> she runs through the forest and those feathers. She looks. She looks a bit like the female <laughs> version of Raven of yeah. BBC yes. back in the day, where we had to prepare ourselves for the the big ghouls breaking out of the, yep. the fort thing, didn't we? Prepare right. yourself for the way of the warrior. Aye. The obstacle course they had to do mm. when they ran out of feathers. What a program! <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> didn't you fall in there, Ween? <laughs> <laughs> There was like three back. There was like three back. You have to pay darts in a man's pub. <laughs> there was like th- <laughs> there was like three backstage things in one here, so I've just put them all together. Yeah. Uh, meanwhile, pretty deadly. We're excited for Christmas, I which comes, which confirms their heels. We're getting a pretty Chris, a pretty deadly Christmas story next week. Yeah. Oh boy. Oh, good. I hope they're, it's gonna. Be, I hope they're dressed like Shawn Michaels in there. Triple H on that roll oh, back oh, in wow. 97 with a missile to on their oh, winkies. Oh, that's right. Come on! Well. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Also, Electro Lopez wants to kill Indy Hartwell. What? Did I say that? No, <laughs> uh, wants to take out the heart of the women's division. Oh. Uh, so I thought like Indiana Jones style. <laughs> when she said, I want to I wanna take out the heart of the women's division, I, my first guess wouldn't have been Indy Hartwell because she's been losing quite a lot. I thought it would be probably Perez maybe. Yeah. Yeah. It was a strange choice. She didn't justify it. Probably, she probably beat Indy, so that's it. You know. Yeah. Apollo Cruz is. <laughs> <laughs> See, Ross is already lit up for this. Apollo Cruz is back at the diner and he's writing in his journal. Dear Slim, he never wrote back. <laughs> but he's in- unexpectedly joined by Brom Breaker. They have a tense. Space here. <laughs> they Sugar. He was sitting. <laughs> They have a tense but respectful discussion about their upcoming title match. <laughs> Braun asks if Apollo's visions are ever wrong. And he says, nah. <laughs> Braun <laughs> says there's a first for everything. Ooh, it says he at the end. Ooh. Also, the top comment on the YouTube video of this oh, is ridiculous. Sorry, what yeah. is the top comment oh, for the guys, YouTube video? It's unbelievable what the top comment is. Uh, I've sent it to myself on Slack so I can find it. Yeah, so the top comment is, this is what WWE was missing when Vince McMahon... This is what was missing when Vince McMahon ran WWE. There was a good bit of back-and-forth story being told, and it kind of seemed like they weren't being overly scripted, I want to say. It was the most scripted segment. Pro Wrestling 101 is to put two guys working together and let them go out and just say what they feel, because it's personal then, and really, reality sells. That's the top comment. That, that by yeah. Shawn Michaels himself? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Did, what did Shawn, not Shawn Michaels at YouTube think of <laughs> Braun Goes Fishing last week? Oh, my God. I well, forgot about that. Cruz ripped Natural, that. perfect natural. Cruz went, have you not got some fishing to do? And Braun went, <laughs> <laughs> No, I did it last week. Was the sugar bit because he can tell the future? When he got his coffee and then he went, sugar, and Braun was like, oh, he knows. He knows that because he can see into the future. Yeah, that's Amazing. what I took from that. Amazing. There wasn't much. Wow, he knows I have sugar in my coffee. He's a clairvoyant. <laughs> yeah, he is a clairvoyant. I would never guess that that ripped man who never eats carbs has sugar. In. No, no way. Or anything fatty. He never does. Yeah, that's why right, the, the diner. Lots of like low fat vegan <laughs> options at these diners in America. Have you seen the bloke from The Apprentice? Which on one? Twitter. You are bright. Yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. He's been going viral again. Oh no. He's in the calf as per usual. Yeah. He was going to be my Hall of Fame pick until Christy McVie died, um, and he just has weird. He has like shepherd's pie, beans, and gravy all in one. Ooh, I know. It's lovely that. No, you no. can't mix beans and you gravy. can't mix beans sure and gravy. No, you can't. Oh no, no. no. Yeah, you, yeah, you get that and go. Uh, at the end of every no, one, he goes, no, no, no. "I'm about attacking at this." A oh, bosh, and that's the sign off for every video. <sighs> He's my spirit animal. <laughs> <laughs> With shepherd's pie, of course you can mix those three. No, no, not beans and gravy. Oh, we're in the calf. Beans and gravy. Yeah, of course you it's can. Like even when you mix beans and like Heinz tomato sauce. No. No, I wouldn't put ketchup in. No, no, no. no. Use the sausage as a breakwater. Yeah. Like a dam. I might dam, mix yeah. from partridge. I might want to mix oh. them, but I want them to be my <laughs> choice. <laughs> Thank you. There wasn't much to this segment at all. We learned they both oh. go to the gym really early and go to the gym really late. Yes. Wow. This and was like yeah. when Rock and Austin met before their match at WrestleMania 17. And let's take Deborah out of the equation. All mm. that's it was. It was two bloody well-matched wrestlers. Yeah. They even said, we are equally quick and strong, yes. which is not true. Apollo's quicker, bronze stronger, mm. in my opinion. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, no. I hope oh. we get the uh, the pre-Survivor Series 01 Rock Austin as well. We're singing. Wasted away <laughs> again in his crappy diner. <laughs> it's all pointless, though, because Apollo's winning in two weeks. 
No, he's had the he vision it. Yeah. of him being on his knees with his belt. Like, yeah, there'll be a false saw... finish. No, it's a false finish in my opinion. No, in every film I've ever seen, they go, Hades, you will be overthrow Zeus. <laughs> and he goes, fantastic. But what? <laughs> and everything happens. There hasn't been a but. Oh, that film's so good. Yeah. He gets more fiery, the yeah. more angry he gets. Yeah. And he's like, all right, get rid of that kid. And it'll be all right. And, and would you believe Hercules it? Hercules will rule. Because it's like, can, no! you tell me, can you tell me my fate? Yeah, sure. You told me my fate and I don't like it. I'm trying to get around it. Why did you ask us for what happens in the future then? Yeah, but he's... He's a silly bit I'm trying to work out how he'll think that he's won because the vision was of him doing the Michaels at WrestleMania 12 on his knees with the belt. So how is... What's going to happen? I can't work it out yet. The only thing I could think of is he, he twats Bron in the head with the belt and gets DQ and he's sat there going like, no! Oh, <laughs> that's a good show. <laughs> but maybe, other than that, it's a, oh, hey, Bron's backstage and the belt falls out of his back and he goes, Bron, look! And then he like immediately like, stubs his toes. Like, ah! <laughs> Why has Bron just accepted that Apollo... In fact, the whole of NXT have accepted that Apollo's visions are real. They're a real thing. Because we've seen it. Because it all come true. <laughs> On multiple but occasions. Bron's like, oh, Alice, I'm going to you know beat those, JD. You know he those did. visions you have? Would you, Bron just accepts and believes? Yeah, and you, JD, were going to be crap. JD, we, well done. Gallus, we've ah, we've it, accepted it because we watched the show. We've seen the vision. Oh, man, I need another bet. Thank you for making me look good, Jack. I appreciate that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I, yeah. Yeah, we've seen it. We've seen them come true. That's why he believes. Oh, okay. The next episode will be like, yeah, whatever. That was one time it wasn't right, but I predicted the winning lottery numbers, so I'm rich now. I don't need a title. Bye. <laughs> yeah. They should do that, really, shouldn't they? Yeah. During his match, I've done that bit. Uh, the Iron Survivor match participants are revealed after some hot debating with the Hall of Famers. Okay. They look like they'd rather be anywhere else, especially after Road Dog was here, after saying no one knows how to get themselves over nowadays <laughs> on Twitter. Men's. Carmelo Hayes, JD McDonough, Grayson Waller, Joe Gacy, and the winner of Come versus Action versus Andre Chase. I don't know who week. I want to win. Chase. The wild card. No, from Wagner. No, come. It comes at his time. I think Come's spinning his wheels now until he gets on the main roster. Because he's had his title shot. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. That, I'm surprised he's still there. Yeah, so am I. Uh, <laughs> women's Zoe Stark, Cora Jade, Roxanne Perez, Kiana James, and the winner of Wendy Chu versus Fallon Henley versus Indy Hartwell. How has Kiana James got an automatic spot there? It's shocking, though. She's taking down Chase U, that's why. They can see what's happening. The powers that be. I'll tell you what, there was a couple of interesting comments from Molly Holly where she was saying, Indy's missing something that they can't quite put their finger on. Scathing. This is in the discussion bit. And then she says, Alba Thai is the best worker on the roster. Nice to hear that, though, isn't it? Yeah. They are saying more and more of this type of thing, like, oh, losing direction or need to get themselves back in the game. Wade Barrett's been very good at that. And SmackDown, guys like Ricochet and stuff like that, so, yeah, he has lost a step, but now he's want to get it back. It's like, at least they're be being honest. Yeah, not we, going, we Why, how dare you say he's not good? He's like, no, he has, he's not been great. Makes wins and losses matter again. Exactly. Yeah, fair enough. Nikita Lyons' <laughs> Nikita Lyons injury costs her and the Cowie Girls their six-woman tag match in the main event against Toxic Attraction. Zoe Stark looks down from the platform, all smug. So it was all right match until uh, a leg starts hurting. It was and then... great ring psychology. It was Arn Anderson levels. Because her leg was sore. Yeah. She went to do her spinning kick and she couldn't do it. Now, why is everyone being so nasty about it on Twitter? Because it came a minute after <laughs> one of the greatest hot tags in the history of NXT 2.0, where she wiped out everybody and forgot she was injured, and mere seconds after she had a lady on her back. No. JC Jane, pick her up for a German, I think it was. I think she was just, like Eddie Kingston, a great student of the All Japan <laughs> Kings Road style, where wrestlers can power through certain injuries for a bit, but it's finite. And yeah. then it, in the middle of her spin... That's when it yeah. came back and she went, oh, no. She's, she watched Action early and went, I'll show you how to sell. <laughs> it did look like what I think Tom said it looked like on Twitter, which is when you just mash buttons on, and she just did her spin, but too far away. Yeah. You know what? It did make sense. It was all right. It was just comical out of context. It's yeah. like, we. You can see what she was trying to do, but it didn't quite come off. She shouldn't have done the spin. She should have just turned and then gone, ah. Oh, That's that why I did my ankle in one time. <laughs> <laughs> Wasn't anything else. It was a spin I put on it. In digital, on the dance floor. I <laughs> wish. <laughs> That was doing uh, doing tracks. Digital, as if we've ever been in digital in the past decade. It's uh, a very young. It has habit. been what? a long time yeah. since I've been in, but like last yeah. time I would have been in digital about twenty fifteen. Yeah. What, what day was it? Oh, was we it Digi Mondays or? Yeah, Monday. Yeah. yeah. Did you feel old? Oh yeah. Even in twenty fifteen, yeah. yeah. I, we I enjoyed the rock music though. Oh, hey. middle middle floor. <laughs> we're, we're doing the exact same <laughs> tunes last time you were there. So Those don't worry. stairs are dangerous as well in Digi. We went to watch that wrestling show there actually, but that, that oh, wasn't the title. Yeah. Where there was a go kart right. And you could see... No, um, 
like a like a bumper, bumper car. Bumper sorry, car, yeah, yeah, bumper car. And you could see when the wrestlers came in that they were all like, "Who gets to use them?" Yeah. Like they were really all wanting to use that in the match. And there was a good bumper car spot. Mm. It was like Sammy Guevara and the golf cart. I love it. Tyler always determined, hey, we're going to get Newcastle. This will be it. And they always find a way to book themselves the same day as the North Wrestling Show. <laughs> Bless them. Speaking of good spots, though, the little back heel thing from Caden mm. and the trip up by Katana into another thing by Caden on Gigi Dolan. It's fantastic. Mm. Yeah. I don't know what to say there. Just a really inventive pair of lasses. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> The rest You're of the match wrong, was pretty standard stuff, I thought. Yeah. yeah. Considering who was involved. Yeah. Just all about building up that heat for Stark and Leon. I was Just... relieved when I got to the end of it, because this week's NXT felt complex. It was all over the show a bit, I thought. Yeah. Three pages. It was good, though. Yeah. Three pages. I do like how Zoe Stark's dressed like Shawn Michaels' barbershop era, though. Mm. The leather jacket and the red. The flashes of red. I didn't notice. Yeah. So yeah. wait, is that three different wrestlers dressing up as Shawn Michaels the pace of a week and a half? Mm. Three? The Gun Club, uh, oh. Jungle Boy. Ah. Mm-hmm. Ooh. They think they're cute. <laughs> they know they're sexy. AW Dynamite, William Regal, more like Cillium Regal. Oof. <laughs> John Moxie opens the show and says that not Andrew liked really it. changed. Of course he did. Yeah. Uh, really changed despite losing the title. There's still nobody on his level. A returning hangman page interrupts, hey, and gets in Moxie's face. It's nice to see him get to answer a call when someone does it. Eh? <laughs> hey. hey, take that one. Moxie reminds <laughs> hangman what happened last time they fought. And he went, yeah, I remember. Wait, do you remember? And pointed his head. I thought so that he was brilliant to, me. I thought it was good. Uh, as of a page to attack, they brawl until officials pull them apart. And it's so good because Moxie's really good at that. Yeah, yeah, I'm all right, I'm all right. <laughs> Last charge, trying to get past security. And this time went great because security did such a good job of stopping him that he bounced him off the ramp. He ran, <laughs> wrapped it off the stage, didn't he? <laughs> I'll get you. What? The other, These were really good security. The other one is when, that I've remembered, it reminded me of when uh, Jade Cargill was in a brawl and Aubrey wraps her up from behind. Jade can't move and you can see her going, I'm meant to be really hot. Get off. Get off. Like she's livid at Aubrey. I don't remember that. Aubrey's got her in like an octopus like AJ <laughs> Lee and Jade's like, get the... Like Mark Curtis taking out that fan during Seacoast. <laughs> <Yeah. Malenko. laughs> it was on a YouTube video that I, I, I saw it and then the video's been taken down since because it was just a compilation of Aubrey mistakes and I felt bad watching it. Oh, of course. Yeah. What are you doing watching them? I know. It's been taken down though. Russ so. is making mistakes and you have videos taken down. <laughs> Honestly, Jack, I'm disappointed in you. Is that Moxie being on holder yet? I was thinking that going, I, I thought he was not he was gonna bugger off for a bit, bless him, and get to know. Do you think Renee's like, oh, when are we going on this holiday? I when be. are we going to Benidorm? Yeah, I think all I've seen of them is just a repost of when like Moxie was going. It used to be great. I used to do drugs and go to the library. <laughs> and then said, What? Goes, yeah, I forgot he said this, but it's just an amazing fact. He said, Yeah, I do really cheap speed, and then I go to the library, just have a really good time reading books. And she's there next one go, What? What? <laughs> Who have I met? Wasn't that on the first episode of our podcast? Maybe. Oh, really yeah, that was early. Oh, yeah. what, a, what, what a way to start your podcast. I like the bit where she laughs at him for not being able to say wolves. That's cute. What does he say? Woofs. <laughs> what? No. She goes, have you seen he it? He woofs. No. She goes, uh, What do you call those things that are like a dog but bigger and they roam around in the wild? And he goes, don't make me say it. Like, he knows that he's just like, what are they called? He goes, woofs. And she goes, what? He goes, woofs. <laughs> oh, my God. He's yeah. adorable. Yeah, no. <laughs> have, you seen that, have you seen that video of that dog that does says woof? No. It's like, don't woof. It, I forgot what type of dog it is, but it's literally, it goes, woof. It says the, a dog saying the actual word woof. I was watching a video of a cat that sounded like Barry White this week. <laughs> its voice is deeper than Barry White's. It's amazing. It's like, meow. <laughs> <laughs> Search it out on the internet there. It's fantastic. Uh, this black cat. Oh. Later we see Hangman being escorted out the building only for Moxie to run up and continue <laughs> the brawl. He didn't run up. He strolled up. <laughs> yeah. In fact, I thought he was stood still and Hangman walked into him. Fantastic bit of uh, placement oh, there. Oh, God. Danielson beats Dax Harwood via submission. In a bloody lovely match. Mm. I don't know who, who, who could predict that. The footwork. Yep. I mean, oh. Ross knows, but the footwork was on point. Let me tell you, Brian Danielson's footwork was shades of 04 Christian Cage. Ooh. Ooh. Well, I'll work even, everybody. He wasn't even Cagey then, was he? 04. Oh, very good point. Mm. Dax rejects a handshake after the bell, but he's just kidding and they hug it out because ROH forever. D- Danielson really likes Harwood. That's what I learned here because everything Danielson tried to answer what Harwood was doing, Harwood then had an answer for that. He was reversing reversals. Lewis the Dragon <laughs> Beardsley, former Northeastern local wrestler, told me that Brian Danielson came on a tour once of 
the northeast of the England, and he got booked in a northeast promotion. I can't remember which one, whichever one Lewis worked for, right. and uh, had his main event match against some lad from their promotion, who he just was he just was meant to beat him, but Danison liked him, so midway through the match he just changed the finish and let him win, and that referee must have cacked himself when he counted three. <laughs> yeah. like, oh no! <laughs> but apparently he just liked him I think- and let him win. That bloke's got a win over. I think Dan, did Dennison do that with Zack Sabre Jr.? Well, it wasn't him. It was someone I'd not heard of before. Uh, Zack Sabre Jr. and someone did that in the wrestling promotion that was called XXX himself <laughs> years ago. Really good. I think Google he was. Into, yeah, and they got one, two. And he, he did, uh, in fairness, neither of them actually kicked out. Three. And like, oh, and he go, this next match is two, this match is actually two or three falls. <laughs> it's like, oof. <laughs> uh, Ricky Starks is interviewed backstage and says that not only is he number one contender for MGF's title, but he's also entered himself into the dynamite. Diamond Ring Battle Royal next week. He's good. What? Well, why would you do that then? He Just wants to, to, take, yourself, he wants to take everything from MJF. Makes no sense though. He wants yeah, to well, win the belt and he wants to take the ring as well. Uh huh. You just save yourself for the title match, yeah. won't you? <laughs> is that is that, <laughs> the battle, that. is that the Battle Royal they were referring to? Yeah. Yeah. They wants to do both. Yeah. But the Diamond Diamond Ring means nothing. Ricky Starks wants to take it all. <laughs> <laughs> it's just oh, okay. a thing, isn't it? Just a no! <laughs> it's a thing for one week and then it's gone for the rest of the yeah. year until the healer wants to use it. It's the greatest it? rumble trophy. Well, <laughs> Ricky Starks is silly then. I don't he know. is a silly Billy. Yeah. Yeah. Especially okay. when he's already knackered like mm. he is. Yeah. Lots of tape He's more on tape him. than man. <laughs> <laughs> the Jericho Appreciation Society and the Blackpool Combat Club have agreed to no physicality no backstage. Touching. Hager offers Claudio a matching hat, ooh, which is now really over, while Claudio <laughs> yeah. rejects before storming off. Uh-huh. Willie Yuta agrees to a tag match himself and Claudio versus Hager and Daniel Garcia, but only on the condition that Garcia put the Ring of Honor pure title on the line at final battle. Yeah, that's happening. Final battle. Yeah, I keep... Yeah. I always get taken by surprise when there's a Ring of Honor pay-per-view. I'm like, oh, bloody hell. That's because all of your attentions have been put towards NXT deadline. Yeah, 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 yeah. The real final battle. It's on the same day, isn't it? Is it? I think so. I'll be watching NXT. (laughs) Sorry, Ring of Honor. I think it's on the same day. Wow, that's counter-programming. It is. Are FTR going to be on? Deadline. Oh, no, 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 deadline. Oh, but maybe. On final battle. They win the NXT tag titles as well. Dressed what? in the pitched ah. gimmick by Vince McMahon with the... They'll do anything yeah. they get. They'll do, yeah, they'll do it just to win <laughs> the titles. Is, when is deadline? Is it soon? I think it's the 9th, is it? Okay. It's December, maybe. So is, is final battle got a card then? Because There's two matches, I guess. Yeah, NXT's got a bit of a card going on, but I'm going to look at the card. Yeah, the, the Iron Survivor match. Confirm and, uh, the date as well. The, it's on the yes. 10th, 10th. As Ring of Honor. Oh, what a double header. So, matches, there's only two, yeah. Jericho yep. versus Claudio and Daniel Garcia versus Wheeler. Get a move on, Tony. Ooh. Well, you know, there's only a week before a pay-per-view. <laughs> <laughs> good God. It's a good job we don't watch Ring of Honor. Deadline's on the same day, yeah. yes. But that has three matches set. The two iron ones and Braun Breaker versus Apollo Creed. Uh-huh. I liked uh, Willie Uta saying, why are you wearing uh, suspenders for me? Both wearing belts. <laughs> Oof. I like the bit where like you could be a yodler <laughs> mm. if he joins the JS oh, uh, Claudio I'm dumb up silly stuff oh, oh. That, no, it's like hey hey you said the thing about the old gimmick I'm like alright Russo oh. <laughs> now that's come uh, except when that was it Small Joe successfully defends the TNT title against new signing AR Fox before declaring himself the one true king of TV <laughs> yeah what I'm the one true king of television <laughs> well because Rusev declared himself the TV champion when he took the monitor <laughs> so. he's got both TV titles I mean technically ah uh, right the yes. TNT title and the Ring of Honor TV championship right I hadn't realised that <laughs> until you pointed that out Ross I Thank thought you. he was just TNT feeling... is the TV station I thought he was on. just feeling a bit whimsical I'm the king of television <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to beat up uh, who do you beat up on TV Jimmy Fallon. I was just say David Lemon, yeah, yeah. Yes, Lemon's have been around. Uh, AR Fox got announced as being signed and everything else like that. I thought he got nice. signed last, because we spoke He did, him. but then they did the, the AR, the, I think they forgot, a, AR Fox is elite. They only had the graphic up this week. Because it was definitely con- signed last week. Controversy in the news chat last night, wasn't there? Did you see it? it was I saw it, but I, I felt <laughs> it was one of those things, you know, when you read it, and it, I read it a few times, and it wasn't going in what either of you were saying, so I just left it. I thought, I can't yeah. understand no, this. They've done this for a few of the people, but they announced happened? they've been signed, they've shown him being signed, and right. then, they, 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 then they do the elite graphic well, you like were a saying, week you later. Were, that's what you were saying. Yeah, what was the, Aiden definitely saying? Definitely said on commentary last week, Aiden was just saying that it was offered to him last week, that he signed this week, which is what the narrative they were saying mm. this week. Uh, they definitely said it on because com- we spoke on the news section last week that he had signed. I yeah. see. Because it was on the commentary. I've butted heads yeah. with Aiden before over the news <laughs> once. One time. Hey, it's his burn butter. It was it was because um I was saying in the news chat Cameron Grimes is gonna be on Raw this week. 
or someone. It was someone was recruiting for a tag match on NXT. NXT was going up against like the baseball or something, mm-hmm. and uh, or against <coughs> Dynamite, which would be moving for the baseball. And Aiden replied and went like, "No, nah, that's not true. He's not going to be." And I was like, "Yes, he is." And then that roar when Cameron Grimes was there, I was like, <laughs> ah. <laughs> And then Aiden went. He, I went, look, Aiden, and he went, "Not what I heard, but it wasn't. He, 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 like, it wasn't me who said it." I was like, "Oh, damn it!" There's heat backstage at Cole. Neither is. There's always heat backstage. Muffins everywhere. <laughs> so, Tom, Tom was like, because Tom started yeah. off the discussion saying, oh, they know they said it last week. And I was like, yeah, Tom, they did. And then Aiden was like, no, they didn't. And then Tom was like, oh, no, they didn't. <laughs> oh. oh. So then I was like, uh, no, no, they did. I, I feel like yeah. we've told He's two. He's a Heyman in the Lesnar I was going to say, I feel like we've told two similar stories there. Aiden doesn't always just go, that's not true. <laughs> he is the Tully Blanchard. Well, so you've <laughs> Good match from AR Fox, though. Enjoy what he did. <laughs> Good man, Aiden, though. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Aiden is a nice man. He is. Of course he is. But he loves corned beef. Mm-hmm. If we do a Greg's <laughs> thing, you always go for a corned beef pasty. I, I used to defend them, but whenever I get them, and I stopped eating them now, uh, they'd be gritty. That's and not in a sense like, oh, I love the grit. In a sense like, hang on, what's in this? Why, it strengthens your teeth, you'll probably say. Mm. I don't know. Aiden's a gritty man. It's a coin. <laughs> God. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the yeah, AR Fox got signed. It was like but, um, I'm very happy for the dude because he's been amazing You're a big for fan. years. Absolutely, mm-hmm. mate. But uh it was fun. it was almost funny, like in true AW fashion. This new guy's come in, yay! It was nearly a squash with a few flips from AR Fox. Yeah. It was like, okay, thanks. I like your debut. Were, there was a little bit of a sequence with the spots they were doing because he did the thing over the top rope and Joe walked away, but he landed the first one yeah. mm-hmm. and he didn't land the second one. That was his downfall. A little bit of a story. Wardlow's promo promo was painful. After Smojo coined himself the king of television, he was like, huh, that's, that's not as good as the nickname he came up the first time. Wardjo. <laughs> and the crowd was silent. <laughs> the, yeah, I didn't think Wardlow oh, was that man. bad, but the size <laughs> of the crowd was like, oh. Wardlow was the most over man in the company for a while. Yeah. Yeah. But, and he had that beautiful looking coat on as well. I'm like, oh, it was a nice coat. He's yeah. got money. Mm. Uh, and he went, yeah, but he went, all right, you may be the, uh, the king of TV, but you're still living in Wardlow's world. And again, <laughs> it's very little noise. You're like, oh, come on. Oh, I'm looking forward to them, them wrestling, though. Like, sorry, the sirens there. He wasn't on this week ahead of his no, TV. No, Jeff wasn't His uh, tag team title shot. <laughs> hey, if they win, then. <laughs> hey. I would love it. Hey. <laughs> hey. William Regal introduces the new <gasps> AEW world <gasps> champion, MJF. <laughs> MJF explains... <laughs> <laughs> that should be... <laughs> <laughs> MJF. Explains that after he was attacked by the firm, Regal sent him an email telling him he'd become weak. Yeah. John Laurinaitis sends texts, William Regal sends emails. That's the <laughs> trope of this story. But he'd help him realize his full potential. Regal taught MJF to grab the brass ring rather than the dynamite ring and give Moxie an emotional scar he'll always remember. MJF unveils a new belt design, the Big Burberry Belt. He runs down Eddie Kingston, Ricky Starks, then Brian Danielson, and apologizes to Regal because he knows he's his lad. And says he'll have a title reign that'll make Hulk, Hulk Hogan's look short and Bruno Sammartino's turn in the grave. Yay! Hey! Hello, you put his full name. You put his full name there. Huh? I've, been, I've been practicing. Well, I didn't want people to think I meant like Gumerej or Fernandez or any of the other Brunos. Mars, Samaritano. Yeah. <laughs> Who? He also again mentions the bidding war of 2024, referencing Nick Khan and Triple H. Finally, MGF prepares to thank Regal but instead hits him from behind. <sighs> he leaves as Danielson runs out to check on his mentor. Did he hit with the brass knuckles from behind? Yeah, because yeah. yeah, I thought Regal was like out. The back of the neck, wasn't it? Mm. It was the back of the neck, and he was deed. And yeah. you know he was deed because people online immediately started photoshopping him in uh, Peter Griffin <laughs> situations. <laughs> when he was lying down, I was like, God, he's a just, you forget how big Regal is. He's mm. a big blow. I, I tried to do it in the corner because anywhere else would be outside. <laughs> You've out the room. Yeah. <laughs> He'd look like Rampage Jackson in Pride when he. Oh, yeah. We watched that video. I was watching that video. <laughs> that threw me off. I told you, I, I, told you yeah, I was watching okay. that. I was watching that video about the history of Pride. Oh, um, oh that's right. Yes, it's called Before a Fall because Pride uh, came before. Brilliant. And uh, Regal stretched it out. And hey, so, no, Regal, it was Regal stretched Regal stretch. it out. Regal stretch. Stretch it out. I meant to do that. <laughs> Regal was taken out by the medics <laughs> and uh, looked at. And as they, I beg your pardon, the Zodiac killer. <laughs> Uh, who we can, the way he types is the Unabomber of anything else, <laughs> uh, said, hey, he's, this might be it. He's going. And it's like, people have been 
umming and erring about this. But like I said, I'm at the point now with so much crazy news going on from the journeys that I'm waiting to see what actually happens in real life. And I say that, and as soon as I think that this happens, I'm like, mm, maybe he is. Because he is still in the contract, Regal, but... It's until April at least, isn't it? That yeah. was the, the year deal. Then oh. Meltzer said it was three. Then he retracted that and said, no, no, it's just one. And now that, that's where oh, we sorry, find Oh, sorry, just messaging me one. <laughs> um, after this, yeah, I wouldn't be too surprised. But mm. I would have been before this segment. Because there's not Moxley what else went, is he going to do. When Moxley went, run home, Regal, and don't stop and never come back. Um, then I thought, no, nah, he'll be back. But now I'm like, this could be it. Did he disappear like Shaquille O'Neal when he got loaded into the ambulance? Or is it... Depends if it was the same one. Yeah. The magical ambulance. <laughs> oh, hang on. Regal's forgotten his hat. Open the door. Where's he gone? Because <laughs> I was thinking... T- t- like two called Scorpio. We put with, Take that bitch back to Stamford. Because I was thinking initially was like the, the, the segment was a bit painful to watch. Because cool. MGF was going around in circles like he always does about the bit of more 2024. Yeah. And money and contracts and I'm good, this, that and the other. And then he twatted Regal in the head, and I was like, no, nah, they're not giving us the partnership of Regal and MJF. That was no. so good on paper. But then I, when he said the final line of the promo, I was like, I'm sold on this now. Because he brought it back to the email that Regal sent him all those years ago. And he signed it off with your AEW World Champion, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. Mm-hmm. And I was like, they've done very well here. This all makes it makes him look even more evil, the fact he's taken down Regal, who is the devil himself. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plus, they, he said, ah, oh, you've been cheering me for a bit, have you? Well, he'll change that. Yeah. And he's just like, and it's weird though, because he's like, ah, you dumb Marks, Marky Mark, Mark Lamar from Never Mind the Buzzcocks. Ha, ha, ha. <laughs> it's like, we mean you be books of face and saying face. Oh, okay. Whatever. There was lots of uh, little. You dumb idiot. I say lots of little Triple H references. There was two. <laughs> the one he's like, my reign of terror, this, that, and the other. He's like, oh, I'll do all this, and you'll still tune in. Uh, all, my always name missing Mark, was the Mark, yeah. yeah. Um, so there, it was a, to get to the final point, it was like going through a bog. Mm. But once you made it through the bog, mm. it was a wonderful little haven of wrestling. Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm saying now. No, I'm not good. It, Just yeah. good that love yeah. is dead because Excalibur was having a go at Regal when he was making his way down the ring, called him a snake and a coward. Oh, <laughs> And Excalibur can wrestle as well, so that would be a match that I'd like. Because if Regal is a snake, it's like, oh, you scrummy, scrummy apple. <laughs> anyway. Just to add to the bog bit it's as well, adorable. when he brought up the firm, MJF, when he brought up the firm, he just went... Yeah, he Which did. Which I thought was a bit like, oh. like I'm not going to go after them. <laughs> Effort. They're dead. The firm's oh, dead. What absolute, a weird way to end that feud. <laughs> yeah, well, I was heel versus heel now. Who cares? They're not even worth MJF going after. Yeah. Wow. End them now. Okay. It's weird in the sense that, like Moxie Punk, where they went, they fast-forwarded a feud. Like, hey, so Punk, you were the interim champ. You've come back. Uh, Mox is beating you in like five minutes. Okay, cool. Well, make sure you train up and wrestle for the next... Oh, in two weeks' time, you're going to come back and recover. Right, yeah. that's a bit weird. This feels like something that's been incredibly rushed as well. Mm. I don't know why they've done it this quickly. I don't know why. We're having any more Regal MJF. It couldn't last a few more weeks, but... So it just seems like we've gone through a lot very quickly, which I think is why it's like, aha, let me explain everything and fill in I'm all really, the blanks. Yeah, and, it was, wasn't it? It was a yeah. lot of exposition. And Was that one Die Hard film? Not like the good three. The, isn't that one where... Four. Uh, no. So one. not one, not two, not with a vengeance. No, no, yeah, the three good ones, and after that it's a Four. Blur. Isn't it one of them where Kevin Smith was brought in to play a character where he literally explains all the plot, <laughs> the plot mistakes in the oh! film? Oh, Kevin Smith told that story. Yeah, yeah I, don't plays, know, like, I haven't seen the Die Hard He plays film. like Maybe the Warlock or something. Like, we're going to go find the Warlock. And he's just a nerd in a big basement. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he's like... <laughs> Kevin Smith talks about yeah, yeah. sitting down with Bruce Willis and rewriting the whole... Yeah, condensing their... To make it sense. It's yeah. like, this is what this felt like. He was recently on that Tom Segura thing that Ross watches, Kevin Smith. Oh, what did tells. he say? Tom Segura tells him about a short... The three short films he made, and he tells him the budget, and Kevin Smith goes, what? Because he made Clerks for like 25 yes, grand or nothing. something. Nothing, yeah. yeah. Well, uh, how much was the short? Was there was a lot of Tom money. Segura spent like one point three million dollars on three short films. On three short films. Kevin Smith goes, I could make four yeah. films for that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Talks that, didn't he? Kevin Smith does. Yeah, he's does. good at that. <laughs> His Prince one's amazing. Yeah, when he meets Prince. Mm. I've not seen that. Oh, it's a journey. I've seen. His, I think it's like his stairway to heaven is a uh, the story about the Wild Wild West. No, no. Oh, I've seen the link to that one. He, he talks about like the, the giant spider and trying to do the Superman film that never happened. Anyway, now nah, he's always reminded me a bit of Mick Foley, Kevin Smith. I can see that. He's got a lovely voice. Ironic for a man mm. called Silent Bob. <laughs> yeah, that in the back of the chamber oh, yeah. waiting. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, it's interesting because I am happy that MJF's the champ. Um, but sometimes I think 
these promos are AEW's big thing is that they aim towards one particular type of fan. And this is what the old E wrestlers always tweet and podcast about, you know, the 56K modem every bloody week <laughs> about trying to make it less for people. There was a lot of stuff here where if you weren't, oh, checking every single bloody Sean Ross Sapp or Ryan Satan update, you'd be like, why bid him war? Mm. Why he'll do it? Okay, can we have this feed, like just normal wrestling fans now? Like the, the, the more he's like that, more, more rather than having to watch a YouTube video made by, you know, someone like Jack the Jobber and seeing what happened in CM Punk of 2005. <laughs> it'd be nice if we just got a promo where he's like, I'm better than you. It, shut up. Mm. I thought that the final line reference in the email, which is where the story begins, really. That's what saved it for me. I really like the end. Yeah, the, well, the, I, oh, I only hire the best or whatever. I Nobody, like, he's speaking to, Re like, a knocked out Regal and uh -huh. speaking, like, the email Regal yeah, sent yeah, him back yeah, in the yeah, day. Yeah, 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 Like, he didn't see, yeah. you know, whatever it was. Mm. Your AEW World's Champion, Maxwell Jacob Friedman. <laughs> <laughs> Ricky Sarks is set to take on Ari Davari. But they're interrupted by Stokely Hathaway, Ethan Page, and Matt Hardy. I completely forgot that Matt Hardy was I, owned by them. Thank, thank you. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> what was that? he lost? Where's the fun part? I noticed they'd be doing bits backstage, but I thought he was hanging out and being silly buggers. And it's just like, no, you, are you part of the firm now? We're in the private party. Where part are they? of the deal, yeah. Oh, Ethan Page after Matt. Oh, yeah, but where, are the, where are the private party? Because they got a party. Yeah, boy, he got the whole hardy party, didn't he? Mm. That's right. He's not going a bit mad, Matt. The last time we saw him was the rap, wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. Oh, at yeah. least he might have been what? on Dark or Dark Elevation, but yeah. I don't know about that. Stokely sends Matt to the back. <laughs> 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 and Paige reminds Matt that they own him. Mm. Uh, Paige gets a promo on Starks. It was suddenly attacked by Davari, but he beats him in a very short match. Yes. Yep, it, that this, is what happened. Yep. Weird. Don't know what you say there. Backstage, Tony Schiavone talks to Britt Baker, sorry, Dr. Britt mm -hmm. Baker and Jimmy Hader. Hader is annoyed that she isn't scheduled for a sit-down interview, like Soraya always is. Shivani agrees that Hader should get one next week. Yeah. That's not him saying she's going to get one. He's saying, yeah, you should. Yeah. She's the women's champion. It was all about yeah. Britt Baker again, though, wasn't it? She mm. signed off the segment. She started the segment. <sighs> Friction. It's all going to blow up in Jimmy Hader's face, I think. Yeah. It's like that great storyline going on at the minute. Duke Hudson and Chase Universe. <laughs> We're just waiting for friends to turn on each other. It's great. <laughs> Willow Nightingale beats Anna Jay. Go on. Times. And after the match, Ruby, 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 Ruby Soho makes a return and attacks Tay Mello. She hits Destination Unknown on the ramp. At first I was like, wow, she's really going for Tay over Anna Jay. Then I remember it was Tay who broke her nose right. and everything. And yeah. Oh, God, that car crash of a match. Yeah. Yeah. Right in the schnoz. Mm. Uh, Jade Cargill cuts an in ring. Oh, moving on. Oh, yeah, sorry. Yeah, yeah. Oh, so you have any thoughts? Uh, no, I was just going to point out the uh, during the commercial break, they're breaking down Anna's new personality, the other commentators. And Taz is like, um, whoa, 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 Tony, are you a, a, a psychiatrist now or something? And Tony says something along the lines of, uh, yes, I was earlier today. And they all start speaking about combustible personalities. And Tony's like, this has been a thing all my years in wrestling. So who's kicking off now, I'm asking. Oh, Tony's like been a psychiatrist with someone earlier today. A sly little comment. Yeah. Oh. This is during the commercial break. Not on the proper broadcast. People have been asking me, so Matthew, what is the heat between Taz and Tony? And I think it's just Tony, Tony and Taz being there. I thought, I thought they were friends. I thought they were just they having are, a little bit of fun. They've been bitching, like uh, two old gays. Who's, who's, who's <laughs> who's who've known each other for a long time. This is how they communicate and like who's each other. Who's side's Excalibur? They're on? being vicious, Taz's, if you will. Is Excalibur on Taz's side? <laughs> Absolutely. He's the damsel in the middle, I think, yeah. Excalibur. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Boys, boys, you can both take me. <laughs> Jay Cargill cuts an in-ring promo, taking credit for the success of the entire company. Yeah. Bloody hell. All right. It's a stretch. Uh, she's dressed in money. She because is she in money. is money. Mm -hmm. oh. That's all I've got to say there. Let's just call Thank a spade you, a spade. Thank you. Ross. Goodness me. <laughs> I'd like to know Mr. <laughs> O.C.'s thoughts from O.C. <laughs> <laughs> She's in with my bow wow wow yippee yo yippee on the tron. Bow wow. It's here. It's hard to hear what he's saying because the audio said. is bad. He's got he's... Also, he sounds bored. No, oh, yeah, no, I thought he had a good promo game. You know who this yeah. signifies yeah. on the way? Because yeah. oh. he's like, I've got a little friend. I'm coming in with a little friend. <laughs> <laughs> Where is he from? <laughs> Sasha Banks is on her way, isn't she? No. He's speaking about. Oh, stop it. He, hey, humor me for a second, Matthew. <laughs> he's speaking about money. He's speaking about money, and he's speaking about more money. And who's been trademarking things relating to yes. money? Yes. Mercedes Vernado. Yes. Which wrestler <laughs> like to be paid for their work? That's right. Jade was dressed in money as well. Hey, you'll oh. be laughing when... Well, is it going to be Mercedes Vernado, which is going to be called? Something like that, yeah. yeah. yeah I know. When she rocks up, you'll be oh, laughing. And they make her 
the secondary women's champion <laughs> in the company. <laughs> I had a dream. Uh. <laughs> no, I actually thought Bow Wow, I couldn't hear what he was saying. No, I couldn't hear him. But either. I enjoyed the way he was saying it. Like, he, I thought he was quite natural. He's quite charismatic, Bow Wow. Yeah. He's an actor as well as a rapper. Basketball yeah. is his favourite sport. I tell you oh, what, that's well, good for him. I'm worried that what's, Jay... what's, his, what's his blood type? <laughs> what? He also was in Tokyo Drift. I'm going to say that every week that he oh. appeared. Oh, I love Tokyo wow. Drift. Wow. It's the worst and best Fast and Furious film. Is it? Yeah. Have you not seen it? No. Oh, man, it's, is that why the song, like, I wonder if you know how yeah. they live in Tokyo? But I'm not going to do the voice because it's. No, no, me no. neither. That's why I did that, like, that very deliberately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's it's when they take away all the main cast. That's right. It's yeah, like Homeland yeah. 3. And then, oh, oh, not Homeland Bloody 3. Oh, shut up. Oh, that's a, Homeland 3 is a good example. The way you, t- you two guys big this up. Yeah, it's such a good really film. Good. I'm like, uh, they're joking, There's right? There's high tech stuff going on for the 90s. There's a great heel to Mrs. Mrs. Hess is much like Jey Uso. Yeah. Yeah, she And is. Alex is much like Sami Zayn. Yeah. <laughs> um, Mrs. Hess. How Mrs. Hess. Mrs. Hess. Mrs. Hess. The Evil old woman bitch. Yeah. Next door. <laughs> First name Rudolph. Go on. Uh, Red Velvet and Layla Gray weren't asked, were they, when Jade was threatening them with their future in the bodies, which I thought was interesting. Mm, yeah. Crumbling around she did. her. I got rid of Kira Hogan. That was crap last week. When Kira Hogan was like, all right, you're fired, and they immediately cut to the next segment. There was no pause, no nothing. Because yeah. they were hanging around each other this weekend. They were had, they had one of those spinny cameras. Oh. You know, the ones that you stand in the middle and it goes around oh, you yeah. and you, you pose in slow motion. They were doing That's that. how they did The Matrix, the first yeah. one. Now mm. just people do it online. That's <laughs> great, though. But, uh, yeah. I also like that someone had a sign that said, I want to be on Botchumania in the crowd. Oh. oh. And I'm half tempted to not put it in because <laughs> that's where my brain goes. And that's there was also a sign that said, Sign Kid Bandit. I saw that. Mm. Huge sign in front of us. I couldn't yeah. ignore it. I'm like, bloody hell. And the main event, the Elite beat Death Triangle to make this series 2 1 in favor of Pac and the Lads. It's the worst match all year, I think. Well, the worst match all the worst <laughs> match. Or maybe of all time, time yeah. but I don't want to be hyperbolic. The worst right match now. between these. Or the, the worst wor- match of all this time. This was the worst one between these. Th- there's people on planets like Mars that don't even know wrestling, <laughs> and they know that this is the worst match this, of all time. This was the I worst. I wanted a clean sweep, Jack. <laughs> 4-0. All oh, right, you're annoyed at the, the result. Yes. Right, I thought you Does were saying... It in so many words, yes. The, I thought this was the worst match of the three so far. Oh, I'm glad you're in agreement. Two Thank being, you. We're in the segment. Two hey. being the best one. One being... You've got to do it in a certain order, like the Deku shrubs. Two being the oh, worst... Oh, oh, uh, thank wow. you. Yeah, All right, okay, you got this. Yeah. That's for you as well, Zelda, yeah. Yeah, you scrub. Do you want, Ross, I don't know if you... No, I don't know what Deku shrub is. Um, and two was the worst. Two was the best. One, then three. And this was three. The finish came out of nowhere for me. I was like, the match has ended. Uh, I like that it was a different style. So, all right, let's just not give them a chance to use the hammer. We'll brawl them to begin with. We'll do shots of the balcony because if they're just going to be the exact same match seven times, then bloody hell. Mm. So, yeah, at least try to take them out beforehand. Uh, I put my Pentagon's full on zap level acted of. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to use the hammer now. Taz had so much fun. He's like, the hammer between that, Penta's wait, legs. Zap is in the CBBC remote control, yeah. or whatever it was on. Yeah. Wow. I've not thought about that program. Sorry, for like, you threw a deck of screw about that. That throat- Zap. I mean, oh, that, that was in CIG. Yeah. 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 Uh, oh, oh, my God. With Daisy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That, that has... Bizarre level of acting where it's kind of technically silent film because no one's speaking in words, but they've all got... <laughs> 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 that has unlocked, like, oh, a oh, whole oh, section oh, of my brain. That. Neil Buchanan was on there doing, yeah. like, a knockoff art attack. Yeah. He'd just do the big ones, wouldn't he? Yeah, he's been, he was typecast already. <laughs> that yeah. has blown my mind. Sorry. I'm going to Google it now to read the different characters on it. Pack just smashing people's heads open. <laughs> I really enjoyed when the Bucks are holding Pack for the V-trigger and Omega's mm. sprinting down the ramp. Pack just reverses it to a super kick. Yep. And Omega makes his body go limp. And when he lands, he just slides off the, off the screen. Mm. So satisfying. Very talented. She saw Moxie do it earlier. I thought he'd steal it. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what you say about the match, really. It was just, I was, I was thoroughly sports entertained. Daisy yes. Dare. Daisy oh, Dare. I hate her. She was a, yeah, she's a right <laughs> she wrong. She's the and heel. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Zap. I've just called Daisy Dare a wrong. She's <laughs> <laughs> probably also Cuthbert Lily. Don't know. Yeah, that's Tricky the Dicky. guy. I mean, guy. Tricky Dicky was... Um, He's in Japan at the minute. The handyman. <laughs> oh, yeah, just hands doing tricks. Smart Artie. Yep. Like oh. Mini Magic. Barry oh, Lee no. Thomas. Oh, no, that was the actor. Uh, <laughs> Mr. Snoot, Mr. Snooty and Old Lady. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Hess. Yeah. <laughs> so, no, but I, I am seriously uh, liking the Elite versus Death Triangle feud. Oh, yeah. that I 
was already tapping out with because of the way, the abrupt nature of it. Mm. Again, AW and actually putting stories together needs work. But what we're getting is actually all right most of the time. And this is one example where it's like, okay, the match is obviously going to be fine, whatever. But it was just the fact they announced it on the pay-per-view. Yeah. Not like a, oh, yeah, to you, I'm going to work around each other until we know who we're there. Which is, oh, yeah, they're doing this. But no, I'd be pleasantly surprised by the matches. <laughs> um, Omega wasn't being a, a dick like last time. Sorry, just looked at an image Fraser sent there that he's chucked in a Rimini or whatever it's called. to to. Oh, no. <laughs> Thank you. I'll send it to Andrew to put in the oh, post-production. God. Don't. <laughs> Don't do it. Anyway. Yeah, no one cares what we're talking about right now. So thank you very much. That was The Week in Wrestling. Let's have a rummage in our mail bags. <laughs> Huge breaking news from the sap. From the sap. You all right? Sorry. I've just eaten a tropical par- pineapple freddo and my mouth is confused. Uh, from Sean Ross sap to give him his full title. <gasps> What's Fightful Select? man himself said i heard regal's deal is up in december there's oh. a freebie since i'm sick so get well soon sean ross yeah, yeah but also regal's deal he has heard this is sean ross has heard is up in december wow it is now december <sighs> ravy davy melt is in the bin again he said april he's, he he's got his hands full he's digging a big hole in his back garden because <laughs> people are current bit yeah <laughs> anyway so that, yeah you know what now that we know that that makes a lot more sense uh, why they rushed it if this is the last time we see regal it makes sense that, oh okay that's why they've done it a, bri- a, a bit abruptly yeah so aha mgf is so clever use regal to give him the knocks to help him beat mox yeah. okay Man. and then he just got rid of him as soon as he didn't need anymore like, <laughs> like a condom oh no. nice. i was actually all right but yeah. he's used it he's abused it he's tossed it away <laughs> The mailbag, everyone. Mailbag. <laughs> Hello, gents. Hello. I guess a condom is a bag of mail, M A L E. I hope you're doing well. Mail nays. <laughs> At the beginning of the year, I watched. I started watching World Wonder Ring Stardom. So oh, starting. look at you using the full name, and I've enjoyed it immensely. Lovely. It's been a lot of fun discovering new favorite wrestlers oh. and watching some absolutely fantastic wrestling matches. My question is. Have there been any established promotions that you began watching that quickly became a favorite? Or is there a promotion that you'd like to start watching but just haven't had the opportunity? Thank you for the lovely podcast. It's always a highlight of my week. All the best, former Crystal Palace defender Eric Young, <laughs> a.k.a. Craig from South London. Thank you, Craig. South London. Yeah. Thank you, former Team Canada member uh, Eric, Eric, Eric Young. There, pal. Much love. And so you got into stardom. Uh, I quickly got into... Was the UK wrestling promotions um, when they were a thing? <laughs> I can't say about sounding cynical and bitter. No, no, it's, it's really, true. Is though, it? Isn't it? I started watching PWG when it became easier to watch them via the High Spots Network. Yeah, that's better. Um, just watching all these lads who come up and you're like, Carl Anderson had hair. You know, oh. Finn Balor had that one little match there. Uh, Kenny Omega it was just a little cult hero dude. He used to do like Street Fighter Chun Li poses green and stuff. Tight, yeah, trunks, yeah. He had bigger hair, like that version of him. You know, just being a silly little silly little guy, he he he, and all that stuff. There was like, oh, this is what people have been talking about forever. And then obviously getting on the uh, the bandwagon like 09, 2010, when they were like, wow, this is really good. This. What yeah. about yourselves, Jack? That's a that's a good answer. Is there, but is there also a promotion that you want to watch but you just haven't got the time? I missed a lot of Impact Wrestling shows this year. Right. So I'd say probably mm-hmm. Impact. Mine would be when I first started watching New Japan because it. I caught it just when it got uh, amazing. And it's hard now to live up. It was such a high bar they set for themselves. But it, I was watching it when it was like Naito and Okada and all that. And I was like, bloody hell, there's so many cool ones. Which one do I pick? And I picked Shibata and then he retired straight away. Oh, but, so you're a bling. Yes. But um, no, it was a great time to start watching it. I started watching it like... Tw- I, I, I remember watching the Okada Omega first one. So it would have been late 2016. I started watching it just in time for that match. Wow. So that one... But for a promotion that I w- I don't have time to catch up on as much and I wish I knew more about, it's probably Dragon Gate. Uh, Out of all the promotions, yeah. they seem to, when it clicks, they seem to be mint and they seem to be, do stable warfare, but like well. Yeah. So I'll go for Dragon Gate. Yeah. Good pick. Answer A is AEW for me when it first started. Because mm. the room was, it had arguably never, never been worse around, you know, 2019 sort of time. I know it was starting to pick up again when they moved SmackDown over at the Fox, but still it wasn't anywhere near to what it, we were used to back in the day. Um, and the promotion, I would have to go back in time for Lucha Underground. I still haven't yeah. just sat down and just 
consumed that chronologically. It's mm. something I still want to do. It just falls off so fast. It's yeah. like a sharp decline. Yeah. Aye. Like Westworld. Just so I can learn uh, Richard Tubman's fascination with uh, Dario thingy. Is. Quedo. Oh, Loves him. Oh, yeah, he does. Best things in sliced veg, according to Richard Tubman. <laughs> uh-huh. They should do more. <laughs> Authority figures don't need to be wrestlers. He was just an actor they brought in. So he was really good. Aye. Yeah. Mm. Ah, hi lads. When Cody returns from injury, I've got no doubt he'll go to the main event scene. But what do you think he'd be doing right now if he hadn't been injured? Ooh. The Rollins feud seemed to have been, right, that had been wrapped up and it would be too soon to put a top belt on him. Who should he be feuding with and who would he have won any championship with? Thanks, Jack Coyle. Thank you, Jack Coyle. Thank you, Jack. He used to play for, I don't know, Patrick Thistle. Um, <laughs> oh. To Google, what could have been? It looked like he was going to win Money in the Bank because he was all over the... Mm. Unless that was a bait and switch. Because he was all over the branding. True. Um, so if he won that, I think Drew might have beaten Roman. No, for what... I think Drew might have beaten Roman for one of the belts. Because then you've got a Rumble winner who's not Cody to go against Drew, one of the champions, and then Roman the other. Maybe I'm thinking too... Maybe mm. I'm assuming a lot there, though. Yeah. I don't know. No, I, I think that was pretty spot on, I think. I what, think he was, what he was going to do. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. I agree with Jack. Lovely. Smart Randy. What well, would he be doing now? Yeah. Feuding with Jinder Mahal to round out the year because of America versus evil foreigner. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm with you. You know, yeah. wrestling. That's yeah. right. <laughs> I think he'd be feuding with. I think they'd have maybe. Because they want him on the back burner a little bit before he rises back up to challenge Roman. Maybe like. I really can't think. A returning Strowman. Cody loves a monster feud <laughs> when he has like he's the yeah. like the Wardlow one. I'll nah, go for that one. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tough one then. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Do we reckon Triple H still fancies him? Yeah. Like, as much as Vince was looking like he did. I think yeah. so. Because Cody's done nothing but praise him. So I think it's mutual both ways. Triple H is a big <laughs> oh, <laughs> Triple H is a big NWA. Mark, that's it. That's <laughs> and, what they and got. Cody's comment. like the son of a le- like the legend of the NWA. Yeah. So I think he probably uh, he's also a student of the game. And they uh, probably both, yeah, they probably respect each other's rustliness. They will confront each other like a uh, Heidenreich and Snitsky about stage. Yeah, <laughs> I like Harley Race. <laughs> I like Jack Briscoe. <laughs> anyway, uh, Shag Squad. Oh, that's us. Obviously, Christmas <laughs> is coming soon. What? That's what it says. What? <laughs> As well as other winter holidays for other faiths and people of varying interest. That's right. Okay. Uh, and that got me thinking. If you were Sandy Claus and you could deliver one present to a pro wrestler, sorry, yeah, to a pro wrestler working today, what would that present be? If I was Sandy Claus, I would give Tony Khan the gift of Cody Rhodes so he could tell proper good wrestling stories again. Oh, mine was going to be the gift of patience to Tony Khan. <laughs> I'm going to have to think of a new one now. Yeah. Good boys and girls, only remember, naughty children get nothing but a severe beating. <laughs> Good God. That was Thanks. a lump of coal. Thanks as always, your pal, former Leicester midfielder, Muzzy Is it? <laughs> Bloody hell, Muzzy, thank you very much. Um, so we could give one gift to a, a wrestler working today. Mm, mm. What would it be? A oh, big my. goff girlfriend to Ray so he would understand. <laughs> <laughs> we like I... the Mysterios. I would gift Claudio Castagnoli only slightly, slightly better mic skills because then he'd win every, he'd be the best wrestler in the world. Mm. Only slightly because I find him quite charming, but just slightly. I would take away Braun Strowman's thumbs. (laughs) (laughs) I would give him the gift of an amputation. So he can't tweet. So he can't tweet. So you give Braun Strowman's parents a big pair of scissors. Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, that's the first thing that came to my mind. How's he going to hit the running power slam <laughs> in his elbow? As you see, Braun Strowman's opponent again, working on his lack of thumbs. <laughs> <laughs> he's, lo- <laughs> he's locked him in a room. He can't open, can't open the handle. Like, this is, I've lost thumbs in Christmas. <laughs> Why? This has never happened. And people are just happy with their Xboxes and stuff like that. <laughs> what did you get for Christmas? They took my thumb. <laughs> He'd have big thumbs as well. Oh, massive. Like Owen yeah. Morrison. No, so you know how I've said that Owen's got big, big toes, right? Oh, yeah, one of those thinly veiled metaphors, yes. No. <laughs> so then Dan Heppel insisted to look at Owen's thumbs to see if he had weird thumbs as well. <laughs> and Owen did that. 
and Dan had was a few pints in, but nearly cried laughing. And we were like, what? Because to us, it looked like he had normal thumbs. And he went, looks like his thumbs have thought they were a finger and then remembered that they've got to be thumbs halfway up. And then they go wider. And we looked again. And I don't know what Dan was talking about, but his thumbs were really similar to Owen's. So <laughs> he was just laughing at his own thumbs. So has he got giant thumbs then? No. Oh. Normal thumbs to, in my book, but Dan thought he had. Dan's weird. insistent to get this joke out, so he's making up stuff. I was the tour, I appreciate uh, my that. joke. I was the tour originator, sadly. But yeah. anyone got bendy thumbs on the table? I don't. Mine's a no butt. straight. Oh yeah, he just doesn't. The one that does. People. Have yeah, you got like eighties WF action figure thumbs. Yeah, yeah they're not oppos- unopposable at all. Yeah, I haven't got bend. I can't. Yeah, I can do. How's your thumb, was a thing. Is yours oh, bendy? So cool. oh. Yeah, he's got a bendy boy. Look at that that's, bendy boy. That's, that's not a bendy boy. Move that slightly in front of the camera like it's a it's bendy. clips. <laughs> 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 hey, good. We had our thumbs working. Was it yeah. like can you do that with your arm? Is that what? That? what? Oh, what was it like double? Oh. <gasps> no, what was it. that? Oh, yeah. that's a thing. Yeah, oh, like, that. Oh. oh, what was that? Doing? Oh. Oh. Whatever. Yeah. Can you roll your thumb? All right, enough of this. Can you, can you twist your tongue around in a circle? Uh, yeah. Uh. <laughs> oh, a full circle, man. But yeah. Apologies to audio listeners. <laughs> <laughs> just going, oh, oh, we're, making, we're making noises for people. <laughs> it's interesting. Thank you very much for the mailbag. <laughs> if you have any thoughts, <laughs> queries, or crap questions. Your Spotify did you say you were you gift, did you? Hmm? What gift did you give to a wrestler? Oh, oh God, sorry. I got distracted by everything else. <laughs> that um, oh, yeah. A good big goth girlfriend. Uh, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. And some all Woolies selection box of Drew McIntyre. <laughs> Soon feel lonely at Christmas. Thank you very much for your thoughts, queries from all the former midfielders yeah. and uh, centre forwards. If you want to send them, you can send whatever you got to us. Mailbag at cultaholic.com. Ah, wrist piss. Hello, gents. Long time listener, but only my second time writing in. Hmm. I have a game that I wish for you all to play that I felt would be a lot of fun and would see where your heads are at, oh no, regarding different errors. What I would like you to do is, starting with the 99 Royal Rumble, hot off the heels of back-to-back Stone Cold victories, take each year's final four of the Rumble match and either choose a new winner or stick with the original choice. It can be for logical reasons or for the sake of chaos. I wonder if I... Sorry, I figured I didn't want to overload you all too much by going all the way back to the very beginning. And I feel the back-to-back victories for both Shawn Michaels and Stone Cold prior to 99 were pretty pivotal okay. in getting wrestling to where it was. Yeah, I agree with that, pal. So, this Let's is going to be long. Fastest fourth first. Original, okay. 99, rigid one by Vince McMahon, but the others were Stone Cold, mm-hmm. Big Boss Man, and D'Lo Brown. I would give that one to Stone Cold Steve Austin. D'Lo Brown okay. in the main event of WrestleMania 15. Against The Rock, would it be? Yeah. Nation yeah. of Domination. Yep. Yeah, I, I Story tells itself. That's right. right. <laughs> Big Boss Man, because you could have played the hench man at the 99 St. Valentine's Day Massacre. Still had Big Show come up, and Vince wouldn't need to take that brutal bump off the top of the cage. And he wouldn't have been hung. Yeah. Yeah, he wouldn't have died. Yeah. Yeah. In kayfabe. In kayfabe. In kayfabe. In kayfabe. <laughs> 2000 Rumble. Now, hang on, there's a typo here because it says it was originally run by The Rock. Oh, I no. think you'll find <laughs> yeah, yeah. that Rocky's feet touched the floor first yeah. and the winner was Big Show, X-Pac, and Kane. I'd have The Rock win still. Yeah, probably. I would just rock. change. that. The winner wasn't the problem of that rumble. It was just the rest of the build to Mania. Yeah. The only issue with that match was, even though I do love it because it was like the first big time, we will talk about the Rumble 2000 a lot, uh, was the fact that there was no one else that could have won it apart from Big Show and The Rock. Mm. But yeah, who cares? Uh, yeah, I'll say Big Show. 2001, Stone Cold was last, but obviously <laughs> Billy Gunn, The Rock, and Kane. Now, I'm still going to go for Stone Cold, but I suspect that might be unpopular because this was Kane's Rumble. It was Kane's Rumble. That's why I would go for Kane. Yeah, because again, there's always the November, November, Jesus, February show. To write the... Yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I don't think I always want to change. Yeah, WrestleMania X7. No, I was pissed. That was <laughs> 2002, Triple H, Kurt Angle, Mr. Perfect, Stone Cold. Oh, Kurt Angle. Yeah, Angle got a bit wrong there, didn't he? he thought but he... Triple H had just come back. Yeah, I'm, yeah I'm, nothing's com- combating. Come back, Triple H. Perfect day by you two, Triple H. Nah. <laughs> I think Angle, yeah, he would have done better with Stephanie in storyline. She... If they'd gone that way with it, yeah. 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 2003, Brock Lesnar, Undertaker, Kane, Batista. 
Um, Brock Lesnar. Yeah, keep it Lesnar. Mm. Yeah, it's mm. no one else there. Uh, 04, Benoit, Show, oh. Angle, Jericho. Jericho's never won one. Jericho. Jericho created the Royal Rumble, so thank you to Chris Jericho. <laughs> 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 he also was the first ever IC champion in a fictional Rio de Janeiro. Yes. Uh, hmm. Benoit winning it was a bit out there of a pick, to be fair, because a lot of lots of stars in that match. But we did get the the great moment at the end of WrestleMania XX. So yeah, I, I don't want to angle angle or any other thing with Eddie shows what, whatever okay. and Jericho had the thing with Christian. Nah, I'm staying with Benoit. Okay. okay. God, I know what happened. <laughs> oh fine. Mm. Oh, Batista, John Cena, Edge, Rey Mysterio, and Vince's squads. I wouldn't change uh, an entire thing about the finish. It worked out so well somehow. <laughs> right? Yeah. It was perfect, yeah. Wouldn't change a thing. Yeah, picture perfect. 2006, Rey Mysterio, Randy Orton, Triple H, RVD. Oh, give it Rey. Give it Rey. No, maybe RV. Mm. No, Rey. It's got to be Rey. Uh, yeah, I don't know. You're going to have to be a bit of a bastard to change yeah. Rey in that one, aren't you? <sighs> In some ways, yeah, it was right. But the way they, the TV around this time was rotten with Ray ending every conversation with, yeah, but Eddie, like, all right, calm down, man. Mm. But still, around that time, yeah, him or RVD. Uh, 07, Undertaker, Shawn Michaels, Edge, Randy Orton. Ooh. Um, who won Taker? Taker, yeah. yeah. Oh, but him, that and, final, him and HBK I that keep the moment. final two the same. Yeah, probably Taker. So. Yeah, keep it the same. They yeah. built the... the the Shawn Michaels losing the plot. And yes. Yeah. Yeah. Well, worked out well. And then they both started the next rumble. Yeah. Mm. Oh, wait. Um, Cena, Triple H, Batista Kane. Cena. Oh, Cena. Yeah, come on. Yeah, come on now. Oh, nine. Randy Orton, Triple H, Cody, and Ted DiBiase Jr. Yeah. Arthur, come on. That was still Randy, yeah. But wasn't that the one where he was the only person who could have won? Yeah, there was, there was yeah. no one else. A rubbish rumble. In, yeah, Randy, and he yeah. should have won at WrestleMania as well. He absolutely should. Yes, he should have. 2010. Edge, Cena, Batista, HBK. Now, oh, Edge had just come back, hadn't he? But yeah. it didn't actually end up that good. I don't think he even won at Mania. I mean, he lose to Jericho, maybe. I can't remember. Yeah, it was the Edge Jericho. I, I'll give it. I'll keep it Edge. But if if we could have broadened it, I would have actually given that Rumble to Punk, probably. Twenty ten Rumble. Yeah. Oh That's yeah. Not Great question, Collie, right. raise your hand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Fine, but I'll keep it Edge. Give it Edge for the rest Who of the season. Who were the final four games? <clears throat> Edge, Cena, Batista, HBK. HBK did the... Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's, he can't win. Yeah, he can't win because of that. Uh, yeah, <laughs> just keep the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's fair enough. 2011, Del Rio, oh. Santino Morella, oh. Randy Orton and Wade. For the good of the Rumble going forwards, I would have given this one to Morella because anything... Can, then it would have been like, hang on. That would have been the first proper left wing, like, not well, that's the right term. Left field. Left field. Right. <laughs> Jesse Ventura. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <coughs> yeah um, and also, like, Elimination Chamber the next month, Santino then had that really exciting Danny Bryan thing where the roll up is like, oh my God, he might actually win. And Del Rio went on to WrestleMania to lose to Edge. Yeah. So, yeah, Morella should have won. Or Barrett. Or was this already when he was... I can't remember no, he did. Already, no, Nexus no, was... was oh. Nexus was because they had a tag match against Big Show and Kane. This wasn't the core. Era. Oh, maybe the core. Oh, you know what? Yeah, I'm tapped out. Oh, okay. 2012. Sheamus, Jericho, Orton, Big Show. Jericho. Keep it Sheamus. Oh, because then we got Yes, I mean, yeah. yeah. Uh, mm. Keeping that. 2013. Cena, Ryback, Sheamus, Ziggler. <sighs> this one was upsetting because it was so predictable that Cena would win. Yeah. Um, I would have liked to have seen The Rock versus Dolph Ziggler at WrestleMania, so I'll go for Dolph Ziggler. The Ryback, uh, yeah. yeah. Daniel Bryan likes to call him. <laughs> yeah. I'll the pick Ryback. the Ryback afterwards, and he can go. I should have won, bloody hell, himself. <laughs> 2014, uh, Batista, <laughs> Roman Reigns, Sheamus, CM Punk. Now, <laughs> interestingly, <laughs> yeah, I'll go for yeah. Roman then, because as we all know, the crowd loved him in this Rumble. They yeah, did. Probably should have won. A weird moment was like, oh, maybe that was the time. Mm. All right. Then the next year, <laughs> Roman Reigns, Rusev, Big Show, Cade. Oh. You Daniel! Know you, know, you know what? Rusev. Give it Rusev. Yeah, why not? <coughs> yeah, give it Rusev at the end of the season. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, what he said. 2016, Triple H, Dean Ambrose, Roman Reigns, Sheamus. Dean Ambrose. Yeah. 
well, if we're going to get Reigns winning, I guess Triple H is fine. Mm. Reigns winning at WrestleMania, I mean. I remember really wanting Ambrose to win when he got down to the final a few. Yeah, yeah that was. It's, it's, his top came off. He was trying so hard. Woof. Mm. <laughs> 2017, Randy Orton, Roman Reigns, Bray Wyatt, Jericho. Samoa Joe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The one everyone wanted. Not that Samoan called Joe. Hey. Um, Probably... Oh. I mean, it worked. Who were the other? Who were the four? Sorry, Randy, Bray. Reigns, Wyatt, Jericho. Oh man, I don't want any of them to win. The Orton thing worked until he then burned Wyatt's house down and remained a good guy. <laughs> yeah. So I'll go for Orton, I guess. No, Wyatt. I'll go for. You only need the for rumble Wyatt. for that though. So Wyatt, I would have yeah. put. I'll put Bray and then be like, "Well, I have to. Challenge. Someone has to challenge me at No Way Out. No real Randy." He's like, "No." Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking parcel tongue. 2018. Uh, oh, Nakamura, Roman Reigns, John Cena, Finn Balor. I like that I love one that a lot. Yeah. yeah, Nakamura. The still new in. school versus the old. Shane's gay. Oh, is no, that Cena? Yeah. No, Shane's gay. <laughs> it was a class rumble, though. Oh, yeah, it was a really yeah. good rumble. Shane's gay is the winner there. Yeah, mm. I'm keeping that one. 2019. Seth Rollins, Braun Strowman, Dolph Ziggler, Andrade. Dolph Ziggler? He's always there. Is this when he cashed in his US title for the final spot of the Rumble? Or was that not? That was no, it was of, out. It was early. At the, at that the was the end of 17 when, oh. it, when he did that. In Andrade. Um, I see. I remember this Rumble as like a watered down version of the 28th. Where it was just also all right. I don't know. I don't remember anything. I think about Rollins it. was at this point like organically properly a babyface before yeah. then. He tried to step into Roman's yeah. spot and he was doing all the interviews and then he turned himself heel by being a bit of an arse. Yeah. Uh, so, so I'd go for Rollins at this point. I'd keep it at Rollins as well. I think you see clips just remind myself of that. Uh, Andrade, so he, can, so he can win the world title in a shoot fight backstage. He's wearing those navy blue and orange, whatever the baseball team is. Mm. Ah. I think he was, I think oh. he beat him. I think the, the Bengals! The I finish was like on the apron and he like, I can't remember. Did he eliminate Braun? Yeah, ah. last year. Oh, okay. 2020, Drew McIntyre, Roman Reigns, oh. Edge or Randy Orton? Drew. I would have just had the lockdown not happen. Like if, if, yeah. if we could have avoided the whole pandemic. Then Drew would have been golden, unfortunately for him. You know what? Since the pandemic did happen, Edge. Okay. <laughs> just to cap the nice return. Yeah. Uh, I know what you're saying. Uh, Drew's first win in front of a crowd. I'm mm. still picking Drew. Uh, 2021, Edge. Because <laughs> you've got those videos of people in pubs and that going, Drew, Drew. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Really great. In Scotland. Uh, Edge, Randy Orton, Seth, Christian. Uh, Christian? I don't know if Edge needed it. No. Jesus. Um... Oh, those four, though. What was Seth doing at this time? Was he a heel now? No? A few of them were Kevin Owens, I think. <coughs> no? He was doing the whole, uh, like, the churchy Titan Tron, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. The Messiah. Oh, that, that, that looked pretty on the Thunderdome. Yeah. Wow, well, okay, Thunderdome. I guess I'd have, I guess keep it edgy. He won from number one, and they don't happen that often. Oh, no, yeah. they do happen quite often. <laughs> <laughs> no, they don't happen that often. I'll keep it edge. I'll keep it edge. It felt right at the time. Yeah. I was a bit negative about that at that point. Mm. I think it's aged better than it. Well, the edge. It wasn't as good as his return. Mm. Uh, I'll, still, I'll in, still pick him. When I was in the Asper's toilet. Oh, though it would have been. And heard everyone outside go, oh! <laughs> <laughs> it would have been funny to have Christian win that at the same year that he won like the t the Impact title. <laughs> and then that would have been, yeah, been, cool. been funny, actually. 2022, Brock Lesnar. <laughs> I don't remember Drew this. Drew McIntyre, <laughs> Shane McMahon, and Riddle. Shane Shane was the last four. <laughs> Shane, yeah, Shane. What did the champ? What did Brock go do at WrestleMania? Roman Reigns for the title versus yeah. title. Oh yes, he's in the main event. Ah no, keep it Brock. Gosh. Turned him babyface, didn't they? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, so. maybe they could have done some riddle, but at that, nah, it was too nah. I feel no. about twenty five years ago. Like. Uh, <laughs> they, yeah, some of those feel like last last week, and twenty twenty two feels so long. A ago. Aiden was talking about he was compiling all the biggest news stories for some for some uh, something he's going to do, and uh, yeah. he went through them and he was like. So much right. has happened. 2022. Year, right? oh, what a year. Punk, God. Shane, Vince. Like, yeah. everything. 2021, I couldn't wait to end. 2022, I'm like, come on, there's still a month left. What else is going to happen? <laughs> Sasha Banks gets unveiled by Bow Wow, wow. on AEW. Bow Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> and to think of the last few ounces of energy you have left through the few women's Rumble smashes in their final pause. 2018. <laughs> Stop it. Asuka, Nikki Bella, Brie Bella, Sasha Banks. I would have kept that ask her. I think she's. I like, a, Asuka, I like yeah. her as the first ever women's yeah. Rumble winner. Yeah. 2019, Becky Lynch, Charlotte, Nia, Bailey. The Becky women's class. It's Becky Mania at that point. Yeah. yeah. 
2020. Charlotte, Shayna Baszler, Beth, and Natalia. Shayna. Yes. Very passionately Shayna. Yeah. She was murdering everyone back then, wasn't yeah. she? Yeah. That was the hilarious rumble where she was the only one to get any like plugs or talk about it on TV. Mm. And I was like, are they actually doing one? <laughs> and then they went, oh yeah, here we go. So yeah, uh, Shayna. Just because anybody but Charlotte. Oh. 2021, Bianca Belair, Rhea Ripley, Charlotte, Natalia. And I kept that one the same. That was really cool. Yep. And yeah. it's set up what looks like it's going to be like, it looks like Rhea and Bianca might be each other's like Tommy Draven and Raven. Like, mm. I like or that. Owens and Zay. Uh, 2022, Ronda Rousey, Charlotte, Bianca, Shayna. Uh, oh, can I change my last one to Rhea and this one, Bianca, then? Just give them one each. That's nice of you. Yeah. I'll change this year's to Rhea. Is she there? Just said these. No. Ronda, Charlotte, yeah. Bianca, so I changed Shayna. Last, so I changed last year's one to Rhea, the one before to Rhea, and then this one to Bianca. Because a lot, I'm shuffling, I'm rotating like Rafa Benitez. <laughs> <laughs> I'd pick Bianca to win again, because Ronda, I'm like, yeah, whatever. Mm. You need to win the Rumble. Um, that would be a cool one to win two in a row as well. Yeah, Bianca. Yeah. But then do you get the match with Sasha? Ooh. Oh. Ooh, intrigue. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for all that you do and hope you have a wonderful winter season. That's very nice of you. Thank you very much, John Carr from Connecticut, USA. Whoa, thank Bloody you, John. Hell. What a place to be from. The Mean Street Posse. Yeah, in the map. <laughs> so thank you very much for it's your really Reese's Pieces. If you have any to send yourself, please, by all means, send them to John Carr at Connecticut. Uh, and if he's not available, then send them to us at <laughs> Mailbag. Mailbag. Mailbag at Coolaholic.com. <laughs> So you try and be clever and just outsmart yourself. <laughs> Thank you very much. I was really impressed. You were writing that down and presenting at the same time. I thought, he's, he's multitasking. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's Cultaholics. The question. So I'd say, uh, John Carr, you've already written in before. You were on the list twice. Ah, yeah. See, so yeah, I'm not like Santa. I'm not checking my name. You just made the list. Hey. <laughs> twice. But also checking the list. Another one, even more important than Santa Claus's list. The producers for this podcast, Woo! Chris R Routh. Yeah, buddy. Routh. Bruno Sammartino. <laughs> uh, Reno2200. <laughs> and Noah Anderson. Ah, Anderson. Oh, thank you very much. Ooh, ooh, ooh. You scrummy, scrummy uh, box of roses you get off your nana. Oh, love you all. Thank you very much for your producers. What's your favorite chocolate box of Christmas time? Celebrations. Mm. Straight in there. Yeah, I'd probably go along with that. Not quality. I straight. even eat the bounty. I'll take that out, apparently. Yeah. Get rid of that. Racist. So I agree. Ah, what I a like, lovely podcast. Do you remember the had. galaxy truffles they put in there? What happened to them? Oh. They replaced them with Twix. Because I realised, like, hang on, people have celebrations. They're not posh. People eat galaxies are posh. Yeah. <laughs> Can't be having the, them all mixed up. Like, you were boarding school, so... The big I question got, this week. Hang on. It was like, it wasn't like Rockstar's school. bully game. Where I'm running from. Him and Mick Jagger's kid running around. What? <laughs> no, but I did go. Uh, Jonathan Edwards' his kid was in my. Uh, oh, was he? The triple jumper, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good lad. And the bloke who ran Northern Rock, his kid was Oh, in my so it was the well. posh boarding school, but Jonathan Edwards' boring, kid was, was there. Just, yeah. Uh, to be fair, I went to school uh, with Steve Cram's kid. Mm. Marcus. Oh, the Jaro Arrow. <laughs> he's from Jaro. He's Jaro's most famous Jaro, son. Yeah. Steve Cram, yeah. yeah. My mum and dad went to school with him. His son was beautiful. Was he? He was near below me. Marcus, his name was. <laughs> Beautiful young boy. Beautiful young boy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this is a beautiful young boy. William Regal, our big question this week. But you didn't is, call him an alien, even though the lads at my school call him. Lads near above. Sorry. Was William Regal. ran away really quickly, couldn't catch him to come. <laughs> at a steady pace, though. <laughs> Middle distance. Was William Regal's run in AW a success? And we are saying this in the past tense as if he's already gone, not just because he was stretched off. Stretched it, bloody hell. You're trying, trying to get the pun in there, aren't you? It's worked, it's Regal fine. Regal stretched it off. Not only was he out by medics at the end of AW, or middle of AW, should say, Dynamite this week, but according to our sources and Sean Ross Sapp, and he's really wrong, wouldn't like to us. Like to eat, but wouldn't like to us, because uh, we know where he lives, has said that, in fact, Regal's contract is not up in a year's time when he signed it. It's actually expiring this month. Uh, this so, month? Um, we are assuming this is the last of Regal in AE Dub. So if you're now laughing at this podcast title because it's wrong, direct all complaints <laughs> to at Sean Ross Sapp. Two P's yes. on the end there, two P's. We're taking a guess on this one. <laughs> We're being risky. It's December. We've made it this far. Let's take a risk. 
Mm. So we immediately suspect that there will be a thing that says, <laughs> Real has re-signed. Don't listen to Sean Ross Sapp. He's making it all up. In which case, oh well. Brian um, Eichhorst strikes again. I think it's been... He... I don't know how to really word this. The, the stuff Regal's done, he's been on top form throughout. But mm. the actual stuff he's been given, I think is a, mix, a bit more of a mixed bag. Would you agree? Go in, into more detail. <laughs> Damn. Okay. <laughs> Regal's performances on commentary, on promos, on yep. especially that vignette where he talked about like stabbing someone's face. Oh, God, I forgot about that. That was unbelievable stuff. And like it's going to be remembered up there with like anything else Regal's done in his career, yep. I think, in terms of like how charismatic he is and how brilliant he is. But the storylines regarding him, I don't know. A lot of the time it felt like, oh, I've brought the Blackpool Combat Club together. But then, and it started off really strong, but then things just started to go a bit off in their own directions, I felt. And it seemed like Regal was just along for the ride. I think it's more of an issue of AEW. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I'm it's not saying like, it's Regal's fault. We did get some lovely moments like the anarchy in the arena match and stuff like that when they felt a unified front. But most of the time, you're right. It felt like here are four lads or five lads together, um, but we're going to be doing our own separate things anyway. Yeah, which is fine. Like... I guess it's like the New Japan style of faction where they're not always doing everything. Oh, okay. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I enjoyed what Regal did, but I didn't necessarily enjoy all of the Blackpool Combat Club. Is that a different way of... Yeah. Okay. What do you think? I will miss him on commentary. Ooh. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Mm. Scrummy, scrummy, scrummy. Uh, I like that. Him being a daft old vaguely camp... British An eccentric dude. Englishman, I think yes. you'll find the terminology. Yes, there we go. It's a nice <laughs> short way of saying that. I'll miss him being used as a storyline reason for the MGF fully turning bad after being good, bad. Now he's just bad, bad. That makes sense. Yeah, it does. All wrapped up in a neat, nice little package. Um, yeah, him being uh, Danielson's like Obi-Wan Kenobi just to teach him and go, Regal, what shall I do? Kick him in the head. Oh, all right, thank you, Regal. <laughs> I'll miss that. So I think he held a lot of stuff together that you're right, wasn't that special by itself, but it felt like a thing because Regal was there at the head of the Blackpool Combat Club. I liked how as well, because the, through my time watching wrestling, I've seen Regal as the, like, the buffoonish authority figure in WWE. Then I stopped watching when he had his nice singles run, when he like was king of the ring and that. And by the time I started watching again, he was like this kind NXT GM. So I've never seen evil Regal at the time. Mm. So I was glad to see evil Regal a bit or like sinister Re Regal, yeah. Ross, what do you reckon? I think if you take yourself back to April or whenever it was announced he was signed mm. and imagine what he would do, what he has done has far superseded anything he could imagine he could do. Okay. If that makes any sense at mm. all. Yeah. Mm. I've enjoyed everything he's done on screen from the stupid, silly flirting with Excalibur to the, the more serious uh, Blackpool, uh, Blackpool Combat Club uh, promos. Uh, I think Jack's right in saying that what he has been given, you know, lit, like in more recent times, hasn't been as good. But again, it's the storyline with the MJF thing, the emails as well, I think it's just been top tier as well. He's been, it's that whole range of performance. He's given us everything, I mm. think, in quite a short space of time. And I think he'll leave a massive hole if yeah. he is indeed gone. Mm. Which yeah. We think he is because Sean Ross Sapp said so. Of course. He That's would his catchphrase. If, if Sean Ross Sapp said so. If he goes back, this is a little bonus question. If he goes back, if he does go back to WWE, well, will they just put him in the same role or will he do something different? I hope not, because he seemed to be miserable doing that role. <laughs> Listening to his podcast a couple of times and how much that role had him do just all hours of every single day. All oh, right. Mm -hmm. I hope they give him something more to what he's been doing in AEW. Because there's, there's people been saying he's been turning up, but like he's always the first one there for an AEW TV day. And he's the one who just coaches people all day long and he does his stuff at the night time. Then he goes home. Something more like that role, because he just, whenever he speaks about like, I, I don't know if it comes down to a gratitude thing, like when he got released. Uh, like in terms of what he was doing. He always seems really miserable when he speaks about it. It's so weird how he's almost defending WWE not these times. He goes, oh, people thought it was unorganized and we didn't know what we're doing. And it's like Rick James on the, the Chappelle show. It's like, oh, they said it was unorganized. And then you fast forward a bit and he goes, yeah, well, I did get woken up at 6 a.m. and have to be figured out to do an entire tournament with people. And you're like, what? Mm. Sounds like a hell on earth. What are you doing? So I think maybe just for the fans, because I love his work. Yeah, yeah. he does more. If he's a character, as a GM, so I'll get Shawn Michaels and his bloody cowboy hat every NXT going, <laughs> that's right, I've had an idea. It's like, all right, thank you, you, char <laughs> you charisma vacuum. Um, oh, that's, that's the heartbreak kid. And he breaks my heart every time I see oh. him still on TV. Go away and do anything You've else. You've never forgiven him, have you? From Montreal. For what? Exactly. 
<clears throat> Who's your daddy? Mm. Yeah. So, yeah, William Regal, there's so many different things they could do with him backstage or in front of the stage. So many good things. The only winner is the fans. Oh. <laughs> oh sorry. And the only loser is uh, Tony Khan, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Well, sorry, Tony. Wow. Wow. That didn't seem as ridiculously long a podcast as normal, but we'll wait and see. That's good. I'm, I'm not complaining. It'll start, it'll start I'm happy. With a three. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> three, like a smiley cat face on the side. Eh? That's mm. how we all feel right now. <laughs> Jack, what have you got for us until next time? I have a weirdest episode of In the Works, which Ooh. should be coming out at some point in December. I'm not quite sure when. I felt bad for Luke because I just dropped an hour of me rambling on his desk and went like, make it funny, make it work. Uh, Twitch with Owen every Wednesday. Uh, Twitch.tv forward slash called a holic. Um, uh, 6 p.m. GMT, just after Ross's stream. Ooh, Thank tag you. teaming. Hey, oh, it's football day on a Wednesday. Mm. I stream FIFA at 3 p.m. GMT, taking Hartley Pool to the top. Okay. Uh, I did a voiceover this week. That'll be coming out in the future. Ooh. I did a piece to camera. That'll be coming out in the future. Uh, Holden Gibb is a YouTube channel about football. If you want to watch that sort of stuff, videos have gone live this week and it's gone better than I thought it would do. Oh. Just make my way to the 4,000 hour mark. That's when you can start putting ads. Has, on. It, has it made you? <laughs> the world is in motion. Has it made you extra invested in England because you want them to stay in the tournament as long as possible? No, I don't know. I'm, I'm not old. saying that it's not all about England, but yeah, I'm always invested in England. Ah, fair enough. I don't know. It's made me look at them harder though. Oh, 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 oh! oh. I've also got a voiceover coming out Ooh. on Sunday. Oh. Ten more WWE matches that weren't five stars, but were. Oh, another Should've one. Been. Yeah, this is the third one now. No, second. We not already had that. We've had one. I, well, swear I, had two. I did the history of Melter's five star matches. Yeah. Then I did ten WWE matches that should have been five stars but weren't. And this is ten more. Ah, yeah. maybe I'm hallucinating. I'm sorry. Maybe I'm dreaming about YouTube videos that don't exist. <laughs> have you ever done that? No. It's our talent somebody was. Oh, sorry, I dreamt that. <sighs> but I must be what dreaming. Because life's that so thing. good right now. <laughs> Me and Tom talk on the Cult of Holly Wrestling Podcast about SmackDown every week. Bloody hell. So it's the one after SummerSlam where Jim Ross said SummerSlam was, was only all right. I'm like, we don't know about you, idiot. <laughs> it's great, moron. So uh, we'll talk about that. Uh, new Botch Mania will be out soon-ish. Yeah, you know that thing where you like, take a week off and try to relax and you come up the next week and it's just, oh, it's all the stuff you miss because wrestling doesn't stop for mm. anybody. Yeah, so I'll be held together with love and hope. And uh, Andrew, do you have anything to plug? Oh my God, he's asked Andrew for something. I got nothing. I got nothing. Andrew has nothing, he says, because you can't really hear him that well. Dan never gets the privilege of being asked what he does wants. Does Dan... Yeah, because Dan probably says, no. I have to ask him next time, though. <laughs> Dan's got a side hustle business. <laughs> <laughs> does? Well, does he actually? He might, yeah, but I think he might be stopping that. Yeah, he's got a lamb and farm. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, sorry, a big shout-out to uh, him and his uh, lemon party, then. Um, <laughs> Don't Google that. No. Nah. And uh, for all of us, I don't know what that just... means. <laughs> oh, it was an old. Never mind. <laughs> Patreon.com <laughs> forward slash call the Holic for the Hall of Fame and mailbag at call the Holic for all. .com for all your lovely, lovely needs to, to tell us whatever. Uh, this has been Jack. This has been Ross. This has been myself. This has been Andrew and Dan. Whatever he's doing, love you as well. Yeah, Tubman's yeah. in Japan. Yeah. Jack, Puppy Jack has been rubbish. Hey, the podcast is over. Let's point at this screen and I count with three. What we're going to say? I don't know, Matthew. <gasps> oh. Zodiac Killer. On the count of three, we'll say, one, two, three. Melts is the Zodiac Killer. Allegedly. <laughs> <laughs>